Hi. Oh my god. Oh, that's way too loud. <laughs> uh, so... Back at it again. Uh, a late stream, because... I want to finish the trilogy. God, I forgot to turn off the light to my bathroom. Oh. That's whatever, though. Okay. That's just... Wrong button. Yeah, um... I have, like, the walkthrough up just because, uh... Like I said, for the past two streams, I'm not in the best mindset right now. So, like... You know, so... I might just fucking follow the the guide the walkthrough guide like point by point like i will just like literally read it and, and play the game which is not the way i would prefer to do it but unfortunately that's kind of the way i have to do it now because i get um i made like a a, a, a twitter thread about this last night because I get, not distracted, but like, I get really restless after a certain amount of time. So, for me, it's just best to like, get through it as fast as possible. This isn't really as, um, a very, what's it called? Uh, it's not a plot heavy episode. So I don't think that it's like, the most important one. Like, the next two... For sure. Those I'm just gonna play, like, by myself. Try my best not to follow any guides before this. Which is not really, like, connected to the plot in any way. As far as I remember, anyways. Um. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I'm just, I'm just gonna start. Nazi now. Wait, what? Huh? It wasn't me. I swear it wasn't me. I get so confused every single time when we have to start. The evidence and testimony we have seen and heard are conclusive. The victim was alone at his table when he drank from that poisoned cup of coffee. No, you're wrong. I know what I saw. I saw. I saw. We're just getting straight into it. We're getting straight into it and I'm like, oh, what's happening? Did I... I saw someone else there. A man. He's the real killer. Ayo, <laughs> Phoenix, right. The hell you doing? What are you doing, my guy? Why why won't anyone believe me? Oh no, not fucking me. Well, I'd say that pretty much wraps this case up, wouldn't you, Mr. Wright? And this court finds the defendant. And this court is adjourned. I am so confused. <laughs> oh my god, that was so confusing. I'm... Why have, like, the last, like, episodes, beginnings, like, the beginnings of the past few episodes have been so confusing. I've been like, what, what, what? Did I forget to save? Did I just, like, start, like, further back? I was so confused. <laughs> the start of the new year always makes me feel like I can take on the whole world. I bet it does, Maya. So, I've decided that our resolution should be, Zuddy, take on the world. What do you think? Sure, whatever, Maya. But, uh, I think maybe you've had more than enough mistletoe cake. Never! You got a lot- You gotta eat a lot of cake during New Year's. It's practically a tradition. Like watching the fireworks on TV or playing a board game. Hey, pal! Detective Gumshoe. Happy New Year, Detective! Uh, likewise. Now listen up, right? I wanna- Here's to another fruitful year of lawyer police cooperation. 
Um, yeah, me too. All right, pal. You've got some explaining to do. Have you got a holiday present for me, detective? What? Well, I, um... Here, have this. It's, uh, it's really nothing much, but... Yay, thanks! Look, pal, we need to have a talk. Take a seat. Hey, what about Pearly? You haven't forgotten her present, have you? Uh, no, I mean, yes, I mean, no. Are you doing this on purpose? I guess I'm busted. How did you like my first practical joke of the year? Very funny, pal. Now let's see how funny you think it is when I show you this. What is it? A magazine? Hey, I wanna see. Deadly poisoning brings guilty verdict. Defense attorney right trounced. Trounced? Let me see that. The defense attorney gave an almost childishly amateur performance yesterday. What the heck is this? It's a report, pal, about you. Listen to this. Mr. Wright must take full responsibility for the ruling in this case. Well, and don't tell me you don't remember anything about it. But I don't remember anything about it. When was the when was that issue from yet anyway? Um December of last year, which I guess makes it last month. Which makes it old news, you mean. But I wasn't involved in the poisoning case in December. So what do you think this is all about, Nick? If it wasn't you, pal, then that leaves only one possibility. No way! You don't mean... A pho... A phony, Nick? This must be Gumshoe's idea of a joke. Guess he's starting off the year with one, too. Ah, speaking of jokes... <laughs> so, what are you gonna do about it, pal? What do you mean, what am I gonna do about it? Well, it's your fault that the judge found the defendant guilty in this case. My fault? How do you figure that? Because the Phoenix Wright is super famous now. Well, maybe only sort of. Yeah, see what happens when you hotshots start getting too full of yourselves. But I didn't do anything wrong. At least not that I can remember. You better make this right, pal. Now. And that means taking the case back to court. Got it? Sounds like we got our first case of the year. Let's tackle it with gusto. I don't know. The judge already issued a guilty verdict once in this case. It's not going to be easy to get it overturned. I guess that New Year's resolution is going to have to wait until next year. So you're taking the case, right? Good. I'm gonna head over to the courthouse then. After that, I'll go back to the precinct. I'll drop by if you need something, okay, pal? I guess people are starting to know the name Phoenix Wright. If a client entrusted a case to me based on my reputation, I guess I am kind of responsible. But why would someone want to impersonate me? What sort of a guy would do that? Um, uh, interesting. <laughs> So, what's our first move? I guess we go down to the detention center and talk. Wait a sec, Nick. This person's behind bars because of you. Whoever it is isn't going to be jumping at the chance to meet you, right? Hey, hey. Let's get one thing straight. It wasn't me. It was a fake me that did this. Hmm, I wonder if he looks exactly like you. You're phony. Zin Ilp? <laughs> Ilp? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> what kind of name for an evil double is... I mean, it has to be... Yeah, it has to be... Sin Eve? <laughs> no way. Skin Eve. Like Phoenix. Skin Eve. to ask whether I got a twin brother, the answer is no. Spoil sport. Okay, it's not really that important. Uh, detention center. This is so nerve-wracking, waiting to meet our new clients. I wonder just what kind of person you tricked and got found guilty. 
keep it down, Maya. That kind of talk could ruin me. Who this? They scream. How could you, Mr. Wright? How could you do this to me? Maggie? He put me in solitary. I haven't been able to stop crying. Uh, aren't you... Yes, I am. I am totally and utterly let down. You're... Are you? Don't pretend you don't know me. It's Maggie, remember? Maggie Bird. Maggie Bird. Ah! Maggie Bird. She's the policewoman I defended that one time. She was accused of murdering her lover. He was a cop too. Remember how she said that she was like gonna work at a cafe? Now she's got a... Maid outfit on. <laughs> maid costume. <laughs> What are you doing in here? Didn't I get you a quick- Oh sure, very funny. After that fifth rate defense job, you come in here and start making jokes? You better hurry up and tell her what happened, Nick. Oh, I see. So that's where we stand right now. I'm sorry you've been caught up in another murder. My whole life has been nothing but a whirlwind of bad luck and failures. I vaguely remember her saying the exact same thing last time. But I don't mind. What's one more disaster in my life? At least now the real Mr. Wright is here with me. He won't let the world keep me down, sir. So, how come you're dressed like that, Maggie? Last year you looked so sharp in that police uniform. Hmm. I was fired after that incident last year. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. I don't mind one bit. I enjoyed being on the force, but I think it was time for me to move on. So, what do you do now? In the second act of The Life of Maggie Bird, I'm playing the role of a waitress. A waitress? Yes, in a French restaurant. It's a small place, but it's quite fashionable. My charming smile and shapely figure came through for me. And the owner, Mr. Armstrong, hired me straight away, sir. And then you got into this mess straight away, right? Yeah, you could put it that way. Poor Maggie. <laughs> this whole mess started on the 3rd of last month, and it happened très bien. Uh, très bien? Yes, it's a restaurant where good service and a friendly smile are always included. Oh. There were two men at the table, both drinking coffee, and then... slipped some poison into the victim's cup. The victim took just one sip and was gasping for air. I was so shocked I passed out. Hey, hold on there, Maggie. What? You keep calling the guy the victim. Didn't you know the guy who was killed? Not at all, I'd never seen the guy before. Oh. So she wouldn't have had a motive to kill him then, I guess. And the other man, the killer, you saw him, right? Of course, a good waitress must be attentive to the clientele. So, you saw the killer, but you were found guilty of the crime anyway. How come? You tell me, Mr. Wright. I guess the answer to my question is my phony. Anyway, she saw the killer. I better see if I can get a description of the guy. So, if you saw the murderer, why were you still convicted? Because no one else saw. So what? The other man, the one who put the poison in the victim's coffee. Everyone testified that way. Mr. Armstrong, the customer, everyone. The victim was sitting alone at his table the whole time. But how's that possible? I don't know. But nobody, not one person, will believe me, sir. Even Phoenix Wright, my one last hope for a fair trial, failed me. But a pathetic defense, my granny could have done a better job. Look, that wasn't me, okay? And then, I found something a bit incriminating in my apron pocket. What? A small bottle. Poison. What? Poison? It was in your pocket? Well, I passed out when the victim collapsed. The killer must have slipped the poison into my pocket when I was unconscious. 
and no one else saw this other guy. No, sir. And that's what everyone said. But I don't see how they could have missed him. I was the one who took the copy to the two men. Oh? And what was your impression of them? Well, when I first saw them, I kind of thought they might be in the music industry. In music? How come? Well, one of them had some sort of earpiece and an emo musician's look about it. And there was a sample CD on the table, sir. An earpiece and a sample CD, huh? Did you get a look at the CD at all? It had a band's name written on it. I think it was MC something. They must have been preparing for their debut, I guess. So it was a band CD. Maybe a promo disc? Maybe it was MC Screwdriver. Get serious, Maya. Would you buy the CD of a group named that? Um, what was the name of that group again? MC Hacksaw? No. MC... And what about the killer? What did he look like? Oh, I, um, I don't really remember. Only that he was a young man, well built like the victim, really. I'm just trying to show this. Oh, yeah, I need to ask you about this. Hey, this article's about my case! Can you tell me anything about the guy who was pretending to be me? Yes, sir. It was the morning after I'd been arrested. I met you in the visitor's room here. You were wearing one of your super sharp suits. Me? Yes, you, Mr. Wright. Ah. Uh. Hey, Maggie. Was my evil double I am there, too? Well, I don't remember a phone to you, Maya. Hmm. Uh, it would have been so cool. Then it got really worked up and passionate. I'm gonna get you cleared of this crime, you said. Okay, I get the picture, but you've met me in person before. So how come you didn't realize that guy wasn't the real me? I guess, looking back now, it was a little strange. Only a little? Well, okay, so you were a bit taller than normal, and you looked a bit shady. And your voice was a bit weird. Oh, and you had this kind of funny accent, and so the guy was nothing like me then. But he had your spiky hair and blue suit. Is that all it takes for someone to imitate me? How about everyone else in the courtroom, like the judge and the observers? Didn't they realize he was an imposter? The one had these big question marks on their faces, but it seemed that no one wanted to say anything, sir. This case just keeps getting weirder and weirder. Mr. Wright, do you think it's possible to get a retrial? Probably. The court ruled in the absence of a genuine defense attorney. So we should be able to get a retrial. Um, Mr. Wright? Do you think we'll win next time, sir? My life has been a full course meal of bad luck, complete with defeat for dessert. Since I was six months old when I fell from the ninth floor... Of my apartment building. So yeah, it was the ninth floor. I was that wasn't the, it was either the ninth or the sixth floor. <laughs> hmm. But I wasn't sure. Hmm. I've been hit by all sorts of vehicles, gotten sick from all sorts of foods, failed at almost every test I've taken, experienced almost every kind of disaster. I even landed a phony lawyer when I had the misfortune of being accused of murder. But I will survive, because Maggie Bird always lives to fight another day. And one day, I'll find it. Just you wait and see, sir. I'll find that one single moment of good luck. Ah. Skinny, if it's really gotta pay for this. What are you staring at me like that for? But Maya's right. Whoever it is that thought it was a good idea to use my name and get an innocent girl convicted of murder had better watch out. We'll find him. Don't you worry. We'll get Skinny for you. Thank you. Oh, I'll tell you where Très Bien is then. Très... Ah, right. The restaurant where the verge place. Yes, sir. When you go, please tell Mr. Armstrong I said hi. Sure. All right, Nick. Let's go check out this restaurant and its food. And it's food, of course, the food. Très bien. Wow, 
Wow, look at this place. Look, more like smell. What is with the suffocating scent of flowers in here? And again, girls like that kind of thing, right? Actually, I'm not all that into it. No one's coming to see us. Maybe there's no one here. Don't be silly, Maya. This is the restaurant. It's open for business. Hello? Anyone here? I don't believe it. There really isn't anyone here. Perfect. Let's get intrusive. If there's no one here, we can take anything we want. Yeah, I suppose we can. I see this behind here. What's this? It's a rack full of fashion magazines and they're all in French. Why don't you try wearing something a bit more chic sometime, huh, Maya? Yeah, I guess I could. I'm always in my acolyte clothes, aren't I? It'd be fun to wear normal clothes every now and then. Hmm? There's something stuffed in behind the rack. Looks like a sports paper to me. Hey, and look at this. Someone scribbled a little doodle on one of the pages. MC Bomber. And one, two, three, four, five zeros. A hundred thousand dollars, maybe? I wonder what MC Bomber is supposed to be. This paper is from December 3rd. This paper is from the day of the poisoning. What? A paper from the day of the murder. This has got to be a clue. I should see if I can find out some more about this paper. Apparently that's all I needed to do here. I guess then I have to show her this because she mentioned that he was like scribbling on something. Oh, a sports paper! Let's see, let's see. Did Guts and Braun manage to defend his heavyweight title? Sorry Maggie, that paper is actually a month old. It's from the day of the murder. And Gutson got knocked out yesterday, I'm afraid. Oh, no. I found this paper in the magazine rack at Trebien. Really? That's strange. Trebien doesn't get a newspapers. Mr. Armstrong says he's not really fond of them. Then maybe one of the map customers left, left it behind. Anyway, what I want you to take a look at is the scribble here. Aha! That's it, sir! MC Bomber! That was the name that was written on the CD! Just as I thought. I like the little doodle of, um... Master Musk. <laughs> Guess it wasn't MC Screwdriver after all, huh? Are they talking about MC Hammer? <laughs> I mean, I suppose that's, like, supposed to be the joke. So that $100,000 must be a down payment for a record deal, right? If someone gave me $100,000, I'd sing for sure! The Master of Kurain, or the Spirit Song, or even Maya's theme. Um, okay, Maya. So if the sample CD was on the victim's table, that means this newspaper may have belonged to the victim. You're right! So the victim left this behind on the day of the murder, huh? I think we better stop out the investigation, don't you, Nick? And then we go back to Trebien. <laughs> oh la la, bonjour! Welcome to La Trebien. Oh, he hello? What happened to Maya? She's frozen stiff. Bienvenue, is that, is that how you say that? I don't know, I don't speak French. <laughs> Welcome to my petit restaurant. That was more Italian. <laughs> that was... Huh? Bienvenue? Oh, no, my petit Julie. Uh, me? Look at this face. Like a kitten rejected by its own mother. You have fatigue, no? Hello, you need this. An aromatic bath oil melange. Of La <laughs> La Rose. I don't know what I'm saying. La Rose, my personal recommendation. You think I need what? Oui, oui. Just add a couple of drops of this mixture to the bath water and voila. It will soothe your body and your mind. It's simply fantastic. Really? And for the monsieur? Who, me? Look at that face, like a puppy. Rejected by life itself. You are fatigued, no? 
Oh, yeah, monsieur, I recommend this. I love bergamot. And maybe a hint of wee oui, wee. Oui. I will add the peppermint and the clary sage for a fragrance exceptionnel. With an invigorating recipe will bring out such an invigorating recipe will bring out your delicious beauty, monsieur. M my beauty? <laughs> Hello. If you will be seated, I will bring you the special menu of the day. Actually, we're not here to eat. We're lawyers. <laughs> My bien sûr. I don't. I don't know. Lou, where are you when I need you? <laughs> Lou, wait. I'm actually gonna message them. I know this already, monsieur. You are the phoenix, right, no? Um, yes. You know me? My, wee oui, wee, oui, I never forget a man who flirts with me, especially in court. I guess he was... <laughs> He's French and I'm trying my best to have a French accent, but I can't. So I just, like... <laughs> I added my best friend on Twitter and I was like, hey! Please come here and make fun of me. <laughs> I guess he was cross-examined by our, our mysterious skin Eve. It looks like everyone to do with this case already knows who I am already. I wonder what sort of impression skin Eve been leaving on pe skin Eve's been leaving on people, don't you? It's like he's looking deep into my soul. Allow me to introduce myself to you again. I am Jean Armstrong. Enchanté. <laughs> so, what does très bien mean? Any? Mean. Blah. I know très, that means three, right? No, no, no. Très bien is François. In English, you would say very good. Oh, very good. Oui, exactement. La atmosphere is très bien, and la cuisine is très bien. <laughs> if the food's so good, why aren't there any customers in here? My cuisine is not for all. Some people, they do not appreciate la hot cuisine. So not everyone liked hot cuisine. Cuisine. Since I have lost Maggie, I do not have enough fans. So you're running this place on your own now? Oui, for the moment. No one has answered my advertisement. Oh, poor moi. Please don't eyeball me while you say that. I am the chef. I am the manager. I am also a trained aromatherapist. A aroming what? A practitioner. The <laughs> art of soothing the soul with the delicate floral aroma. <laughs> Just turned into a tiny. <laughs> delicate? The smell coming from that bottle earlier was anything but. So, could you tell me what you know about the incident? Bien. It makes me sad to remember it, yet I remember it so well. More than a month has passed since it happened. Yeah, I guess it's been about a month since Maggie's sentencing. So it was the third of last month, just after the one in the after one in the afternoon. A man who was in here for a coffee suddenly became ill. I do not speak French. <laughs> <You know? laughs> 
There we go. <laughs> because of the poison in his coffee? That is the truth as I know it. It was Maggie who took his drink to him. I was in the kitchen. I heard the sound of someone collapsing. When I came out to see what it was, he was already slumped in his chair. He was dead? Mon dieu! Oui, he was dead. Maggie had passed out also. And this man who died, was he alone? Oui, monsieur. All alone. I, I know that Maggie said there was someone else, but... I see. Hello, police. They asked me many times. Are you sure there was no one else at the table, they asked? But I am not the only one. The old man said the same thing. Old man? What old man? Um, so who is this old man that you mentioned? At the time of the murder. <laughs> there was another customer in here. What? Someone else saw it? My wee. As usual, they came alone that day. At the time of the, of the murder. <laughs> He was here. He saw it too. But he said the same thing. That there was no one else at the victim's table. But Maggie swears there were two people. My mademoiselle. The lawyer. He could not prove this, no? About the lawyer. That was me, I suppose. My being su su <laughs> Wow. He's the first person who said it wasn't me. Don't kid yourself, Nick. Huh. Now who's the one making stuff up? Okay. Maggie Bird. Maggie was a policewoman once, n'est-ce pas? I don't fucking speak French! I do not speak French! God! Please help! Yes, but she had to quit for um, reasons beyond her control. Oui, oui, she was the suspect in the murder investigation, no? Oh, you know about that? That is why I gave to her the perfume for the happiness. Happiness perfume? We blended from bergamot like I had given to you before. But she's been arrested again and found guilty this time. This is... This is true. An nat natural aroma of an anap... Struggling <laughs> so much! Of an happiness must have been very strong. Just admit it, your perfume doesn't work. I'm not surprised she was the prime suspect. After something like that took place before my very eyes. Something like what? What is this guy talking about? Does this mean Maggie did have a motive? I've gotta ask this guy for more info. Stat. When Maggie took the coffee over to the victim, did anything happen? We, oui, I suppose you could say so. So what happened? No, it was, uh, it was nothing. Look, Maggie said she, said she didn't even know the guy. But she's still been indicted for murder. The prosecution must have come up with some kind of motive. Oui, it is true. If there was anything at all between Maggie and the victim, it could be relevant. So please, tell us everything and anything you know. Oh god, this bitch. Three? Okay. Psyche locks? No way! What are we going to do, Nick? We'll just have to remove- What the? What's wrong? The Magatama. It's gone! Huh? I had it in my pocket, but it's vanished into thin air. What? But I could see the Psyche locks. Maybe that means the Magatama's nearby. Um... Mr. Armstrong, could I just confirm something with you again? The table where the victim was sitting. Was anyone else sitting there? That is a question you will have to ask him yourselves. Huh? Him? 
the whole man spends all of this, all of his time, down the park. What? <laughs> le, pa oh, a park. What park's that? Behind the restaurant. It's called Vitamin Square. Thank you. Je vous en prie, my dear. Let's go check out this Vitamin Square right now, Nick. Okay, cool. <laughs> go. So this is Vitamin Square. Yeah, I see where they get the name from now. Fruits scream vitamins at you. Ayo. Wrong button. I just bit the- Ayo. Who thought this was a good idea? <laughs> I'm sorry. Hello. Anyways. Hey, Nick. That's the guy, right? Isn't that the old man Mr. Armstrong was talking about? That grouchy looking grandpa? He's throwing seeds out for the pigeons. Maya, he's not throwing seeds for them. He's throwing seeds at them. Ugh, my grumpiness threat level has just been raised to red. Examine. Okay, I need to. Oh, I need to get this again. Well, there's a magazine here. It's a magazine full of job listings. You disgusting rogue, picking up something someone else threw away. You just turn him into the judge again? <laughs> no, I don't want to go for the judge voice again. But I can't do an old man voice. Ugh. Which is why I gave the judge the fucking... Eh? <laughs> yes, I am the judge. Order! <laughs> throw away? Did you throw this away? Are you looking for a job? I can't. <laughs> That's none of your business. Sorry, I guess I'll just take the magazine with me then. I don't want anyone else having it. Bring it back! No, <laughs> that's not it either. Damn! Too bad. Now that you want it so bad, I don't want to give it up. That's mine, sure. Apparently we just have to go back to Trebianian. Trebianian. Trebian again. And I have to show him... Nice. Mademoiselle. I yes? Are you looking for a job? What? N no, no, I was just... Let me see. Your style is un peu different. <laughs> Listen, I want to do a good job, but I can't because I don't fucking know French. But you have a good face. Different? Felicitations. Isn't that more... Uh, you've passed. I will hire you. Bien, come with me. I will teach you everything I know. I don't know whether to laugh or feel bad for Maya. Maybe I should do both. And then detention center. Cool. Just drop off Maya at her new job and be like, yeah, okay. Let's go see Maggie again. Looks like they have Maggie in questioning. I guess I've asked her pretty much everything. I'll come back if there's anything else I need to ask her later. And then we gotta go to criminal affairs. <laughs> Sorry, I'm literally following it. Um... They got another one! 
Oh no! They keep multiplying! <laughs> well, pal, have you found the evidence yet? The one that's gonna find her innocent? Um, no, not yet. We've only just started our investigation. But whatever you need to know, I'll give you the dirt on it. I'm putting off all my other pieces for now, pal. I'm sure he's really fired up about this. Oh yeah, one more thing. Blue Badger found a partner. Seems so. The retrial's been approved. Court's- Court's sitting at 10 a.m. tomorrow. And Godot's gonna be the prosecutor. Oh. Him. Well, listen up, pal. If Maggie's found guilty again- y Yes? Um, I'll, uh, make sure you get locked up good for it, got it? So the guilty party was Maggie Bird, huh? Yeah. Back when she was on the police force. You were her mentor when she was a rookie, right? Yeah, I kept a close eye on her. I, I mean, not too close, you know. Hey, what's with the funny looks, pal? Gumshoe, you're so obvious. <laughs> it was just her. It wasn't anything like... Look, sure, I was her boss when she was doing her training. But that was it. Nothing happened. I'm sure sure is sweating up a storm over storm over nothing. So that's it. Our big old gumshoe has a little, little crush on Maggie. I I don't like her or anything. I'm sure. I I was. Not yourself. Gossip with Maya about this later. Look, pal. Don't tell anyone, okay? You gotta keep it a secret. Got it? Sure. And would you mind not guessing what I'm thinking all the time? Hey. Tell your face, pal, not me. You'd have to be blind now to see what's on your mind. Okay. So I was wondering, would you fill me in on the victim? Glenel. Ah, it's the same. <laughs> It's the same both ways. You have Glenn Elg. Backwards is Glenn Elg. It was a computer programmer. I see, a programmer. It was just a regular Joe working for a small time computer firm. Maggie never had any contact with the guy before that day. No, she did. It was taking his coffee on the day of the murder. Pal. Yeah, Maggie also claimed to have never seen the guy before. Did the victim go to the restaurant often? Not according to the chef. Said it was the first time he'd seen the guy. Programmer, a first time customer at that. What possible reason could Maggie have had to kill a guy like that? That's what I thought. But a motive was still somehow established in her trial. You're kidding! What was her supposed motive? Sorry, pal. I'm real busy. I haven't even got enough time to sift through these papers. Look into it yourself, okay? What could this motive have been? This isn't really a proper investigation. I'm kind of working on it by myself. Oh, that's right. The judge already ruled on the case and all the evidence is in already. The only problem is with Maggie's testimony. Yeah, it doesn't sound very good for us, huh? Look, pal, I've got a mountain of papers on this case to look over before tomorrow. So I'm just gonna say this. Maggie Bird's no liar. She's... She's... Okay, so she's a bit out there and a bit off base sometimes. But she was a good cop. It's not exactly complimentary, you know. So what do you think really happened? And just how contradictory is her testimony? The biggest problem with Maggie's testimony is the number of people at the table. Yeah, my thoughts exactly. Maggie's little sister was another guy sitting with the victim. Right, but get this. Everyone else in the place says the guy was alone, even the chef. And then there's that CD. CD? Yeah, she did mention something about a CD. And there was a sample CD on the table, sir. But our guys turned that place upside down. There was no CD. What? Not on the table, not anywhere in the whole restaurant, pal. But didn't Maggie say the, the victim was wearing an earpiece too? Yeah, but that was for the portable radio in the front pocket of his hoodie. 
radio? He didn't have a CD player? Who the hell has a CD player? A fucking Walkman, like... <laughs> oh, well, not a Walkman, actually, because they had a, a cassettes, right? Yeah, like a portable CD player, then. You got it. Your phony never explained that contradiction at all. Come to think of it. The owner of Très Bien didn't mention that CD either. I don't know why, but I get the feeling Mr. Armstrong's got something to hide. The chef of Très Bien, huh? You know what that chef said to me. Ooh la la, your body is full of toxins. And then he gave me this bottle. What's in it? I don't know. The label says juniper. I'm under orders to put a few drops of it in my bath every day. Under orders? Yeah, you know. There's something about that lady. I mean, guy. Huh? You can't stop thinking about him? Not like that, pal. Give me a break. He's not my type. I mean, I can't stop thinking that he's involved with this case somehow. Sounds like he knows a little something more about our charming chef. I like how he just said he's not my type. Instead of just being like, ew, no. <laughs> he's just like, yeah, it's not my type. He's just like, valid. That's so valid. Love that for you, Gumshoe. What exactly is it that, you, that caught your attention about the chef at Très Bien? It's, um, kind of hard to say. The guy's probably not even connected with the case anyway. Hey, come on, detective. Didn't you say you'd give me the dirt on anything? Well, this sort of stuff is kind of unimportant. Gossipy stuff, you know, pal. Look, how about this? You go to Très Bien and investigate the place yourself. And if you find out anything suspicious about the guy, you report back to me, okay? Um... Suppose I get a choice in this, huh? I I better find out more about the chef at Trebian at Tre Bien, Tre Bien, and then report back to Gumshoe. I was about to call him Gumshoe. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Maya. It looks like Mr. Armstrong's really taken a shine to her. I suppose I'll just have to let her work at the restaurant for a while. I'll go pick her up from Trebian once things have cooled off. Cool. Oh, I need to go by the detention center, okay. Okay, we're back at Dribian. No? There's supposed to be someone here. Why are there no one here? <laughs> what? Oh, I need to go back to Gumshoe. Even when I just follow a guide, it doesn't fucking work. I need to show him the sports paper. What's that? A sports paper? Yeah, I found it in the magazine rack at Très Bien. It's dated the same day as the murder. You may be onto something there. And take a look at this. See this writing here? MC Bomber. Hey! What is it? I've heard that name somewhere before. Yeah, MC Bomber. Well, he we actually seems to be thinking for once. Ugh, it's no good. I can't remember. And it goes back to being the gumshoe we all know and love. Hey, pal, I'm gonna borrow this paper for a bit, okay? I want to get a handwriting analysis done in the scribble. Handwriting, huh? It'd be good to know more about that in any case. Thanks, pal. I bet this will turn out to be an interesting clue. Now I can go back to Trebian. 
Yes. The scent of flowers sure is strong. It's almost making me dizzy. Oh, um, hello. Okay, bye. Who was that just now? A customer? She had sort of a dark aura about her. Hi, welcome. Be avenue. Wow, what a cute voice. Oh, it's just you, Nick. M Maya! Well, how do I look? Maybe I should quit being a spirit medium. Maybe, but it's kind of boring being a waitress. I mean, you're my first ever customer. Then who was that woman I just saw? Oh, oh! Since you're here, you might as well have something... Oh, that's so sad. You might as well have something to eat. I am kind of hungry, actually. So, how do you like your new job, Maya? I never knew there was so much for a waitress to do. Take people's orders, bring them their food, make coffee, work the cash register. Of course, we need a customer before I can do any of that. Yeah, it's a nice looking restaurant. It's a shame more people don't come. Don't forget about the ultra cute waitress. Check out my give me a tip smile. Hey Nick, why don't you order something? The chef's preparing a tasty lunch set at the moment, or so he says. How much is it? It's a twin tea set, so it's twenty dollars of course. The twin tea set? I believe I'll be taking a pass on that. It's kind of expensive. What? But you can't! Come on, Nick! It's not every day I get to be a waitress. I want to try carrying plates and working the cash register. How about cleaning the toilets? That should, that, should, that should keep you busy. Yeah, right. Maybe later. Um, about the lunch. Oh, a fine choice, sir. No, I, um... Kitchen! A lunch special, please! With all the extras, drink side, salads, dessert, and gift! I don't need any of that. Just a moment, please, sir. Maya's really getting into this. So how much is this set lunch then? Twenty dollars, huh? But with the drink, side salad, and dessert, it's... Forty-five dollars?! Hey, wait a sec! Maya! Sorry to keep you waiting, sir. Here you are. Our deluxe forty-five... Lunch set. Whoa! A lunch inspired by lobster and abalone... Fricassee with a balsamic... Vinaigrette. Bon appetit! Um, thanks... Come on, Nick, hurry up and try it already. Lobster, huh? Alright, down the hatch it goes. Well? Are you hungry, Maya? I'm starving. Here, it's yours. Really? Ugh. Remember, Maya, my wallet doesn't print money, so you'd better polish off that plate. I, I just remembered, I've got to clean the toilets. Hey! Can't be in that mu in that much of a hurry to clean the toilets. How does that guy manage to make good food taste so bad? Hey Nick, you want to take a peek at the kitchen? The kitchen, huh? Not a bad idea. Hmm. Now, what was it that Maggie said again? In the kitchen, you'll get to see all of the chef's greatest secrets. In the kitchen. Sounds so tasty. Hey, wait up, Maya! What is it? I'm pretty busy right now. Weren't you going to show me around? I guess my plan to find some cool clue and show it off in your face. I better conduct the search in the kitchen myself. Okay. Move to the kitchen. And here it is, the famous Trevian kitchen. It's my first time in here, too, actually. There is a weird atmosphere in here, that's for sure. Mr. Armstrong will be back soon, so we'd better search quickly. Chop, chop! What this? This is one large mirror. I bet this is where he makes himself look pretty. There's a book on the dresser. Clarice Armstrong's Bedtime Literature. Not exactly Pulitzer Prize material, is it? It looks like a collection of poems he's written. Poems? Cool! Read one out! Say it in your best French accent, with intensity, okay? 
Okay, um, here is one. Um, <clears throat> it's called Printemps. The two of them, like actors from a film, the coffee still on drunk. Sweet nothings over too soon. On that sad Sunday morning, the foolish cocktail so delicious. Take the last sip of your tea and I know what I will do. I must lie to you. I must. Huh? That's it? Yep. That's a poem for you. What's this? It looks like a treasure chest or something. Wow, look at all these little bo bottles. Oh, they're aromatherapy oils. It's got so many, they're overflowing onto the floor. Let's see. One, two, three, nine, eight, nine, nine, one hundred. They're all the same, too. Hey, wait a minute. What is it? There's one bottle that's different from all the others. Well, what do you know? And it doesn't have a label either. And... Doesn't smell. So what's that liquid inside then, I wonder? Hey, Nick, we should borrow this. I mean, look how many bottles he's got. He won't miss one, will he? I just noticed the Megatama. Now I know I'm in the French restaurant. I've never heard of most of these seasonings. Hey, Nick, this container has oyster sauce. What's that? Isn't that used in Chinese food? Ha! Huh, look! Right there on the counter! My Magatama! What's it doing there? What indeed? Okay, I'm back to vitamin square. Uh. Hmm, the old guy's not here anymore. Drat. And I still have some unanswered questions for him. Uh, examine scooter. A scooter, huh? Who'd leave it right in the middle of a park like this? The wheel guard and the light are busted. Yes, it must have been in, a, in an accident. It's totally wrecked. While well, someone screams. Okay. Hey, what do you think you was doing with my bike? No, I was just... You was been messing with my new ride? Is that what you've been doing? A new ride? Isn't that the... Oh. You're just gonna pay for this! It wasn't me! I was just passing by! Hey! Then who was the one that covered my saddle and crap, huh? You's come pay! You catch my drift? No! Wait a sec! I'm not a pigeon, so I couldn't have done it! A white sky, huh? I had a beach so hard it'll feel like you were smooching the express train. Uh-oh. You better watch your back. This ain't over. I'm gonna round up a group of lawyers and then you's gonna pay. Um, actually, I'm a lawyer myself. What do you say? I'm Phoenix Wright, attorney at- <laughs> Okay, cool. Phoenix Wright, you saying you, Phoenix Wright? Um, yeah, I am. So you a wise guy too, huh? Because I'm Phoenix Wright, the one and only. What? Out of my way, I got a cruise. He's gone. Surely that guy wasn't my phony. Was he? He wasn't anything like me! Guess I better make a note of the scooter. Pathetic. Oh, it's you. A few threats from a little brat like that. And you look like a pigeon that, that's got seeds in its eyes. Have you been here the whole time, then? I was in that strawberry. I had some thinking to do. More like you had some cowering to do. Um, excuse me. Would you mind if I had a word with you? Oh, wait. I didn't know you <sighs> yes. I just want to ask you a couple of questions. What's the matter with you? Can't you see I'm busy? 
So you don't like my seeds? Huh, yeah, pigeons? It's really chucking those seeds at them. That's gotta hurt. Go on, eat this! <sighs> Excuse me, sir, can I ask you about Maggie Bird? I don't know any Maggie Bird. Yes, you do. You know, the waiters at Trebien. Hm. If you ask me, it's a disgrace. That's what it is. An innocent young girl revealing herself like that. Oh, so you don't like that kind of thing then. What are you trying to say about me, boy? Explain yourself. Um, nothing. I'm not saying anything about you. I know you're kind. You're how... You young ones with your spiky hair and your fancy suits. That head of yours is overflowing with filthy ideas. I know someone who needs to learn some stress management. Get out of here, you young brat. Do you go to Trevian a lot? Hmm, a miserable excuse for a restaurant. That garbage they serve and there is not food. Where's the sushi, the tempura, the rice? Trebien is a French restaurant, sir. Where do you think we are, boy? In Paris? I want real food, not those snooty snacks. And what about those shameless girls? You mean the waitresses? You can see all the way up to their... Their... Yes, the waitresses. They're practically naked. It's a disgrace, isn't it? Well, isn't it? Listen, it's not my restaurant. It's a miserable excuse for a restaurant that plays. Miserable! He certainly knows the place. He must be a regular. But if he hates it so much, why does it keep going? Are you a regular at that restaurant, sir? It's just that if you dislike it so much, why would you keep going there? Sir? Are you more, you filthy pigeons? You want food? Haha, <laughs> take that! I love him. I knew it. This old guy has got something to hide. But what could it be? Okay, and then uh, move to criminal affairs. Lovely. Hey, you're just in time. What is it, Detective Gumshoe? The lab got back to me about the newspaper you gave me. It must mean the sports paper with the memo scribbled on it. Though, so, what did they say? Did the analysis turn up anything? They said the doodle was written by the victim, Glen Elg. No doubt about it. I expected as much. The victim took the paper with him to the restaurant on the day of the murder. It's our best interpretation of the fact at the moment. The fuck? Some... MC Bomber. I get the feeling I've heard that name somewhere before. Oh well, I guess it'll come back to me. Don't forget to report back to me with whatever you find in the restaurant, okay, pal? Since when did I start taking orders from Gumshoe? Oh no. I get the feeling there's something I need to show him. Small bottle. You got one of those aroma bottles too, huh? Only this one doesn't smell. Huh? I don't get you. This was mixed in with all the other aromatherapy bottles, but it's not the same. It doesn't even look the same, wouldn't you agree? A cologne bottle that doesn't smell, huh? It smells like a skunk to me, pal. Mind letting me borrow that bottle bottle for a while? I want to send it to the lab for analysis. The victim was poisoned, so the contents of this bottle are pretty important. I had a hunch there was something funny about that chef. You suspect Sean Char Armstrong? I've got that guy's number. I know what his secret is. That must be the same secret Gumshoe was talking about before. I guess I better fill you in on the details. About this Armstrong guy's secret, I mean. So, what's Mr. Armstrong's secret? You ever had lunch at Très Bien, pal? Um, yes. So how was it? To put it nicely, it was inedible. Hey, don't worry about being nice around me, pal. You and I both know the reason that place is so empty is because of the food. I mean, the place is clean and he's got a girl like Maggie as a waitress, so... Yeah, I guess it's probably the food. The real scoop on the guy is he's up to his ears in debt. Really? How much does he owe? This is a copy of his loan contract. He's about half a million in the red. Half a million? Are we talking dollars? Yeah. Hey, if it was Sterling, he'd be really he'd really be in trouble. Sorry, that 
figure just took me by surprise. Yeah, this case is full of surprises. And I'd be willing to bet that that chef's got something to do with most of them. That's my hunch. Back to Vitamin Square. And then I can apparently open a psyche lock. <sighs> oh, ow. It's time you told me the truth. Why are you a regular at the restaurant that you dislike so much? Isn't it obvious? People only have one reason to go to restaurants. To eat! To eat? Is that the whole truth? What do you mean? I don't think you go to that restaurant for the food at all. You insolent brat! How dare you accuse me? What proof have you got? I can tell that not you, nor anyone else in this world, would go to that place for its food. The proof is in the pudding. Or in this case, the lunch menu. That's a twin tea set. The food at Très Bien is terrible and expensive. You're wrong. It's cheap. Huh? I'm rich. I inherited money when I was a boy. Yes, I'm stinking rich. I haven't done a lot of work since I was born, other than feeding the pigeons. What a load of crock. It tastes another story, but the price, it's nothing to me. So you're saying that you go there because you've got money to burn. Exactly. I have so much cash, I go for a swim in my money vault every day. Fortunately, that's a lie. What? You don't have money to burn. You're flat broke. Ah, oh, job listings. This is yours, right? My magazine! Why would a rich retiree be looking for a job? I... I... I was... So what? So I was looking for a job. I'm buying a lot... A lot at the moment. I need spending money. Oh? I don't go to that restaurant for food. I just go for the... Javacino. Yeah, I think you mean a cappuccino. Anyway, how much does a cappuccino cost there? Eight dollars. Those had better be some golden beans. What's your problem? You think a poor man would be better off drinking dishwater, do you? Is that it? No, I wasn't thinking that. I was wondering if, if the coffee there is really that great. No, it's not. But... But anyway, yes, that place has free newspapers to read every day. Newspapers? Exactly, they don't want me hanging around at home, so I go there. Sorry, sir, but there are no free papers to read it très bien. Take a look at this. What is it? It's a newspaper I found behind the magazine rack at Très Bien. So? What of it? And this was the only paper there, and it's dated more than one month ago. What? You see what I'm getting at here? That restaurant doesn't get newspapers. This is just one that a customer happened to leave behind. Ah. Ah! Tell me, why are you so determined to hide the truth? I'm not hiding anything! I'm going to have to put this guy out of his misery. Listen, the real reason why you go so much to Très Bien is... What are you asking me about that girl for? She was the waitress at Très Bien. Therefore, the answer to the mystery of why an old man would drink expensive coffee at a terrible restaurant is the waitress. But I don't recognize that face, and you are probably telling the truth here. Because you weren't looking at the girl's face, but at her outfit. That's the truth, isn't it? You became a regular at that restaurant because of the waitress, waitress's uniform. That uniform is all you can think about, isn't it? Uh, uh, I can't take it. To you, that waitress was your- Enough! Please! No more! Oh my god. Stop saying that word! Stop saying waitress! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Um, sir? 
Yes, it's true, I was there for the young girl. Fine, so I'm a dirty, wicked, sinful old devil. No, no, I didn't mean it like that. I even got one of those lousy cups of Javachino every time for eight dollars. All because of the serving girl. Punish me, lock me up. Really, that's not what I'm here for. It'll be the same. Another 20 years and you'll understand what it's like. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you know how painful it is to be an old man like me. No, really, listen, sir. Stop calling me that. I have a name, you know, boy. So show me some respect. Hmm? I'm Victor Kudo. Sorry, Mr. Kudo. You young ones think you know it all, don't you? Well, I'm not saying another word. I won't tell you anything more. This guy was in the restaurant at the time, time of the incident. Which means I have to hear his testimony, one way or another. Hmm. I don't believe this. I even broke his psyche logs and everything. I guess I'll have to try to get him when he's in a better mood. Move to très bien, okay? Apparently, I have to show. Oh, it's that old man! Is he still feeding the pigeons? Yeah, he fed me as well. I got a bunch of those seeds in my eyes. Oh, ouch! Hey, Maya, would you mind coming with me for a while? Huh? Me? Why? There's something I really want to ask that old man. Sure, okay. I'll just get changed. No, no, hang on. Can you go like that? I guess? They're really, like... <laughs> They're using this guy's fetish to to get him to speak out. This fucking game isn't real. I mean, to be fair, in, like, a later case, we literally have to get a person drunk. That is the plot. We have to get them drunk. It's amazing. Truly. Huh. You again? Hmm. Huh. Oh, well. I see. Uh, Nick, his eyes are burning into me. It's okay. I think it's going pretty well. Ha! Huh? You're still just a little child. Run along and play on the slide, alright? Play on the slide? Ugh, we were so close. Just a little more and he would have spilled. Hmm. Ha, hmm, hmm. How can we crack this guy? Who dis? Um, excuse me, please, sir. Quiet, can't you see I'm feeding the pigeon? Mia? <laughs> Well, if you don't mind, sir, I'd really love to talk with you. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, certainly. I'm Victor. Victor Kudo. Even from beyond the grave. Wow. About the incident. You mean the man who died after drinking the Davachino? It's like he's a different person. It was, it was quite a shock, even for me. I was a straight... He was a strange-looking boy. The girl took the javachino over to him, you see. And? Was the customer alone? Definitely. He was the only person at the table. And then he took one step of his javachino and... And... And he said something like... Aah! And then it collapsed. Dead. Oh, how terrifying. You're so good at listening, aren't you? I'll tell you anything, whatever you want to know. <laughs> he certainly seems to be telling the truth now. But it looks like Mr. Kudo didn't see this other man either. Do you like the food at Très Bien? Well, of course, I'm really quite a sophisticated man. I was a young businessman once, you know. I set up a casino in London. Really? How interesting. Eating the food at that restaurant really takes me back to my days in France. 
What a lovely story. London's in England, not France. Oh yes, well, France is wonderful. I'd love to show you around the city sometime. It, it's too much. I can't take it. I want France. <laughs> can't believe Mia's laughing at the guy. <sighs> you visit Très bien a lot, don't you? Of course! I mean, yes. I'd like to come and see you there. <laughs> really? Oh, you flatter me so. The owner would be delighted to welcome you, I'm sure. Be careful of that chef, my dear. The chef? You mean Mr. Armstrong? That's right, the man's an ex-con. He, he's an ex-con? Whatever did Mr. Armstrong do? Oh no, those eyes, I can't take this. Mia's really got this guy eating out of her hand. He steals things from his customers. From his customers? Gloves, handkerchiefs, little things, mainly. He's a pilferer, so you be careful around him, my dear. Are you sure about this? Of course, he was arrested for it once. I was there when it happened, having my javachino. Java it really is irregular. Let me write you a little haiku about it. Haiku? A Japanese poem. It'll explain all you need to know about the chef. Convicted before. A wicked man or woman. Repeat up under. <laughs> Listen, the only way I can um read haikus is with the fucking... Uh, what's it called? The... The Jax films, like, haiku song. The convicted before. A wicked man or woman, repeat offender. <laughs> but I mean, it works, so... If it takes anything again, you let me know. If it's not too expensive, I'll buy you a replacement. Poor guy, he couldn't do enough for Mia. Okay, Phoenix. That's about as much as I can do to help. Thanks, Mia. We got some really important information thanks to you. Honestly, I can't believe Maya called me for something like this. <laughs> Imagine! Your fucking sister calls you and you're like... Ah! <laughs> I see. I'm wearing... A, a waitress costume. I'm here for fetish fuel, aren't I? <laughs> ah, lovely. Love that. <laughs> and then back to Très bien we go. Oh, oh. Oh, 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 oh. I guess it's about time to wrap up today's investigation. Had enough of being a waitress? Yeah. Plus, no one came to the restaurant. Oh la la, Mademoiselle Maya. No, how can you leave me like this? I'm, I'm sorry. That reminds me. Mr. Armstrong had a psyche lock, or three, didn't I? I'm going to have to break those. Mr. Armstrong, I hope you won't mind, but I'd like to have another word with you. Volunteer, of course. Okay, I can just... What is happening? I do not like this horrible feeling. I have to know the truth. What happened that day? Hello, hello. I will confess everything. Just don't hurt me. Huh? Well, that was a new world record. It was a lottery ticket. A lottery ticket? The man who died here had a lottery ticket for half a million dollars. Half a million? We, oui, but after the incident, this ticket... It disappeared. The ticket disappeared? This was the motive that the prosecution gave for Maggie. They said that she... That... Uh, they said that... They said that she... Poisoned the man. To get the half of a million mil dollar lottery <laughs> ticket. Uh, 
Why didn't you tell me about this sooner? My Alul, you've been trying to hide this information about the lottery ticket from me. And I want to know the reason why. No, monsieur, you doubt me? But I have confessed to you everything I know. Mr. Armstrong, the half a million dollar lottery ticket. I think I know who took it. I think the winning ticket was stolen by this person. Maybe by, uh... Someone like you? Mr. Armstrong, I believe there is a very high probability that it was you. <laughs> wow, that is one piercing scream. Even for a man like him. My pourquoi am I? Mo moi, my pourquoi moi? Why you have no evidence? I am not mask the mask. I am not the kind of person who steals the property of others. Sorry to disappoint you, Mr. Armstrong, but I have evidence to the contrary. Yeah, Victor's note. I figured. I present to you proof that you have stolen from others in the past. What is this? A poem? Oh, Monsieur, you know me so well. I adore poems. Please, read it and put some feeling into it. Convicted before, a wicked man, a woman, a repeat offender. I'm sorry to have to bring it up, Mr. Armstrong. But you have been arrested for stealing from your customers before, haven't you? Mon Dieu! Le mesange, you are the liar. You deny it? Do not make the false accusations, s'il vous plaît. So do you have any proof? I want to see the incontestable proof that I have ever stolen from one of my customers. Magatama. It seems old habits die hard, Mr. Armstrong. What is that? This is my magatama. And I found it in your kitchen. No! Wow, that scream just about broke some windows. We, oui, we. Oui. I have a weakness for the little, little trinkets and the figur figurines. My aunt just slips out and I cannot stop it. You've stolen handkerchiefs, gloves, and other things from your customers, right? So is a klepto. Oui, it is the truth. I am just a timid little girl inside, monsieur. A timid little girl. Besides, this time it was not a small trinket. Oui, it was five hundred thousand dollars. My non, why would I steal it? I have no need for such money. Really now? Oh, monsieur... What is it? Isn't it true that you're in some pretty serious trouble? And that you are in desperate need of a large amount of cash? This restaurant is deep in the red, isn't it? Ah! You have a loan to the tune of half a million dollars. That lottery ticket would have wiped out your debts. Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. Armstrong, what do you have to say for yourself now? Mr. Armstrong, you said that the victim had a winning lottery ticket for half a million dollars. How did you know he had something like that in the first place? As a man, he was listening to the radio with his earpiece. Hmm, May said something about that too. The winning number was announced on the news, I think. All of a sudden, he exploded. He has half a million, he shouted. And the ticket. Oui, he had all of his tickets spread out on the table. I was so desperately in need of money, so I put the poison in his put the poison in his coffee? No 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 Oh no you naughty man I simply helped myself to one of his tickets. What? The victim collapsed and Maggie passed out. I thought to myself, Pourquoi pa? He had so many of them. Yeah, but only one of them was the winning ticket, right? How could you do that, Mr Armstrong? Maggie was arrested because of you. No, this is not true. I did not take it. The ticket for half a million, I mean. But you just told us you did. You said you took a ticket. My no, ma fi, ma fi, ma fi, ma fi, It was not. It's enough. Huh? Huh? Mr. Godot! What in the heck are you doing here? Ugh. This is without a doubt. The worst coffee I have ever tasted, Mr. Armstrong. You came in here for coffee? Does this craving for coffee know no bounds? 
Perhaps Mr. Armstrong stole one of the victim's tickets on the day in question. I am Le Ered, no? Just this pretty little girl who everyone is laughing at. But in that case, Maggie shouldn't be the only one under suspicion. He had the wrong ticket. What? Mr. Armstrong made off with the winning ticket's pretty neighbor. So the ticket he took was worthless? Not quite. He did win something. A dollar. You see, I am just a pretty face. Without my looks, I have nothing. So, what happened to the winning ticket then? The one he meant to steal. Indeed, what did happen to it? I don't like spoiling myself by watching trailers, so... We'll just wait and see how the movie turns out tomorrow, won't we? Mm. Voila, you two. Time to laugh at the pretty little airhead. Looks like I won't be needing this note anymore. Looks like we've got a new mystery now. Namely, where did the vin where did the winning ticket go? I've got a bad feeling about this. Well, anyway. We can't let Maggie suffer any longer than for this. And certainly not again. Yay! Hey. First chapter. Part two. <laughs> I can I can count <laughs> a, a tiny bit. The trial. Let's go. Oh, I see. I guess I should have expected this. Nobody saw the other guy, huh? But he was there when I took the coffee over, sir. Scout's honor. Maggie! Fucking knew it. D Detective Gumshoe! Are you doing alright? How are you feeling? As if you need to ask either question, sir. We'll let him get you down, Maggie. And don't forget to eat well, okay? Roger. And you? Y yes? You'd better square this case away, got it, pal? Maggie's innocent, you hear? If you screw up, then I'll be doing some squaring away myself. Squaring away some paperwork for your arrest. I, I think he's serious. Hey, detective, you're on our side for once, right? Yep. So you'll be able to help Maggie out, right? Really? Can you, sir? Uh, of course. I got the situation under control. I'm gonna be the first witness on the stand today. If something I say doesn't mesh with the facts, make sure you point it out, alright? Sure. Okay, we're forming a united front today, pal. You get me? Uh... I can't tell you how grateful I am, sir. I've always admired you so much, detective. I know I can count on you. Looks like it should all go pretty smoothly today, huh? I can only wish. Court is now in session for the trial of Maggie Bird. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Ah, uh, bitter. M Mr. Um, Mr. Wright? Y yes, Your Honor? Huh? What's wrong? Nothing, it's just whenever I addressed you in the previous trial, your, your response was, You're talking to me? It was a little, well, intimidating. No, no, that wasn't me. That was the phony phoenix. The phonix. <laughs> the phonix! No, it works! <laughs> I see, so our trusty Phoenix Wright is back with us now, is he? Our trusty... So, Mr. Godot, your opening statement, please. Mr. Trite, whether you're fake or the real deal, we will find out soon enough through this trial today. But I can already tell you, I'm the real Phoenix Wright. 
I wasn't questioning whether you are a phoenix right or not. I was questioning whether you had studied law or not. That's what I intend to find out. There's no denying it. Behind that mask is a man who really hates me for some reason or, or another. As anyone is aware, the court has already given its verdict on this case once. And therefore, I won't stand for irrelevant testimony during this retrial. Nor will I stand for a simple repetition of the evidence presented in the last trial. Not planning on repeating anything that phony me said. Trust me. Now then, Mr. Godot, please summon your first witness. Let's start with the formalities, shall we? Name and occupation. Witness, state your name for the court. Huh? Oh, sorry, sir. The name is Police Department Detective. Occupation, Dick Gumshoe. All the way around, Detective. Huh? Oh, sorry. Anyway, I'm the officer in charge of this case since yesterday, sir. Since yesterday? Yeah, the guy who was on the initial investigations tied up with another case now. I hope Gumshoe's really got everything under control for everyone's sake. I see. So, Detective Gumshoe, would you outline the court the b for the court the basic facts of the case? Y yes, sir. The victim's name was Glenn Elg. He was a professional programmer. He was on the payroll for Blue Screens Incorporated, a local company. This is the victim's autopsy report. And the court accepts this into evidence. Died of potassium cyanide poisoning. Time of death was between 1.30 and 2.30 p.m. So, b between like an hour. Um, and here are the floor plans of the restaurant. When the incident took place, the victim was sitting right here. The poisoned coffee was brought over to him by the, um, by the waitress. And the waitress being the accused? Yeah. The victim died from poisoning almost immediately after he took a sip for the coffee. At the time of the incident, there were two other people in the restaurant. Mr. Jean Armstrong, the owner and chef and a regular by the name of Mr. Victor Kudo. Hmm. It still seems to be a very straightforward case to me. Come, detective. Take up this hammer and nail the defendant's coffin shut with your own two hands. Um, yes, sir. Let's just get started. the incident took place, the victim was alone at his table, sir. We understand that the guy, Glenel, was listening to the radio at the time. Traces of poison were found in his, in his coffee cup. And what we found was potassium cyanide. That stuff really packs a punch. And, um, it looks like Miss Bird might have had, well, some kind of motive. I forgot to read what the church said. Using the dark aromatic... Aromatic depths of coffee to conceal the poison. Classy lady. And the facts of this case seem to be ironclad. Mr. Wright, I would ask you to begin your cross-examination, but... Yes? Please, no intimidation tricks this time around, is that understood? I already told you, that wasn't me. So the breast is. Can I stop here for just a minute? Huh? What is it? Did I say something that contradicts the evidence? He's so desperate for that to be true. He's practically crying. Your testimony just now doesn't match the testimony given by Miss Bird. She claims that there was another man at the victim's table. Yeah, that's what she said. And I... What killer wouldn't say that when faced with a homicide conviction? Hey! Sadly, her testimony isn't supported by the owner of the or the other customer. Isn't that right, Detective Gumshoe? Yeah, it's true. Their two testimonies tie up on that. They both said there was no other guy at the table. Hmm. What should I do? Should I press on this point a little harder or not? Press harder. Well, maybe the other witnesses just missed him. Perhaps their view of the victim's table was obscured in some way. Ha! Huh. That argument is as weak as the coffee at Trebien tried. 
I have here in my possession a ticket. A ticket? Looks more like a photo to me. Yes, a one-way ticket to Guiltyville. Population, the defendant. This is a photograph taken from the from near the entrance to the kitchen. This is the scene as witnessed by the chef moments after the poisoning took place, correct? I think the court will agree that with such a clear view of the scene of the crime. How, Mr. Trite, could anyone have overlooked the person, a second person at the table? It certainly seems to show the victim's table extremely clearly. We understand the guy, Glenel. Okay, uh... The third one. Ooh, 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 ooh. So, traces says that the poison were found in the coffee cup and nowhere else? Not sure I get you, pal. Was the poison a liquid? Or was it a powder? If I had to put it in layman's terms, I'd say it was a powdery substance. So the poison could have been in anything that was on the table. Sugar, salt, pepper. Huh. Do you put salt and pepper in your coffee traits? The victim took his coffee black with no sugar. <clears throat> it seems that the poison... <clears throat> it seems that the poison could only have been in the coffee. Should I do? Should I press on this? <laughs> okay, um... Hi. <laughs> what the fuck? Wow. You really... You really have a lot to do with your lives, huh? We're kings? Kings of what? The playground? Do they really like not have anything better? To do? I mean, I know the answer. I know the answer is no, they don't. They just show up here just to like create some mayhem or whatever. Wait, hold on. Let me just. Why are they banned? Because they're acting like children. Please don't sympathize with them. They all deserved it. Press harder anyways. Are you absolutely certain that the victim even drank any of his coffee? Huh? What do you mean? According to this file, the poison was found in the victim's coffee cup. But what proof is there that the victim ever drank any of it? Oh, hey, you're right. That's what I was think- In case you were wondering, that last objection was for the detective there. Huh? For me? Oh, hey, you're right. You may be fooling the court, but I'm not falling for it. If you have the time to waste, you have the time to present that piece of evidence. Th that piece, sir? Yes, that piece. Um, <laughs> what piece was it again? This. 
Should I be grateful this coffee is only hot enough to give me first degree burns? Oh, now I remember. Um, this is the, uh, victim's coffee cup. Yes, the victim's cup. Take a good look at the rim. Oh yes, it's unmistakable. There is clearly a coffee stain on it. Conclusive proof that the victim did drink the poisoned coffee that was in this cup. The victim gulped down the bitter death that the waitress brought to him. Like this! For the record, the only prints on the cup were the victims and the, and the defendants. Upon further investigation of this cup, we found a certain chemical substance. And then this. Some kind of motive? Yeah, but if you ask me, it's been blown way out of proportion. You know what my golden rule is, detective. Check out a bad cup of coffee. You can always get another. Huh? I don't get it. I'm saying we can always get another witness on the stand if we have to chuck you out. So stick to the facts, detective. Now then, what was Miss Bird's motive? Come on, Gamshu. She was... You said she wanted to steal a lottery ticket. I knew it. That's what we heard yesterday, too. It disappeared from the scene of the crime. And it wasn't just any lottery ticket. It was a winning ticket for half a million. Mr. Armstrong knew about the ticket too, didn't he? But he stole the wrong one. Then, is it possible Maggie stole the winning one? What should I do? Should I press on this point a little harder or not? Um, press harder. Wait a minute. The mere fact that the lottery ticket disappeared is in no way implicates my client. Implicates. Ha. Huh. I have here in my hand. The very ticket in question. That, that's the half a million dollar lottery ticket. One of the female police officers found it when she was conducting a search. Of the defendant. What? Order. Order. Huh. She's quite a lucky bird, our little waitress. Y you will submit that ticket as evidence to the court. Immediately. I better keep an eye on that ticket. The way the judge's voice is quivering. This ticket was presented to the court in the previous trial, too. But it feels heavier now, somehow. Half a million dollars, you say? It's just a scrap of paper. What matters is where it was found, Your Honor. That's on Maggie's person, unfortunately. That's enough. The facts of this case seem overwhelmingly clear to me. The defendant had ample opportunity to commit the crime of which she is charged. Furthermore, it seems beyond reasonable doubt that she did indeed commit this crime. I like an old man who knows the score. There is also the matter of the half a million dollar lottery tickets. That alone provides a very credible motive. I mean, for that sum of money, even I might be tempted to bend the rules. I don't mind an old man who is weak to the siren call of money. Not good, Nick. The evidence against Maggie is starting to pile up fast. Yeah, that's because the court has ruled guilty once already. I'd say it's about time to wrap up this repeat performance. With one final decisive piece of evidence. He's got more evidence against Maggie? This is the apron the delightful Miss Bird was wearing at the time. Wow, that's not the cleanest apron I've seen. But that stain looks like... It can't be blood, can it? Ha! Huh. It seems the star of our play was a little flustered. And somehow spilled coffee on herself. The coffee? Well, that's not exactly the first thing that caught my eye. Of course, the coffee stain isn't the most interesting thing about this apron. No, there's something else that stands out even more. Something else? 
I presume you mean, of course, I'm referring to the pocket. The pocket? A search carried out right after the incident uncovered this. Potassium cyanide. The very poison used by the killer was in her apron pocket. A bottle of poison? In Maggie's pocket? Yeah, and Maggie's prints were all the only ones on it. What? Order! 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 The court will accept these items into evidence. There's something still bothering me, Mr. Godot. Why have you not explained the bloodstain to the court? Bloodstain? What bloodstain would that be? Don't play games, prosecutor. The blood-colored stain that's smeared all over the apron. That's ridiculous. No one told me anything about a bloodstain. We don't need to be told. Just look at it. Well, detective, could this stain really be blood? N no way, sir. That's... It's just ketchup, sir. Ketchup? She must have gotten some on her apron while taking someone their breakfast that day. You could have spoken up a little sooner, de 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 Detective Gumshoe. Pull a stud like that again and I'll have you drink 17 cups of ketchup, witness. Uh -huh. I thought everyone knew what, I, what it was already. Hmm. I haven't seen anything yet to make me doubt the last ruling I made on the case. The motive, the opportunity, and the supporting evidence. They have all been clearly established. Well, Trites, it seems you really are a phony after all. Uh, you really know how to drive a man nuts. Witness, please continue with your testimony. Describe for the court the crime scene and the findings of your investigation there. The crime was reported at 2.25 p.m. by a kind of scary old man, sir. Poor Maggie had passed out from the shock. It must have been real tough for her. The victim didn't have any ident identification on him. But we figured out who he was pretty quick, and then the investigation went smoothly. When Maggie was searched, we found the lottery ticket and the bottle of poison. And that was it. There was nothing else missing from the crime scene. Hmm. You identified the victim and secured your prime suspect. Very good. Last chance to convince the court you're a real lawyer, Trites. Don't count on any more cross-examinations after this one. So, let the fun begin. This... Wait a sec. Huh? Did I say something dumb again? Let me paraphrase what you just testified to this court. The victim didn't have any form of ID on him. That's basically what you said, yes? Yeah, basically. In that case, how were you able to identify the victim so quickly? Oh, that. He's so let down. He's got the whole sagging shoulders and puppy eyes thing, thing going. There was a prescription bag on the on the victim's table along with the lottery tickets. It seems Mr. Glenelg visited his doctor before he went to Très Bien. We got the victim's name from the medical records of the doc who, dis who prescribed the meds. Hmm, that's a reliable enough source for the court. What should I do? Should I leave this alone? Or should I ask... Prescription bag, apparently. So what sort of medicine was in the bag? Well, actually, the bag we found was empty. Huh? Yeah, completely empty. It was completely empty? Huh. You're entering an empty paper bag as evidence? Desperate, are you, Trite? Now, what happened with the investigation after that, Detective? Hmm... Miss. Detective Gumshoe, I think I should point out something to you. 
There's just one small contradiction in your testimony. Oh, -ho, finally! I'm getting all anxious just waiting, so hurry up, will you? You testified that nothing else was missing from the crime scene. However, the prescription bag you mentioned was empty. Did the officers recover the medicine, medicine from the scene of the crime later? Um, no, they didn't. The victim was given a prescription right before going to Trevien. Where then did the medicine disappear to? Y you are too cool, pal. Indeed, due consideration wasn't given to the vi wasn't given to the victim's prescription in the previous trial. Witness, why do you always overlook such vital pieces of evidence? I, uh, I guess that's the most careless thing I've done so far, huh? The victim was killed by poison, and the victim's medicine mysteriously disappeared. The victim's own prescription could have been the lethal poison itself. Order! Order! Well, Mr. Godot, what do you have to say to that? Ha. Huh. That's all. What? Read for the court the name of the clinic, uh, on the prescription bag, if you will. What's the clinic's name got to do with anything? New Ear Otolaryngological Clinic. O Otolaryngological? Just what kind of illness was the victim suffering from, Mr. Godot? Hardly an illness, Your Honor. More like a bitter war wound, you could say. A war wound? The day before the incident, Mr. Elg found himself in a fight. He took a blow to the side of the head and ruptured his eardrum. He ruptured his eardrum? And then what on earth was the prescription he was given? It was a cream that was to be applied topically inside his ear canal, not to be ingested. What? It's mentioned in the autopsy report, if you read the fine print. They found traces of the medication in the victim's left ear. Yes, here it is, in very, very fine print. It seems Mr. Elg correctly applied some of his medication while he was at, at Très Bien. Therefore, it would be absurd to believe that he would have eaten his medication. Uh -huh. It seems that this medication is irrelevant to the case after all. N no! Nick! If you don't think of something quick, it'll all be over. She's right. But I can't get away with any old weak objection. What should I do? Plus push the medication issue. Only moments ago, Mr. Godot made the following statement. It seems Mr. L correctly applied some of his medication while he was at Très Bien. If that's the case, then why was the medication not found at the scene of the crime? But the medication in question was for topical use inside the ear canal. That doesn't change the fact that it could not be found at the crime scene. However insignificant it may seem, it's a lawyer's duty to pursue the truth. Know as well as I do that the medication is irrelevant. It hardly seems likely that a, that a prescription drug would contain potassium cyanide. It hardly seems likely that the coffee the waitress served would contain it either. But it did. The possibility is undeniable. Not enough. Oh no, there is more. Mr. Goodell. Is the detective the only witness the prosecution wishes to call? Mr. Godot? Um, I, uh... I've got my own witness I'd like to call, sir. It's the old man who was there on the, in the restaurant on, on the day of the murder. Victor Kudo? That pigeon hater? Very well. The matter of the disappearing medication seems a little more trivial. I accidentally hit the button, I'm sorry. However... It wasn't explored at all in the previous trial, and that is something that bothers me. Yay! Good job, Nick! The court will adjourn for a ten-minute recess, after which we will hear the prosecution's next witness. Ha! Huh. I suppose this means I'll just have to finish you off in my last six cups. Court is adjourned for recess. Hmm... That was close. Tell me about it. I nearly died in there. That's my line, sir. No, it's my line. I think I really did die a little bit. 
Looks like we all nearly died in there. I can't believe Detective Gumshoe. How could he betray us like that? Huh? He said he'd help me. But he, but he totally set me up. I don't think he meant to do that, Maggie. He was backed into a corner. I mean, the guy's gotta do his job, right? It's okay, I know all about lies and betrayal. I've had them all my- I had them my whole life. But it really hurt this time. It felt like someone punched, punched me hard in the stomach. I hate that guy. I don't ever want to see him again. Poor Gumshoe. So the next witness is going to be that old guy from the park, right? Yeah, Mr. Kudo. Lover of waitress outfits and projectile seats. Yeah, but he's gonna be really stubborn. I mean, he's pretty set in his ways, you know. Yeah, he's a big old grouch. Are you going to be able to handle him, Nick? Yeah, I can take whatever he throws at me. Even those never-ending bird seats. Court will now reconvene for the trial of Maggie Bird. Mr. Godot, your next witness, please. The prosecution calls the lucky old-timer who caught the show over a cup of coffee. Will the witness please take the stand? Name and occupation, if you don't mind. My name is Victor Kudo, born and bred in the land of the rising sun. Honor and duty are what make are what make me. Mind you, I can be quite emotional at times, too. I don't need to hear about that, Mr. Kudo. Just tell the court your occupation. My occupation? <laughs> Listen, young one. How much call do you think there is for kimono embroidery here? Kimono embroidery? And that's what I do, or did back in Japan. I embroidered family crests on kimonos. My ancestors were embroidering kimonos before this country even existed. Wow, a real craftsman. They're a dying breed. Hey, maybe he can embroider my costume sometime. Anyway, like I said, there's not much demand for that kind of thing here. So I had to take a job working at the cash register at a burger joint, pretending to smile. That burger joint would have been better off putting him in the kitchen. Now then, witness, were you in the restaurant at the time of the, of the incident? Oh yes, I was eating some seeds over the cup of over a cup of javachino. Seeds? What do you think these are, hmm? Huh? I see. So you saw everything that happened, Gramps. Did I? Oh yes, oh yes, I did. I saw it all. Then please tell the court we're all ears. Sure, sure. I'll tell you. I'll tell you every last detail. He's really getting into this. The young man was reading the, the sports paper. The serving girl brought him a javachino, but she put something in it. The man took one sip of it. It looked like he was in terrible pain and then collapsed. That's the serving girl, right there in the defendant's chair. I remember her well. Mr. Kudo, she's not a serving girl. Please refer to her as a waitress. Ha! <laughs> You're as bad as the rest of them. All these newfangled words. What's wrong with the old-fashioned ones, hmm? Newfangled? All this talk of radios and glasses. It's wireless and spectacles, I tell you. E excuse me. Listen to me, everyone. Don't forget the old values. Don't let the good old days slip away. Well, um... I think it's time to begin the cross-examination, Miss Wright. Yes, Your Honor. The young man was reading in the sports paper. The serving girl brought him a javachino, but she put something in it. Oh, I already read that. <laughs> Press on the fourth. You said I remember her well in reference to the waitress. Did she have any particular features that you can identify her by? Particular features? It's a disgrace, and that's what it is. Sorry? You can see all the way up to her... Her... You know, she's practically naked in that uniform. So the particular feature you recognize about the waitress is her outfit. But anyone could wear just, just such a uniform. A, un a, u a uniform? A uniform. Even me! Please, someone, I need this. Mr. Wright, 
please spare the court of any further mental ang anguish from that image. Don't get all excited, Nick. You've got to keep yourself together. I, I guess I got a bit carried away. There are other things I recognize about her, too. He seems pretty sure of himself. What should I do? Press harder. Sure. You saw a waitress take the coffee over to the victim. But what matters is whether that waitress was Maggie Bird or not. I'm quite right. Mr. Kudo, these other features that you recognize about the defendant, I would ask you to add them to your testimony. Sure, sure. There was a ribbon in her hair and her apron straps were loose. You do seem to remember several details about her appearance. But what about the most crucial detail of all, her face? As if I wouldn't remember that. The witness notices the straps on the accused's apron. Ap apron. <laughs> he is unlikely to make a mistake about her face. That's right. I can't even tell you the color of her ribbon in her hair. It was red. So you see, there's nothing wrong with the witness's eyesight. Hmm. There's no doubt he remembers the waitress pretty well. What should I do? I get the feeling there's something more to this somehow. Back. The identifying features you described are all things you would see from the back. So what? Is it possible that... You never saw the waitress from the front at all? Ha. Huh. He's got you there, Gramps. People normally talk about facial features when they're asked, asked to describe someone. But this witness's testimony is nothing but straps and ribbons. This is harassment. I tell you, I'm not obsessed with straps or ribbons. I'm just telling you what I saw. Mr. Kudo, the court requests that you add details about any identifying features. Features you observed from the front, front that is, to your testimony. Sure, sure. This old man's testimony is getting longer and longer. And if I can't find a hold in it soon... It'll get even longer, I bet. There wasn't anything about that caught my interest about her when I saw her from the front. Ah, the apron. Apron. Not apron. Apron. Mr. Kudo, I would like you to please take a look at this. Huh. That filthy thing would suit filth like you just perfectly. Actually, it reminds me of what my grandson looks like just after he's done eating. Have you ever seen this before? Of course I haven't. Do you think I'd forget something as dirty as that? Huh? Well, you half-witted clot. What? What is it? Ever since I said you half-witted clot, there's been an eerie silence in here. Mr. Kudo, this apron. Is the apron worn by, worn by the defendant on the day of the poisoning? Huh? And as you just said yourself, you wouldn't forget something like this. Which means, if you had really seen this apron before... Eh. As you know what I'm getting at. You couldn't have possibly seen the waitress from the front. Oops. Witness. You can't just oops your way out of this. Huh. Well, well. Looks like we finally have a genuine trial on our hands. Listen, Trite, here are the facts. On the day of the incident, there was only one waitress in the, in the restaurant. Not being the defendant, Miss Maggie Bird. Exactly. And when that one waitress put the poison into the coffee cup, this old guy was watching. Hmm. I hope you understand the gravity of the situation, Mr. Kudo. The fate of the defendant may rest on what you say you s remember seeing. Just tell the court exactly what you saw, Gramps. You can rely on me, Captain. My dog is in perfect working order. I can't remember a single occasion when I forgot what burger a customer wanted. You can't remember? Probably more like he messed up so many times he's blocking it out. Very well. Let's, let's test just how good your memory and attention to detail is, Mr. Kudo. Tell us what you remember about the victim. He was another one of those pesky young types, wearing a broken pair of spectacles. He had a newspaper on his right hand, and the no noisy brat kept rustling its pages. 
The young man was listening to the wireless. I remember that well. Then the serving girl in question brought over the javachino. The little fidget uh, picked up the cup with his free hand and took a sip. Oh my god, I am kind of tired. I'm like, hmm. I guess I could, like... I'm, like, almost halfway, I believe. It's like... And this is part two. And then we have inves Investigation, which is part three. And then we have two part fours. So there are, there are, like, three left. So if I do at least this one, I can do the last three tomorrow. Or I can do this one, plus the Investigation. I'll figure it out. The testimony we have just heard was to test how credible the witness's memory is. Also, for don't 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 ask me why, but I have like this obsession with like numbers and like how long things take and like <laughs> but, yeah. <clears throat> Anyways. It seems to me that he remembers the victim in a great deal of detail. Oh yes, I hate those you know what types who are so vague about everything. How are we going to handle this, Nick? You only need to do one thing. We just need to prove that the old man's theory memory is shot. Just trip him up, you mean? Isn't that kind of cruel? I suppose, but it's what I do best. And then down to the last one, little fidget, this one. And then the coffee cup. Mr. Kudo, do you remember what you were told at the start of this testimony? That this was a way of testing the credibility of your memory. I know, I know. There's nothing wrong with my memory, I tell you. Nothing. If I got anything wrong, I'll eat these seeds and sing the pigeon song. Care to tell us where this is going, Trite? According to Mr. Kudo, the victim was holding the paper in his right hand. While drinking coffee with his free hand, which would make that his left. Ha! What is this? Kindergarten? But I would like the court to please take a look at this. That's the cup the victim used, correct? Yes, and on the rim you'll notice the mark left by the victim's lips. Yes, there was a stain left by the coffee. If you consider where that stain is, you'll clearly see that the victim was holding the cup in his right hand. But how? Well, Mr. Kudo, the court is waiting for your epic performance. You said you'd eat those seeds and sing the pigeon song. Mr. Kudo, I'm afraid this is simply not acceptable. I think the witness had better go back to the park where he came from. Wait! If you think I'm going to stand here and listen to you tell me I'm mad, you're wrong. I don't care about the dirty coffee cup. I know what I saw. You still insist on your testimony. A young brat was holding the cup in his left hand. Oh yes, no question. I am a good law-abiding citizen, I am. It's that dead young hotbot and you, you spiky-haired yahoo who are at fault. Who, me? Thank you, old man. We're... we've heard quite enough from you already. Don't call me old man, old man. Been around for 68 years, I have. You can't ignore me. Listen to what I've got to say. I'm sorry, Mr. Kudo, but... Sure, might not hear a little more. Mr. Godot! But this is my 16th cup of coffee. So this is your final stand. Thank you, Captain. You can rely on Victor. The boy was wearing the earpiece on the same side as, as the green lens of his specs. He kept fiddling with it all the time. He was fiddling with it just before he picked up the cup too. And then he used the same hand to pick up the cup. His left hand. We know that the victim was wearing an unusual monocle over his left eye. It wasn't a monocle, your honor. It was a small computer monitor, often used by programmers. A monitor? 
You mean, like a television screen? The inside of the lens is a screen that displays computer data. It's called an a HMD. It's a common tool in the victim's line of work. HGTV, DVD, CD, all these newfangled letters drive me mad. But they don't matter. I know what I saw, and I'm telling the truth. It's true. He doesn't seem to be lying. And those are facts. In good old black and white. The boy was wearing the earpiece. Okay, I already read that. Uh, percent profile on any. Okay. I'm not sure what the relevance of this is, but... Mr. Kudo, there is something very strange about your observations of the victim. What? You say he was wearing the earpiece on the same side as the HMD. No question, you can lock me up if I'm wrong. I w it was his left ear, without a doubt. I could only see that side of his head from where I was sitting. I don't think so. What did you say? You're no doubt unaware of this fact, Mr. Kudo. But the victim couldn't hear with his left ear. His eardrum was ruptured. Eh. Traces of medication for his condition were found in, in his ear canal. That's right. It's impossible that the victim was wearing his earpiece in his left ear. Because he couldn't even hear in that ear. Is that true, Captain? It is. P P P pigeon <laughs> P pretty pigeon. <laughs> Order! 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 This witness's testimony is completely unreliable. He only saw the witness... Waitress. The waitress from behind. And he claims the vi victim was wearing an earpiece when we know his eardrum was ruptured. Well, Mr. Godot? A single drop of milk is all it takes to destroy the pure black magic in the cup. So, man. This is my drop of milk. Captain, are you calling me a drip? This is the victim's coffee cup in which the potassium cyanide was found. The mark on the rim clearly shows that the victim picked, up, picked it up with his right hand. I'll never back down. I know I'm right. The lad drank his cappuccino with his left hand. Let me put you out of your misery clearly. The victim used both hands. He took a sip with the cup held in his right hand and then switched to his left. That's what the old man saw. Impossible. The witness has already testified on numerous occasions that the victim died immediately after taking just one sip of the coffee. Which hand the victim used to pick up his cup is irrelevant, Your Honor. The facts still stand. With one hand or the other, Mr. Elgar drank the poisoned coffee. Like this! Sadly, Mr. Godot, that doesn't wash. The point of this testimony was to establish whether the witness memory is credible. And the results are clear. The testimony given by this witness is useless. I believe it is time to conclude today's proceedings. I am satisfied that the witness is not deceiving the court. But to be frank, his testimony is a farce. Did you have to be so frank? Take that, you pompous old fogey. I'm sorry, Mr. Kudo. You can't reach me from there. I'm ordering the defense and the prosecution to investigate this case further. Further? That's all for now. This court is adjourned. Mm -hmm. Wait! If we stop now, where does that leave me? Leave you, Mr. Kudo. Thanks to that blue-suited young upstart over there. I'm just a bumbling old man who can't even dot his T's or cross his eyes now. How is your bad memory my fault? I'm sorry, Mr. Kudo, but there's nothing I can do. I've kept my mouth shut until now. But there's something else the court should know. What? There's more? To be perfectly honest, it might not be anything. But I want another chance. I want another crack at you, you young shark. M me? He's looking at me like I'm some sort of evil shogun. Well, everyone, 
What do you say to one final showdown? The final chapter in this eccentric old man's scrapbook. Sorry, Gramps. I've already had my 17th cup of coffee. What have you got to lose, Captain? I'll give you all the javachino you want if you come to my house after the trial. I may be 68 years old, but Victor Kudo is still a man. Not enough, witness. I believe it will be quicker for the court to just hear your testimony. You bet. Much, much quicker. I can't believe this is happening. Ha ha ha! You better get ready, youngster. I get the picture. Just quit throwing those seeds at me, would you? He's gotta be using some sort of infinite ammo code. <laughs> Hacks. First of all, I want to stress that this might be nothing. I'm not too sure of it myself. The young boy slumped over the table as soon as he took one sip of his javachino. Well, the clumsy idiot upset the vase. He knocked it right over. It broke, and the strip of cloth covering the table got completely soaked. Well, how about that? Turn things upside down, hmm? Um, is that all? Yes, that's all. I remember it perfectly. Man, you're doubting me again? You're doubting a poor defenseless old man? No, we are not doubting you, Mr. Kudo. Did you get the feeling there's a question hanging on everyone's lips, Nick? Yeah, so what, probably. That's all I can think of, and I have to cross-examine this guy. You're a bird brain. That's why that's all you can think of. Very well, Mr. Wright, your final cross-examination, please. <sighs> Three, and then da 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 da, and then the crime scene photo. Mr. Kudo, this is a photograph of the crime scene. Hmm. So what? Look carefully at the table. The vase is there, intact. Huh? Lost your tongue, Granddad? I'm no granddad of yours, Hopscotch. Ow, ow. Enough. If you throw any more seats in this courtroom, the cleaners will be here all night. What is it now? I just remember something. Y yes, go on. The broken vase. Uh, it was on my table. What? Oh, well, you see. It startled me when that young lad collapsed, so I stood up. That must have been when it fell over. The vase on my table, I mean. The vase on your table? <laughs> yes, it was on my table. And that's how my groin came to be completely soaked. <sighs> Thank you, Mr. Kudo. You've certainly earned your kudos for today. Uh, I'd like to ask you a question now. Have I, uh, have I been any use at all? Perhaps that is something you should reflect on yourself, Mr. Kudo. Wait, wait a minute! If that's the case, there's more. I've got more to say. Oh yes, I remember something else. Bailiff, escort the witness out of the courtroom. Wait, listen to me! Okay, bye. Well, we seem to have been considerably sidetracked, and I am still not in a position to deliver a verdict. The defendant has not been positively identified as the waitress in question. Additionally, there are two disparities in the testimony we have heard thus far. A mark on the coffee cup that the victim supposedly drank from his left hand, and the earpiece which was inserted into his left ear, out of which he couldn't hear. Wow, well, Nick, you did it! I therefore require both the defense and the prosecution to further investigate the facts. Yes, Your Honor. And there is one more thing before I call today's session to an end. One more thing, Your Honor? The witness we just heard from. He is most insistent that this testimony be of that his testimony be should be of use. So he summarized it accordingly into his state into this statement. Um, okay. You may each have a copy of it if you wish. Whatever. The prosecution doesn't need props like that. Godot's really mad, huh? 
Yeah, I would be too. Very well. Here you are then, Mr. Wright. There are three copies. My own, yours, and Mr. Godot's. Yes, Your Honor. When the incident occurred, I broke the vase at my seat. I'm sorry. I'm sorry? This isn't a piece of testimony. More like a five-year-old's apology. What the heck are we supposed to do with three copies? And that is all. This court is adjourned. Ugh. Hmm. Let me just... Hmm. I'm like, should I continue or should I not? Hold on, wait. Let me just uh look into the part three investigation just see how long it is. It's not that long, actually. It seems doable, and I've only been here for like two and a half hours, so. Ugh. Let me just see, like, how that goes with the, the spreadsheet I have. Is it post it adds up? I don't fucking know. Ugh. Ah, eh, fuck it, I'll do it. So, how do you think the trial went this morning? Oh, I'm sitting, like, way more... The... Du, 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 du. How do you think it went? I got a bit crazy in there, I just wonder if that killed our chances. I yeah, guess it did get out of hand. Mr. Kudo's testimony did nothing to help us. Plus, now we don't even know the identity of the waitress who lays the coffee. All we know is what old Mr. Kudo saw. The apron, the apron straps, and the ribbon. And that the victim was wearing an earpiece when his eardrum was ruptured. Talk about a terrifying case of contradictionitis. Time to play doctor and find ourselves secure then, huh? Yeah. We gotta find one for Maggie or she's gonna have have a terminal case of guilty. Okay, let's just move to Trebian apparently. Yes, move straight to Trebian. Sorry. I guess Maggie's still in questioning. But but we got questions to ask her too. Maggie Maggie Keep it down, Maya. This isn't the playground, you know. Anyways, très bien. Empty, as usual. Yeah, and it's lunchtime, too. That's it. Come on, come on, come on. Hey, that sounds like... I'll just call an eight, pal. Come on, I know you can. He's getting really worked up about something. No, that's the wrong number. Ugh, looks like an eight would have only netted me five bucks anyway. What a ripoff. What's the problem, Detective Gumshoe? Huh? Oh, it's you. I, uh, I was, uh, <laughs> I was just, uh, <laughs> I was just listening to the radio, pal. The radio? Hey, Detective Gumshoe's having lunch here. He is, and he's having the twin tea set. What can I say? How can you afford it? <laughs> This is a nightmare. How am I supposed to look Maggie in the eye now, pal? You really drove her into a corner, you know? 
You always blow apart my testimony. Why? Of all days, didn't you do it today? Sorry, there just weren't any holes in it for once. Yeah, what happened? Usually your testimonies are like Swiss cheese. Swiss cheese? Would you have preferred crumbly like aged parmesan? Anyway, this case has already been ruled on. There shouldn't be any holes left to find. So, did Maggie say anything to you? About me, I mean. Well, um, how did you put it again? Can't believe Detective Gumshoe. I hate him, sir. I mean it. I don't ever want to see him again. Something like that. Oh. Oh. Please, Detective Gumshoe. I didn't mean... Why? Why is this happening? He's banging his head against the wall now, Nick. Oh, man. Poor Gumshoe. So, did you like the twin tea set? I never paid that much money for lunch before. I was so nervous, my hands were shaking. So, how did it taste? Well, for 20 bucks, I guess. I, I don't know how to describe it, really. It was delicate. Delicate? You mean you liked it? It didn't taste bad to you? What's the matter with him? Looks like he's thinking. That's it! I've been trying to think of the right word to describe the taste. And I just realized, it's bad. That's it. It tasted bad. <sighs> it's just kind of hard to admit it to yourself when you paid 20 bucks for it, you know. Maybe I should have found out about the price after he had finished eating. Hey, Nick. Maybe that's why Glen Elk came here. Maybe you heard about the super fierce twin tea set. If by fierce, you mean fierce some. Speaking of Glenelg, that reminds me, we still hardly know anything about the guy. Why don't we ask Detective Gumshoe what he knows, seeing as he's here? So, what were you all excited about earlier? Huh? That's right, you said you were listening to the radio or something. Oh, that? It was nothing. I wasn't excited. Come on, Detective Gumshoe, you can tell little old me what you were listening- What were you listening to? Nothing, really. It was just the, um, daily exercise show. The a psyche look? Mmm, <laughs> this lunch special's luster sure is great. Then why are there tears in your eyes? All right, Detective Gumshoe. <laughs> Tell me the truth. What were you listening to? No way, pal. Now that you've made a, made a big thing out of it, I'm not going to tell you. We'll see about that, pal. Considering all the noise you were making while you were listening, it's pretty clear what kind of radio program it was. I'd say it was related to... I'm right, aren't I? You were listening to the lottery results, weren't you? You thought you'd try to win big, just like Glen Elk did. It, it's... It's like you can see right through me. Huh? I've cracked him already? See, pal, that's why I said it was nothing. I'm usually pretty lucky, so I figured I'd give it a try. What's with everyone in the lottery? So, how did it go? I won 50 cents. It'd be better to win nothing at all than it allows... Than I Half a lousy buck. I was so mad. Yeah, I know the feeling. Bought the same kind of ticket as Mr. Alexi. And they've got this special radio show where they announce the winning numbers. They even do the drawings live on the air. It's intense, pal. I bet that's what Mr. Alec was listening to on the day he was killed. Yeah, what time is it now? Uh, it's... It's just after 1.30. And are the lottery results always broadcast at the same time? Yeah, look, I got this flyer when I bought the ticket. Millionaire radio? That sounds cool. I want to try it, Nick. Then buy a ticket, Maya, with your own money. Um, percent Glen Elg. <laughs> this guy was a real programming genius. 
and they called him the walking computer at the place where he worked. What happens when he crashes, though? Does he just stop moving all of a sudden? Uh, he wasn't literally a computer, Maya. Anyway, there's nothing between Maggie and the victim. Yeah, that's what we found out yesterday, too. Hey, Detective Gumshoe, don't you have any information that's a bit more fun? Fun? I, uh... Oh, I know. So, have you paid a visit to where Mr. Elg worked yet? You might as well. His workplace? Where's that? A computer firm called Blue Screens, Inc. Or something like that. Blue Screen. Sound like a real stable company. This could be fun, Nick. Let's go. Computers aren't really my thing, Maya. It'll be fine. I know all about that high-tech stuff. I wonder about that. It's just around the corner from this joint. You should take a look. A computer firm called Blue Screen Sync, huh? Wow, this place is so high-tech. You can almost smell the electricity in the air. It is a computer firm, Maya. They can't work without electricity, you know. Who are you? Oh, um, hello. I'm sorry. Access is restricted to authorized personnel only. This is a computer pro program <laughs> programming laboratory. There are far too many trade secrets that could be leaked. Wow, what secrets? Everything you see here is classified. No information can leave this building. Understood. Who is this woman? She is like a robot from some kind of whacked... Educational show. My name is Lisa Basil. Oh, she has the same thing as Glen Elk. Fascinating. I'm the company director. D director? She's human? She seems more like a ghost in a shell. And that thing over her eye, isn't that the same device as Glen Elk's? That's a DMH, right? Nice try, but it's the other way around, Aya. It's an HMD. All of my programmers here at Blue Screens, Inc. are supplied with HMDs. Then do you write programs too? No, I just enjoy wearing this. They are pretty cool. I wouldn't mind one. Talk. So, what exactly is this firm's business? I will try to simplify it so that you can understand. We analyze the data management systems required by certain branches of industry and then deliver optimum operating systems and source level components to them. Huh? You lost me on the corner of analyze and management. It doesn't matter, they analyze stuff. You got that much, right? The software we produce is distributed on CDs. CDs? Yes, compact disc. Digital optical storage media. Of course, CDs are used for software as well as music. It's, it is a small firm, but all of my employees are first-class programmers. Let's ask one of them what they are doing. Excuse me, what are you working on right now? I'm researching the impact of time slice in common areas, okay. Well, you get the idea. This is the sort of thing we are involved in. Did you good people follow all of that? All of that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your blank smile just said otherwise, Maya. You know about what happened, right, Miss Basil? You mean about Glenn being poisoned? Yes, I know. It's terrible. Can you tell us anything that might be helpful? I don't think so. A police officer was here earlier, too. But I couldn't tell him anything either, because... The waitress who committed the crime has nothing to do with Blue, Blue Screen's ink. Oh. How about Mr. Elg's desk? Have you cleared it out already? No, not yet. It's this one, right in front of you. If there's anything that might be useful to you, you are welcome to take it. I guess there might be a clue here somewhere. And then examine... Papers on floor. Wow, look at this mess. Looks like they're all betting tickets. What kind of betting tickets? For betting on which horse will win a given race. They're horse racing tickets. Oh wow! His drawers are stuffed full of stuffed full of these. 
Looks like they're all losing tickets, though. This many tickets would get you, what, a buck down at the recycling center? But I didn't know you were so hard up that you'd try to profit from the dead, Nick. I'm just taking them as evidence, Maya. Oh, look at this desk, Nick. What a mess. Looks pretty average to me. But you can't get any work done with everything all over the place like this. You think? Real whiz kids can work on horrendous conditions, you know. She's trying to hint that I should tidy my desk more. I'll clean up my desk when Maya stops asking silly questions. No hurry, then. Hey, this calendar. What about it? If this is another hint about tidying, you can forget it. Someone's marked December 3rd in red pen. December 3rd? That's the day Mr. Elg was murdered. Is there anything else? Yeah, um, it says meet with the tiger. The t tiger? Um, about Mr. Elg. He was a top programmer. I would even say he was a genius. But he did suffer from one or two bugs in his personality. Oh, like what? He was a bit of a loser. Perhaps that would be the best way to describe it. And that's what got him into trouble. What's the matter? He was a top programmer. I would even say he was a genius. So he was really no trouble at all. A model employee. Hey, wait a moment, minute. You just said something... Just now you said something about him being in trouble. We've got to find out what this trouble was exactly. Doo -doo 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 -doo. I wanted to talk. Um, about Mr. Elg. Was he in some kind of trouble? I'm sorry? Why would you think that? I thought you said something about it just now. You said he got himself into trouble because he was a bit of a loser. Three psychologues? I guess Mr. Elg is like every other man with his own pile of secrets. Okay, and then we go back to Très bien. Très bien. And we go back to the kitchen. To the kitchen. Huh? Mr. Armstrong's talking to someone. I'll be back next month. Oui, naturellement. Uh, naturellement. I'll be waiting for you. If you haven't got it by then, I'm afraid it might get a little hot around here. No, I will have everything ready. I promise. I love fire, you know. I love the way it crackles. <laughs> no, no, no. Stop it, I beg you. Then don't let me down. I'll be watching you. My no, this is not necessary. You can trust me, mademoiselle. Talk to anyone and I'll drive a knife right through your heart. Oh no, you don't have to worry. You know, you worry far too much. Maybe this will help you relax. It is the oil of sandalwood. I do love raw meat from time to time. <laughs> I'll be taking my leave. Goodbye for now. Flower, are you here? I've missed. I've missed you. I had um a case of uh edgy guys here earlier. It was a lot of fun. They came here and said bad words, <laughs> and then they were like, "No, that guy was a king," and I'm like. Of what? The playground? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, rude people. People who don't have anything better to do with their lives. It's really sad. And that comes from me. Who literally has nothing better to do with her life. But... They ain't okay. There was some dude that fucking brought up women wearing burkas and i was like dude what is your problem <laughs> and then there was another one who was like are you gay and i'm like just sitting there like like 
I know why. It's because I, I, I stream under the LGBTQIA plus tag. For sure. I'm 100% certain. They just go through that tag because they have some kind of obsession with, like, being bad people towards people of the LGBTQ, I guess. <laughs> I, I, I honestly find it kind of funny. Not that they were funny, just, like, the entire situation. That they just, like, think that they're doing something. Oh, no. So spoopy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. Oh, my God. Ugh, I'm 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 trying my best to speak French, but I don't know French, and I try to to uh, ask my best friend to 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 come watch my stream because she sorry they pardon me I just misgendered them a bit. Uh, they speak at least some French, <laughs> so I wanted them to come over here and uh, just make fun of me for being awful. <laughs> Ugh. I have the shivers. I must rub some of my oil all over my body before I become the nervous wreck. There. Oh, wee oui, wee. Oui. That feels good. Ugh. Oh la la. Excuse-moi, monsieur. My eyes. My eyes. Your eyes? If you have trouble with your eyes, you need this la oil of sandalwood. Isn't this just the leftovers of what you were using? Rub oil on body. Uh, essential oils. <laughs> you don't exactly have many customers, do you, Mr. Armstrong? No, you are right, monsieur. But perhaps that is the perfect time for you to visit me, no? That way, I can give you my undivided attention and cook for you le dish supreme. Putting on a brave face, huh? That's what girls do, Nick. But you are right. Business is very difficult these days. <laughs> to shut up! <laughs> God. <laughs> Why do you say so many cursed stuff? <laughs> Perhaps the name is love problem. People do not understand it. They think it is Trey. I just wanted people to think that my restaurant was exclusive. But they think you just serve fast food on cheap plastic trays. Nick, that's the kind of thing that can make a girl cry. Have you forgotten that Mr. Armstrong is a man, Maya? Phoenix. <laughs> But this is a restaurant. No, but this restaurant is my life. It is everything to me. <laughs> I mean, he... L <laughs> we did not raise it to be like this. He literally refers to himself as a girl, though. Like, sometimes, anyway. Anyways, he's like, oh, a pretty girl like me. So... Jean Armstrong? Trans character confirmed? I mean, not that this is necessarily the kind of representation the, the, the trans people would, would like, but misgendering Phoenix. <laughs> huh. I will defend it to the finale. Uh, no one will take it from me. So, who was that woman you were just talking to? Oh la la, you saw that? Oh, well, yes, sorry. So, who was she? She looked so polite and graceful. P polite? G graceful? And she likes raw meat and fires, right? I'll be back next month. Oui, naturellement. I, I will be waiting for you. If you haven't got it by then, I'm afraid it might get a little hot around here. No, I will have everything ready, I promise. Now that I think about it. Hey, Maya, I think it's pretty clear what kind of conversation they were having. You think so? You think so? Well, then let's show him that piece of evidence and see what happens. Uh... Wee. So long as that paper exists, 
I am but a delightful angel with a with la broken wings. An angel, huh? Doesn't bode well when you think about it. We oui, they kept harassing me month after month. In the end, I had to give in. I agreed to help them. Help them? W with what? My being sure. If I did not out I owed them the money I would have refused. But my aunts were died. Please, what did you agree to help them with? No, I, I cannot say. If I tell you that woman, she will slice me up. And eat me with the last salad, salad garnish. Yeah, I hope he doesn't mean that he'll literally be sliced up and served with garnish. It seems familiar. Or it sounds familiar in my head anyways. I'm going to guess that woman has something to do with your loan contract, am I right? <laughs> Please, Mr. Armstrong, tell us about that woman. The woman who was here earlier, I take it that she's, um... Why has it come to this? What a tragedy. Suddenly I find myself so deep in the depths. It is a sign of the bad, bad world we live in, huh? No, I'd say it's more of a sign of the bad, bad culinary skills. The woman who was here, the scary woman, she is from the loan office. Loan office? Is that where you borrowed half a million dollars from? We, oui, tender lender, it is called. Catchy name. Just hearing it makes me want to borrow some money. Please. Oh, please. You must not borrow from them. If you must, no more than ten dollars. Ten dollars? Sounds like your whole monthly stipend, Maya. Hey, I get a bit more than that, thank you very much. So, tender lender is the loan office you borrowed half a million from, huh? I wonder if they've got anything to do with this case. I am a weak woman. See again. Again! <laughs> Referring to himself, themself, herself as a woman. When I am upset, I have to buy something nice to cheer me up. Thanks to him, I'm loaning me the money. I have to pay back to him. Oh my god, I'm so confused. Jean. Which is kind of like androgynous. Right? Maybe, maybe not in French. I'm not sure. Ah, thanks to him loaning me the money, I have to pay back half a million dollars now. Yeah, it's kind of gender neutral. I am like a slave. I have to do everything that he tells me. Um, who is he? The tiger. The tiger? Oui, he is the manager of the land attender. A terrifying man, the big city mobster. When he shouts at me, my knees are trembling and his voice is ringing in my ears for three days. As soon as I hear the noise, the noise, the noise of that battered old scooter he rides. I start to cry. Big city mobster who rides a battered old scooter. Um, does this guy resemble me by any chance? Oh, no, 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 no. This man is a presence. A most formidable personality. Although, we oui, does have the spiky hair just like you. Oui, there is a resemblance there, I suppose. Armstrong is a homosexual man who enjoys performing non-passing drag. Pretty much. I mean, at the beginning of this case, he also, like, kind of comes on to Phoenix, I guess? Wait. Are you reading this on the wiki? <laughs> Or this is this again the the fun karma? Oh, this is Capcom official. 
Damn! So they actually confirmed him as a gay man. I mean, let's just, like, um, ignore that he is an ex-con. <laughs> the Ace Attorney trilogy is surprising tidbits you never knew. From Capcom Unity. Huh. Interesting. Hmm. Sounds like this loan office is worth checking out after all. If you want to visit Zelanda, the Tenderlander, it is just beyond Vitamin Square. Hey, Nick. If you need more money, I can loan you some, as long as it's less than three dollars. Um, thanks for the offer. Just beyond vit Vitamin Square, huh? Anything else? Sorry, I'm literally looking at a guide because I just can't be fucking bothered to do anything on myself today. <laughs> ah, depression. <laughs> Ow. Ah, uh, I can't get any achievements in this. Oh, it sucks um, pretty much. I can move back to Très Bien. Well, I'm gonna head back to the precinct, precinct now. We got a big meeting starting in a bit. About Maggie's case, you mean? No, that's pretty much wrapped up now. And there's another big case going down at the moment. So she's been pushed aside. Okay, well, see you later then. Bye. You better get going, detective, or you'll be late. Actually, I am. Um, I kind of got a favor to ask. It's a big one. A favor? Yeah, it's for um, Maggie, actually. I was kind of hoping you'd give this to her for me. What is it? It's a lunchbox. I got up early so I could make it. I've been real worried about her. She looked like she'd lost a lot of weight. Detective Gumshoe. How many weenies are in here? There's not a person on earth who could eat- who could down this much meat. You think? I love weenies. I can't get enough of their tender juiciness. So, will you give it to her? It took me ages to make, so please say you will, pal. I can't exactly say no, can I? <laughs> Plenty of weenies. <laughs> Gumshoe is so sweet, yeah. Maybe I'll eat it myself if I get hungry. Don't forget, okay? I'm counting on you to give that to Maggie. She's finally gone. Okay. I guess vitamin square then. Hmm. I don't see any sign of Mr. Kudo, do you? I I I I, I uh, pointed this out in earlier in the episode, but like why? Why? Mmm, yes, subtle. <laughs> I don't see any sign of Mr. Kudo, do you? Maybe he went to buy another ton of bird seeds. I was kind of hoping he wouldn't be here anyway, at least not for now. Besides, any more seeds today and I'm liable to turn into a real phoenix. So Dev had fun on that one for sure. For sure, okay. Anyways, uh... Yeah, just Tenderland, okay. This place gives off a really strange vibe, doesn't it? Looks like the tiger isn't in his lair. And that is, as they say, a very good thing. Ah, uh, the- mm, yes. Mm hmm I don't know if they- I, I'm still not sure if they did it on purpose or not. I don't know. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. <laughs> we will never know, I guess. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Talk about a creepy voice. It makes your soul want to shrivel up and die. 
You're here to discuss alone? Uh, no, not exactly. The manager is away at the moment. Play quietly, please. She's gone, just like that. I guess we'll just have to come back another time. But this is the perfect opportunity, Nick. This place reeks of suspicion. Come on, Nick. Let's take a look around, okay? Do you think it'll be okay? Of course. No one will ever know. Puffy? <laughs> I'll leave it here for you to enjoy. Quietly. Y yes, thank you. Do not touch the desk, please. N Nick! Let's get out of here. Now she wants to get out of here. Business official vault full of pictures for research purposes. Oh, yeah, that's right. I remember hearing about that. Are you kidding me? Wait, I turned it off like a while ago. Okay, so it's not too long. Nothing much has really happened. Why didn't you tell me that the sound was off? Ah, there's so much going on in my head. I didn't even register. I don't think it was like too long. Even if it was, I don't think it's like that big of a deal. I mean, I read everything anyways. <laughs> what was I? Um, oh. cheat sheets. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm cheating. Yay. Examine the bookshelf first. Yeah, the music is nice, but more of a background thing anyway. True. Let's see, this round doll thing is called a Dudamite thing. I figured I'd read a book or two up the and be more cultured in case you're wondering. You mean you aren't making stuff up for a change? <laughs> I think you also didn't know that no matter what, he's, he'll always write himself. Go on, Nick. Give him a good shove. Only if I feel like dying. Now, this yellow thing, this is a Japanese chess piece. I think it's a king. Not that I'm an expert or anything. I'm more of a reverse person, you know. Assuming she knows what she's talking about, these aren't exactly your typical mobster wannabe items. They're not trophies, are they? Mm -hmm. Unless it's the badger, then it's a bop. Hey! There's a piece of paper sticking out from under here. What is it? A repair bill? Looks like he did some repair work on his car. Does he even have one? $15,000 to replace a bumper and a light. That's insane. The car's registered to... The... Cadaverinis. Cadaver? Are you kidding me? Cadaverinis? Huh, so it's not even the tiger's car? Why would someone else repair... Else's repair bill be in the tiger's office? CD player. There's a CD player. It's, it's. Oh my god, you're right. I don't even fucking register that. There's a CD player on the desk, but the desk is so loud. It's a wonder you can't. You can. But the desk is so loud. It's a wonder you can hear it. The lid's open. I wonder what kind of music the tiger's into. Have you finished the coffee? <laughs> Yes, thanks. It was lovely. So, you drank it? All? <laughs> mm. If you touch anything else that doesn't belong to you, there's always another cup. That coffee! It was laced with something. I'm almost sure of it. Nick, my stomach! It's killing me! Oh, wait. Maybe it was just the burger I ate for breakfast. I, I sure hope so. You better take a look at the CD while we're still alive and have the chance. What the? What? It's not the Rocco soundtrack, is it? Claw the Tiger? Are you kidding me? It's... It's a demo CD. The artist's name has been handwritten on the disc in, in pen. MC Bomber. What? This must be the CD Maggie told us about. Let's listen to it. I bet it's heavy metal. No way. That woman will make us drink more coffee if we do. 
No! Someone's dropped the ashtray on the floor. Woman's scary, but she's kind of cute, though. <laughs> she's, like, creepy, but, like... <laughs> she's kind of cute, too. She's, like... She gives me, like, this, uh... Wednesday Adams vibe, you know. It's going to be a nightmare to clean up. Yeah, it's all over the rug and everything. I accidentally knocked over a really big space heater once. Cleaning up was such a pain. It was one of those super antiques where you have to burn a ton of charcoal. How did you manage to knock one of those over? Aren't they supposed to be super heavy? Oh hey! There's a book of matches here too. Matches, huh? Places don't give a, those out much nowadays. Hey, wait a second. What is it? Look what's printed on its cover. This is très bien. These matches could come in handy. We might be able to use them. Yeah! Pilot light for the office poiser keeps going out. Swing and a miss, Maya. Swing and a miss. Hey, look at this par Parisian's... Paris... Paris... Parisian? Parisian? Style coat. It's so chic. Looks more like a pimp coat to me. So pimps exist. Interesting. So pimps exist in this universe. <laughs> I haven't got an eye for fashion. Hey, look at this. This suit is the same color as the one you wear, Nick. Hmm. The same color as my suit? <laughs> Keep your voice down, Maya. You gotta take a look at some cake. <laughs> I'll just leave it here for you. Uh, yeah, sure. I, um, thanks. Just wait here quietly. Otherwise... Uh, sure! Did you hear that, Nick? Quite quietly, she said. Y yeah, sure. I have my eye on you. Only so I can take care of you. Understand? I don't even want to consider the implications of pimp existence. <laughs> I'm scared, Nick. So... What were you getting so excited about before? Look on the level of this, of this suit. That's... That's an attorney's badge. Is the tiger a lawyer? No way, look at this thing, it's made of paper. Oh. It's made of cardboard, technically speaking, but... Let's go with paper. Made of cardboard, thank you. <laughs> For some reason, your badge suddenly looks really cheap to me, Nick. Why doesn't anyone recognize an obvious fake badge when they see one? to look authentic. <laughs> Did I say that? <laughs> Painted. Yes. Painted with the most glorious pen. <laughs> Maybe marker. Yeah, those lines look a bit too thick to be a regular pen. Like a ballpoint pen. Like a black ball ballpoint pen. That's a marker. It's basically crayon. Let's take a little look closer, shall we? No, that this is for sure a marker. <laughs> I know it takes a picture of the entire screen, I don't care. Wow. <laughs> Come out from under the desk, Maya. What are you two snooping around in my office for? Nothing. We were just... My precious carpet, you just got ash on my rug. You just gon- You gonna wish your ugly feet never came through my door. It wasn't us. I was, it was already like this. You just wanna argue with me? Is that what you're doing? You, you think you can take me on? I'm gonna flatten you two into pancakes and turn you into my new rugs. Oh. Don Tigre, you're back. Do people even use their eyes in this game? No. Ah, that voice! It's like evil seeping into your head through your ears. I'm sorry, Don Tigre. I knocked over that ashtray earlier and... 
Has she got a death wish or what? All right. Huh? Forget about it, Violetta. It's none. What? 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 I ain't gonna get mad at you. You're too cute, you hear? It's so unfair. Here, have some cookies. I just baked them. And you'll need some strong espresso while you're discussing your loan. Phoenix Wright. Yes? You was either crazy or just plain stupid to change after me. I worked so hard, but now you've gotta come and mess with my plan. What I find... Yeah, like, do people even use their eyes? No, they see, like, a fucking spray tan phoenix right in there, like, mm, yeah, that seems about normal. <laughs> Did you change your per- Your- Am I five with Trump in orangeness? <laughs> I was thinking of a word, and then I just, like... Did you change your complexion, Phoenix? <laughs> what are you talking about? I mean, I suppose he has, like, a, um... Um... A New York accent, but I don't fucking know how to do a New York accent. <laughs> Worked so hard, but now you just gotta come and mess up my plan. So he was him. He's my phony. <laughs> But I don't care. No one gets in my way. What? I mean, excuse me? <laughs> you should have left the little girl at home, right? Um, I have a few things. No questions. This is the last time we meet. Ah, wait. Please. That was pretty weak, Nick. You waited until he was out of earshot before you shouted after him. Like you want to talk, I didn't hear you scream. Hold it, either. The espresso. <laughs> and cookies. This woman is definitely not good for my heart. Now, what was it the tiger called her? Violetta? Okay, we have to talk to Violetta. Objection, yes. So I'm kind of curious about your company, Tender Lender. The warm and friendly atmosphere you'd expect from a family-sized business. A conscientious rate of interest. And an attractive repayment policy. Why do I get the feeling the sentence is not going to end well? We will tenderly lend you that little bit extra here at Tender Lender. Hey Nick, things are a bit tight for Ride and Co at the moment, aren't they? I mean, there's that $500 you owe me from our card game for starters. Why don't you take out a loan? Would I like to take out a loan from a place like this? Not so much. Tender Lender is on your side. <laughs> so, um, let's say I'm late with my repayment. What happens then? Give you more coffee. Strong coffee. Um, right. I think I'd rather skip town. Hey, just, just remember, I can make strong coffee too, Nick. Strong tea as well. So, um, do you know about the incident we're investigating? What incident? Well, a man was poisoned in a restaurant just near here. That incident. Let me see. I was here that day with the manager. The manager being the type. Kurio Tigre. Kurio? Tigre? That's where the tiger thing comes from. Skinny Ape's got a name. It's got a real name, Nick. Hurry up and find out more about him. Skinny Ape. I mean, that is Phoenix. Backwards. It's Skinny Ape. <laughs> I find it so funny. about the tiger? I mean, Mr. Tigre? Cookie? Uh, sure! How do you like my cookies? I baked them myself. <laughs> Go ahead, Nick. The honor's all yours. No, no. Ladies first, Maya. <laughs> I'm 
matter how I look at this, I just don't get it. What are the tiger and this scary girl doing working together? By the way, is my audio fine? Because I've like added a filter to my mic so you can't hear my computer in the background anymore. So... Oh, when did this get, get turned like all the way down almost? <laughs> Especially like when I voice Violetta because her voice is like really low and raspy. So I don't know like how well my volume is good, even for Violetta. We are lovers. That's not exactly coming across in your tone of voice. Wait, how old is she? That's the most important thing. He is 42. She is... God fucking knows. Okay, cool. And I own Don Tigre my life. He is the one who saved me. Tiger, saved you? Please, address him properly as Don Tigre. Otherwise, I'll have to... Okay, okay, Don Tigre, of course, I'm sorry. He saved her life? Yeah, she looks around Maya's age. Maya is like 19, right? Yeah, like 19. I'd sure like to know how that happened. I'm very frail, you see. Just recently I died. Once. <laughs> you died? About four months ago, the doctor said to abandon all hope. I guess they were expecting her to take a boat ride across the river Styx. But Don Tigre, he saved me and gave up everything. Everything? When I found out what he had done for me, I was happy. No offense, but I'm finding that a little hard to believe. I decided I'd pay him back with my life by serving him coffee and espresso. Espresso. I still wonder about what's in her coffee. So is that why you've got that bandage around your head? <laughs> this? Um, so what's the story with the bandage? They put it on after the operation. A operation? It's just a little injury. A little fatal injury. A uh, fatal injury? Maya just suffered one herself by the sound of it. So... So, what's the injury you were talking about before when you said you had died once? Hmm. Ugh, she really creeps me out, Nick. Same here, but we've got to find out the truth. Okay, vitamin square. That's many logs. And it's only four. There he is! Old Sadie's back feeding the pigeons again. There! Take this! And this! And get out of my park! Like I thought, he's really mad. Come on, Maya, just keep your head down and... Let's sneak away while we still can. What? Why? Hello? Oh, man! What are you doing, Maya? Huh? Huh. Hey, he just turned his back on us. I'm not surprised. I bet I really heard his pride in court this morning. Hey, Mr. Kudo. Hmm. Ha. Hmm. 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 Pippi pigeon. Hmm. Ha. Look, we really need to talk to you, all right? Out with the demons. In with the good fortune. Ow, ow, ow. Seeds. Shell splinters. Painful. I always knew you were a demon, Maya. Um, I'm sorry about what happened in court earlier today. Yeah. Everyone will be talking about me behind my back now. A dirty old man who was so busy looking at the server serving girl's backside that he can't remember her face. A filthy, depraved animal. N not at all. Are you listening to me, boy? I don't care what you say. I saw that waitress put it in. Shut up. My brain should not be allowed to brain. So, you know what? I kind of understand why I just... My brain can't brain. Anyway, <laughs> She put some white powder into the young lad's javachino. I hear you. And another thing, the young layabout was wearing an earpiece on the same side of the lens of his broken... of his broken spectacles. 
We're really sorry. So I made a little mistake about the vase. So what? I know what I saw. I tell you, I tell you, I tell you. Okay, okay, take it easy, please, Mr. Kudo. Don't tell me to take it easy, you spiky-haired brat. Take this! Um, you said you were a craftsman, right? The modern world casts honest craftsmen like me aside in droves. Surely it's not that. I come from a long line of craftsmen, right back to the time of the shoguns. You hear me? I didn't become an em embroiderer. I was born one. Actually, I'm kind of in the same situation myself. Hi. Hi. I wanted to stick my fingers up that dribbling old judge's nose. And scream right down his ear hole. OBJECTION! Oh, so did you want to become a lawyer when you were young? I don't think that's quite it, Maya. I think he's just in a bad mood, that's all. I've got a tsunami of frustration inside and it's ready to burst out. If we let him start rambling now, we might never shut him up. What should I do? Suck it up, apparently. Guess I better let him talk. So, there's not much call for craftsmen these days, then. Suck it up, please. Of course not, you idiot. All I'm good for nowadays is running errands. Errands? Everyone takes advantage of the elderly. Buy some bread, Gramps. Take the dog for a walk, Granddad. Feed the pigeons, old man. What am I? Some sort of two-bit community handyman? Um, well... Buy some bread. Now that I can understand. But what's the point of feeding some seedy pigeons? Why don't people say what they mean? Get lost. That's what they're trying to say. Oh, yes. I'm just an inconvenience, you see. At home? At that restaurant? I just get in the way, don't I? I'm sure you don't. Wait a minute. What did he just say? At home and... That restaurant? Hold up. My restaurant. Are you talking about Très Bien? Did you get asked to run an errand there, too? Yes, I did. The very day that young brat was poisoned. What? So on the day of the incident, what were you asked to do? I'm glad you asked, boy, because I'll tell you what I was asked to do. All of a sudden, that young lad slumped over the table. The serving girl collapsed. And I broke that face. It all happened so fast, I was in a bit of a daze, you see. Then the owner shouted over to me. Excuse me, more. You, call the police. Call them yourself. I should have said back, but I didn't think of it at the time. So, did you end up calling the police? Like I said, I was in a bit of a daze. Did you call them on your cell phone? Ha! Do I look like I'd have one of those newfangled thingamajigs? I went out looking for a payphone, of course. What, looking for one? I couldn't find one right away, you know. Wandered around for five minutes or so. Five minutes? So, for five minutes after the incident happened, yes, sir. The owner was a très bien on his own. Why didn't you mention this in court this morning? Well, I would have if you'd if you'd give if if you'd given me the chance. But you all bullied me out of the courtroom. <sighs> Thank you, Mr. Kudo. You've certainly earned your kudos for today. Wait, wait a minute. If that's the case, there's more. I've got more to say. Oh yes, I remember something else. Bailiff, escort the witness out of the courtroom. It's not my fault. You're the ones to blame. You could have at least told us before we got to court. Is it really that important that Mr. Kudo was the one who called the police? What's important is the unaccounted time before the police arrived. The victim was dead, and Maggie was unconscious. Which leaves that woman, I mean that man, alone in the, in the restaurant. Mr. Kudo might have been chased out of the place on purpose. What do you mean? Maybe a certain someone didn't want him in the restaurant. Oh, sure. You go ahead and say I was in the way as usual. I suppose I should have been getting myself covered in pigeon poop instead, hmm? We need to get more details about what exactly happened. From Maggie and from Mr. Armstrong. Let's go to the kitchen. Looks like Mr. Armstrong's out again. But the place is open for business. You can't have an open restaurant without a chef. Without, without a chef. Hey, it's not my fault, Nick. Don't take it out on me. Only a couple of minutes after the incident happened. 
Mr. Kudo left the scene, leaving Mr. Armstrong here alone. Uh, missing when we need to talk to him the most. Maybe he's trying to avoid us on purpose. I mean, if there are no customers, no need for a chef. You got a point. <laughs> And then the detention center. There we go. Oh, Mr. Wright! Hello, Maggie. So, they finished questioning you. Wasn't it just unbelievable in court today, sir? I'm going to stay up all night and blog about everything that happened. Weren't you scared? It was pretty touch and go in there. Yeah, but you totally nailed that old man. Well, he was all over the place with his testimony. He's not the only one. Huh? What do you mean? Everyone else's testimony don't match up either. Not with what I remember from the incident, anyway. Is it possible she's the one misremembering things? Cute uniform. Mm-hmm. It's one of the DLCs in one of the 3DS games, too, I believe. You can get Athena to wear it. I mean, I too like it, I just don't feel like it matches, like, the atmosphere of the restaurant very well, considering it's so pinky and then just, like, orange. <laughs> Maggie, you know how you said that everyone else provided testimony that doesn't match up with what you remember? Yep. There are just so many things that don't seem to add up. The biggest contradiction is the other guy I saw at the victim's table. He was the one who slipped something into the victim's coffee. I'm sure it was him. Looks more like those old uniforms are fast food chains. Perhaps. But didn't Mr. Kudo testify earlier today? That it, it was the waitress who put some white powder into the coffee cup. So you really think it was the disappearing man that did it? Well, he's not the only thing that disappeared. The CD vanished as well. You know, the CD with the writing on it. Yeah, the M MC Screwdriver album, right? It was MC Bomber, Maya. That name was scrawled on the sports paper as well. I never did find that C CD at the, C at the crime scene, sir. Or the victim's medication. That's gone missing, too. Ouch, my head. This is getting way too complicated for me. You said that you passed out when the victim, Glenelg, collapsed, right? Yes, it's so embarrassing. I mean, I used to be a cop. When I came to, the restaurant was buzzing with police. And before I knew what was going on, they arrested me, sir. Yeah, I know. But also, his name is... What's it called when you have, like, a, a word that... Or, like, a, a phrase that is the same backwards and forwards. Like, forwards and backwards. So his name is Glenn Elg. And backwards, it is still Glenn Elg. A palindrome, that's it, thank you. So, Glenn Elg is a palindrome, and so is Lisa Basil. They're both palindromes. That's amazing. There will be something similar in Apollo Justice, I believe, like one case in Apollo Justice. Something similar. So between the time the victim collapsed and the time the police arrived on the scene, you have no idea what went on at Très Bien. No, no idea at all. Why? Is it important, Mr. Wright? The other witness, the old man from the park, he was, was pretty much chased out of the picture. Chased out of the picture? What do you mean? Well, CD wasn't inside the restaurant because he was told to call the police. Exactly, and you, Maggie, were unconscious. That means Mr. Armstrong was alone in the restaurant for a brief period of time. No, you don't think Mr. Armstrong set me up, do you? It's not the devs, it's the, um... Uh, it's a localization team. Those are the ones that make the... Localization. <laughs> When you consider the facts, it's hard to imagine that Mr. Armstrong isn't involved in this at all. Huh. He's like the master biting the paw of the dog that defeats. Are you sure about this, Mr. Wright? 
Well, the old man said as much when we spoke with him earlier. I don't know. The things that man says don't add up for some reason, sir. Maggie looks like she's trying to figure something out. Ah, okay. I see, I see, I see. Maybe we should ask Maggie exactly what she knows about old CD. So I guess I have to show... Present, yes. Kudo. Feel much better after the trial this morning. I've been a bit of a courtroom proceedings addict for years now. It feels like forever since I saw a witness as slippery as that old man. He's not really that bad of an old man, though. Still, I feel a bit uneasy. Huh? I thought you just said you felt much better. Maggie, if there's something on your mind, you've got to tell us. Especially if it has anything to do with Mr. Kudo or his testimony. Roger, I'll spill it all and see what you make of it. Is there anything about Mr. Kudo's testimony that stood out as odd to you? Actually, yes. The fact that he was even testifying to begin with doesn't quite... Doesn't quite... What? Well, when I took the coffee over to the victim's table... It's true there was another customer in the restaurant. Yeah, we know that already. It was Victor Kudo. But I can't really say... It was an old man. Okay, then how about calling him a really old middle-aged man? No, age isn't the issue. The other customer was... A woman. A woman? Are you sure, Maggie? Well... I'm not 100% sure, but I think so. Still, what did this woman look like? Um, she was sort of creepy. And she had a kind of cackling laugh. Creepy? Cackling? Why do I get the feeling I've come across a woman like that recently? Oh wait, beep, 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 beep. No, I gotta go press... Present. Let me present it. Damn it. Oh yeah, I got something you're going to love. Really? What is it? A lunchbox just for you. Here. Wow, a lunchbox. Weenies too. I can't believe it. Thank you, sir. Did you make this just for me, Mr. Wright? Yeah, it was Detective Gumshoe. Who else would make such a nice lunchbox for you? Detective Gumshoe? He's really worried about you. Looks like you put a lot of effort in into making this too. I can't accept it. Detention center rules. No gifts allowed, sir. Hey, come on, Maggie. Don't be like that. The rules are the rules. They lock you up if you break them. Somehow, when an ex-cop turned waitress says that, it seems a whole lot scarier. But anyway... I hate weenies! Sure. Oh, really? It's all yours, Maya. You can enjoy it with Mr. Wright. But... She's right. It's better than letting it go to waste. But... I guess so. No, when she looks at the camera. Oh no. I'm pretty sure dead wife guard wouldn't care. I like how we're just going with this. <laughs> well, how was it? That hit the spot. I love weenies. I bet you fucking do. <laughs> Good. I'm glad I gave it to you then, sir. Um. Criminal affairs. Cool. Especially <laughs> server just went up in smoke. Why the heck isn't the press conference set up yet? The superintendent's here already. Yeah, and there's a problem with the internet too. I already told you to stop using your computer, chief. But I'm watching videos online. I'm catching up on my Asian soap operas. I'm gonna have it's gonna have to wait, chief. I'm throwing in the switch. No, just when Sum Yung Kai was about to confess to his son's hot to truck girlfriend. Wow, this place is really buzzing. 
Something must be going on. Something really big. Huh? What are you doing here, pal? Detected gumshoe. Hot to trot? <laughs> Listen, I don't know. I'm just reading what I see. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> you can't be here right now. You'll be roped into the briefing if you stay. Huh? You've got big problems here today. Why? What's going on? It's a virus! A virus! Virus? There's a virus ripping through the precinct's computer system. But I really need to ask you some questions. Okay, I'm only gonna say this once, so listen up. Let me just scroll down so that I know what I have to... Oh, oh. Uh, well, there's a bit left of this part. Y yes! No matter how poor you get, never borrow mon money from a place like this, you hear? Um, okay? If you got money trouble, just go on a diet of instant noodles and hang in there. I am so tempted to just show you all my fucking cup ramen. <laughs> because I have like... Um... A whole, what is it called? A whole drawer filled with them, pretty much. In my kitchen. Hot to trot, ready, eager to engage in an activity, sexually excited, and willing to find someone with their sex life. God, this game, they just fucking gave no shits whatsoever. I feel like the further into, like, the games you get, like, the more they just, like, didn't fucking give a shit anymore. But, like, in the best way possible. You know, they were like, meh. Like, this- this episode. It- Cup ramen's so good. It is, but not when it's, like, the only thing you're living on. Hold on, wait. This is just what I have- at my desk I have four <laughs> of them <laughs> and that's just what I have eaten here okay fair enough yeah and I have at least two in the living room and uh, I have two or three on the kitchen counter that I haven't thrown away yet. <laughs> so, you know, there's a lot. I am very messy and also depressed. <laughs> huh. Oh, we're not thinking of borrowing money, detective. We want information. Oh, is that all? Well, let's see. Tender lender is considered to be even fishier than the average illegal loan shark. And it seems they ran into trouble just recently. Those guys have been pretty heavy-handed, calling in all their... All their debts. Yeah, that's it. Really? Don't go poking your nose around in their business, pal. You'll really regret it if you upset that lady. Alright, I get the picture. Hey, wait a minute! What did he just say? That lady. Who's this lady he's talking about, Nick? You better find out what... The story is with this lady. So, what exactly is a computer virus, Detective Gumshoe? I don't know. What? Look, I just go with the flow, alright, pal? And here I thought detectives were supposed to be somewhat knowledgeable. What's with that face, pal? You think you know what a virus is? Well, Nick, do you? A computer virus? Sure. I mean, only in simple terms, of course. Really? Wow, you know everything, Professor Nick. Yeah, I'm gonna call you Dr. Wright from now on. Hey, that sounds pretty cool. Don't you agree, Dr. Wright? Why do I get the feeling they're making fun of me? Okay, fine. I'm no expert, but I can at least explain the basics of the two to the two of you. A virus is a program that gets inside a computer and causes damage. Damage? You mean it makes a machine go boom and explode? No, the damage is, um, well, it's all internal. So the inside goes boom, right? Imagine all the case data you've got stored on your PCs here in the station. A virus could wipe out all that. That's the kind of damage I'm talking about. Whoa, that's scary! 
Yeah, and what's even more scary is that the viruses are infectious. Infectious? Most computers are connected together on the network, right? A virus can move from one machine to another over the network. Oh, wow, that's, that's fucking rough. Damn. Meanwhile, me just fucking download fucking uh, CIAs for like 3DS games and ROMs for DS games. <laughs> Though, to be fair, I'm trying to, like, find, like, the most, like, legit ones. I'm not just, like, going to, like, the first thing I see. I'm, like, reading and I'm, like, going through forums and being, like, oh, I, I, I recommend this one. And then I'm, like, okay, got it. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, of course you did. That's the dumbest thing. You need to, like, double check and, like, be really cautious about that stuff. So the virus just keeps spreading faster and faster. Hmm, just like a real virus, huh? Yeah, it's almost as if that's why they're called a virus. You know, that's why they're called a computer virus, because it works like a real virus. <laughs> but for computers. <laughs> but Nick, why would anyone want to make a program like that? They have nothing better to do with their lives. <laughs> yeah, it takes ages to type in all that data. Why would you want to destroy it, pal? No, people don't infect their own machines. They send the virus to someone else's. What? That's horrible. Oh, I get it. It's like you sneezing on Mr. Godot so he catches a cold. Right, then he wouldn't be able to turn up in court because he's too, he'd be too sick. <laughs> not like the world has any experience with the spreading virus. Mm, not at all, of course not. Because it doesn't exist, you know? <laughs> Maya, that's bioterrorism. <laughs> You really shouldn't do stuff like that, Nick. It's wrong. Who? What? Where? When and why did the conversation jump to talking about me? Anyway, that's what a computer virus is. A bad program that causes damage. And all the different viruses have names, right? I kind of feel like I've heard the name of the virus we caught somewhere before. The name of the virus, huh? I feel like I've heard of it before, too. What do we? Look at this! They're multiplying! <laughs> oh no, they're taking over the Ace Attorney universe! And I can confirm that they will actually take over the Ace Attorney universe! <laughs> it's like... They are multiplying. <laughs> they are. Uh, anyways, uh, then, yeah, I need to present the MC Bomber. Detective Gumshoe, um, about this. What? I'm trying to concentrate on Maggie and this virus right now, so I- ah! This is it! The stupid name, I remember now! I thought so, here it comes. Don't just nod to yourself and keep me in the dark, Nick, what's going on? It's okay, Maya, you don't have to cry about it. The name scribbled on the sports paper and written on that CD. That's the name of the virus. MC Bomber. What? Yeah, the virus that's just infected every computer in the station pal. It's Minecraft Bomber. <laughs> Can you give us any more details, please? We already knew about the MC Bomber virus from a while back. A group of criminals issued a series of demands to the head honchos of law enforcement. They threatened to release the virus if their demands weren't met. Who are they? I don't know. Some hotshots from the criminal underworld would be my guess. And now the virus has been released, huh? Yeah. It's in, ev it's in every computer and every op public office in the city. Everyone's going nuts. They're hopping around like they're dancing at a carnival. I mean, to be fair. All this stuff with criminals and viruses, it almost feels like we're in a sci-fi movie. Speaking of sci-fi, I watched Alien with my sister last night. It was a lot of fun. I mean, it was it was an okay movie, considering that it's like 
from 1979, you couldn't tell at all. Like, the only thing was maybe the... The audio was, like, a bit more, um... Like... Muffled, I guess, because, you know... Old technology. Yeah, it's like the... The first movie in, in the series. Isolation is the game, right? I believe so. My sister has that game. <laughs> but, but she's too scared to play it. <laughs> yeah. So we watched it and it was a, it was a good movie. And uh, the only thing that bothered me was that they were fucking dumb as shit. But like that's to be expected from a horror movie, you know? Like it wasn't really that scary. It was like kind of nasty in some scenes, I guess, but like it wasn't really scary. But it was it was a it was a decent movie, absolutely. It's not even that gory, really. Though to be fair, it's from it's from 1979, so. Like, you don't really see anything. Like, the most gory scene is with that one death of that one guy. You know, with like all, all, the, all the white stuff. <laughs> that sounds bad. But... I don't know, it's, it's more like nasty than gory to me. Oh, that's gross. <laughs> yeah. What do you think about my cup, by the way? <laughs> It's a pineapple! I love it so much. It's so cute. Pineapple mug. Anyways. I literally just did this because... Um, now, because I would just forget otherwise. Anyways. Ah. Apparently the programmer who made the virus was a real genius or something. And the focus right now is on tracing the root of this virus on the black market. I mean, someone put this virus up for sale? Yeah, and because this one's so powerful, they're estimating its price tag was in the millions of dollars, pal. In the millions? A virus can be worth that much? Glenn Moose. Our, our lord and savior, <laughs> Glenn Moose. <laughs> okay, and then I got a percent Violetta. Can you tell I just don't give a shit? <laughs> I'm just like reading <laughs> what I have to do. I'm like, meh, thinking. Don't think so. It's the girl who works over at Tender Lender. You want to stay away from her, okay? I mean it. She does look kind of unforgiving, doesn't she? This should be the last of your, least of your worries, pal. What's that supposed to mean? What could be worse? Her name's Viola Cadaverini. She's the only granddaughter of Bruto Cadaverini. Bruto Cadaverini? Do you know who that is, Nick? Never heard of him. Bruto Cadaverini is the boss of the Cadaverini family. The Cadaverinis? That's one scary sounding name. Yeah, I literally have cadaver in their name. <laughs> you can't touch them. They're way too powerful for the police. But you're thinking of taking them on. Aren't you? No! Yeah, mildly gothy. Pretty much. I don't remember ever saying I was going to. I don't get some more info out of Gumshoe about this family. Oh, you sneaky bitch! Look, it showed up on top! What is this bullshit? I'm not sure if I really want to get involved in this, but who are the Cadaverinis? Who are they? A scary bunch of people, that's who. You're a cop and you're scared? What's that about? Trust me, it doesn't matter if you're a kid or a cop. These guys are scary. They've got some serious clout. Was clout even a word? Like... I feel like that's like... A new word. Is it not? At least it's become popular recently. Like, there are so many things that I'm just, like, not registering. Yeah, me too, but, like, they said this in, um, they said, I believe they say clout in 
Apollo Justice too. So I was like, wait, it's not a new word? <laughs> I thought it was just slang, but no, <laughs> apparently it's a real word and it's been around for a while. Considering this is from like before the 2010s. <laughs> what? Can't touch them. They've got too much moolah. Moolah, as in, they're pretty much con they pretty much control all the cash on the city's black market. Black market, huh? And that includes tender lender, I take it. Sure, no one stands up to Bruto Cadaverini, and I mean no one. Interesting. So Viola's Viola's the granddaughter of the some mafia boss then. Yeah, and everyone knows how much Bruto loves this little girl. It means everything to him. Also, um, I'm not sure if it worked, but I wanted to try and like stream in higher quality today. No, it's still in 720p. Whatever. I tried. So, how did she end up at Tender Lender? I don't know, pal. But I heard she and the boss of Tender Lender are pretty tight. Tight? That's what it said in the file I read. Related to Maggie's case. Sounds like a pretty important clue. Oh, I can't believe it! I almost forgot the most important thing! And that is, you know, the lunchbox! How did everything go? The lunchbox? You remember the weenies? I hate weenies! Oh, yeah, those weenies. So, how did my weenies taste when they went down the hatch? Huh? Um, well, it was. Delicious. Yeah? That's what she said? Really? Um, well, not exactly. Don't worry about it, pal. I figured something would happen. So I came prepared. Prepared? What do you mean? I made a jumbo lunchbox. Oh. Do me a favor again, huh, pal, and deliver this. This sure is a heavy burden. And more ways than one. You can just imagine Maggie's little eyes sparkling with joy when you bring her that. First use of clout as we know it was 2009? Really? Wait, when is... Ace of turn... I can't even see what I'm writing. <laughs> uh, trials and... Tribulations. There we go. It came out in... 2004? What? Wait. <laughs> what the hell? Ahead of their time. Yeah, way ahead of their time. What about Apollo Justice? Apollo Justice. This yeah, beautiful. I can I can type. Apollo Justice came out in two thousand seven. Wait, but is that um? I guess it came out simultaneously. Wait. was originally released for the Game Boy Advance in 2004 in Japan and has since been released to several platforms including Nintendo DS version that was released in 2007 in Japan and North America so 2007 technically yeah it is the new version but i don't know yeah yeah, yeah i know i am well i'm well aware that this is like from a few years ago but the dialogue Huh. Case name uh, is Turnabout. Turnabout. 
turnabout. Oh, here, turn, uh, recipe for turnabout. That's it. Um, okay, I found a transcript. Hmm. Maybe it's, uh... Or two, here we go. Oh, clouds. No cloud is there! Wait! Okay, when was this web when was this page updated or whatever? Does it say? It must say somewhere. I am literally Uh God, there must be like somewhere where it says like when it was like last. Because it was released um, in 2004 in Japan, but it wasn't released in America until 2007. But that's still before the first use of clout what what is happening i'm losing my mind this is like this is just like fucking harlem shake again where again this game is originally from 2004 the though the localization i guess is from 2007 as we now figured out and uh it mentions harlem shake and harlem shake uh, didn't come out until twenty thirteen. This <laughs> This is literally the fucking fucking dumbest tangent. But there is like um a dance The Harlem Shake is a jerky arm and shoulder movement just in time to the music. The dance was created by Harlem resident Albi in 1981. The dance was initially called the, the Albi or the Albi as indicated by the name. It is associated with a predominantly African-American neighborhood of Harlem. So it, it has to be like the same one, but like, I didn't know that it was a thing prior to that. This is fascinating. Oh, the Harlem Shake became mainstream in 2001 with the release of a music of the music video for Let's Get It by G Depp. The video featured children performing the dance. The dance became popular in hip hop music videos of the era, especially with artists from Harlem. 
<laughs> is that so interesting? <laughs> I mean, damn. Fascinating. So it's like been around for a long time. And it seems like a jerky arm and shoulder movement, which is this thing, right? And that's like pretty much what the Harlem Shake was. Like when when you like, I mean, to be fair, you were supposed to like do like random stuff, but like that's like the one you see all the time in Harlem Shake videos. Oh wait, let me look at the. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna video, I guess. Whatever, I'll look into it later because it's fascinating, really. I kind of blown away. Anyways, back to the case. Back to the game. Wieners again, Nick? Tell me we don't have to eat all these two. I really can't eat anymore. Okay. Where are we at? Okay, we have to go to blue screens. Which is also incredibly funny. Blue screens incorporated, really. 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 OMG. Okay, we got Psyche Lock here. Okay. Ow. So, how about you tell me what kind of trouble Mr. Elg was in? I'm sorry, sir, but we don't deal with troubleshooting here. Hardy, 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 hard. It's clout? Oh my god! <laughs> what the fuck? But it can't be to the 2004 version because we already established that that. That it wasn't localized, it wasn't released in America until 2007. It was released in Japan in 2004. So it wasn't trend, it wasn't localized until 2007. But still, the fact that it's still clout, that's two years before we knew of the first mention of clout as we know it. So where the hell did they get in? <laughs> what the fuck? We don't deal with troubleshooting here. Perhaps you'd like to speak to someone in customer service. What's she talking about? I guess I better just take a shot and see where it gets me. Capcom are profits? <laughs> Shh, for real. My god. Miss Basil, let me ask you something. Did Mr. Elg's troubles have something to do with this? Oh, the tickets. They were tickets. Here we go. What is that? A bunch of horse racing tickets. All losing ones. With that many tickets, you could get one dollar at the at the recycling center. You good people are very, very bad. Cashing in on others' misfortunes is immoral. Is that a whiff of hypocrisy I smell? But what is the relevance of those of these tickets? Um also Another thing that was like so funny because I started playing uh, the second investigations game like after uh, the the pandemic started, and there was like some something about toilet paper that just like it, it just hit different. I want to. I wonder if I can like find it again. I mean, I probably can't. I just have to like scroll through my stuff, like my tweets. For a long time. At least I believe it was. Something about that.
but like exactly when it was, I don't know. I'm really scrolling through my old tweets now. <sighs> oh, please do the Spider-Man for PS4. But that is uh more recent again. I am looking through my tweets to see if I can find anything it's in March. God, it's only Western Animal Crossing. I'm like, when did I start playing it? I don't remember. Hmm. Ah, no. It was it was literally just like a uh, two screenshots. That's what it was. Uh like there is a poster on the wall next to the toilet. We are currently out of toilet paper. <laughs> and I made the tweet, life imitates art. <laughs> it was like, oh, wow, that, that, that was very relevant at the time. That was like pretty much a year ago. My God. That's when people fucking went nuts in hoarding toilet paper for whatever reason. As if that was going to help anyone. As if you use any more toilet paper. <laughs> what? I don't understand the logic of that. What is the relevance of these tickets? The victim, Mr. Glen Elk. He had a gambling habit, didn't he? I don't think that's a logical conclusion based on the facts. Everyone likes to go to the races from time to time. Yeah, but not everyone buys this many tickets. Anyway, I don't believe that proves anything on its own. You're right, but I'm not through yet. Mr. Elg's gambling wasn't restricted to horse races, was it? The uh... lottery, horse racing. He bought a lot of tickets and lost a lot of times. It's gotta have hurt his wallet pretty bad, don't you think? Maybe bad enough to be the cause of some pretty serious trouble, perhaps. No! You're right. Glenn did have a gambling habit. You good people must not follow his example, do you understand? Trust me, even if I wanted to, I don't exactly have the money to buy any. But if you win, there's no problem, is there? And Glenn had, the willing had a winning ticket, didn't he? For half a million dollars. Yeah, but... It's hard to imagine how he could have been in trouble then, isn't it? It's true that Mr. Elg won half a million dollars, in the end. But that was his first stroke of good luck. He was in deep trouble before that. Deep trouble? What do you mean? Mr. Elk's re real problem was with someone or something more terrifying and ferocious. Real Tigre. The boss of a loan office called Tender Lender. Tender Lender? People with businesses should think harder before naming their offices. Like, you're one to talk. Yeah, looking like ble blue screens, ink. Wow. Well, what do you think? Our firm is doing very well at the moment. I don't think we need to borrow money. No, no, no. I mean about Mr. Elf. You think Glenn had something to do with this Furio t -ray? Yes. I'm sorry. I don't know of any connection between the two of them. 
Really, because I've got proof that Mr. Elg and the tiger knew each other. Looking at... Oh, yeah, it's a calendar, of course. Perio Tigre, aka the tiger, is the boss of a loan office called Tender Lender. This is who Mr. Elg met with on the day of his murder. And the only thing a loan shark would talk with him about would be his debt. No! It is true that Glenn, and Glenn had racked up quite a bit of debt from his gambling habit. About $100,000, I think. $100,000? Ouch. But I heard he won the lottery, so he should have been in the clear. Shame Maggie couldn't get a bit of that good luck. Okay, so the guy got lucky and won the lottery. But what if he hadn't won? What was his plan then? Well, that isn't easy to say, but he said he would use his talents to repay the money. His talents? It's a lot of money. I suspect he was talking about programming. What computer program is worth $100,000? Perhaps you good people should leave so I can get back to my work. So close to cracking her. The program in question. Was it by any chance this? Well, this is it, isn't it? This is the virus that's infecting computers worldwide as we speak. MC Bomber. No! Glenn's head had more processing power than any computer, but it had been infected with a gambling virus. Glenn was in too deep. You mean he was in debt? Yes, $100,000 in debt, not an easy amount to repay. So... He said he was taking on some extra work, something a bit risky. Risky? How? Maybe he was going to become a waitress at Très Bien. Where do you come up with these ideas? So it's safe to say Mr. Elg was the creator of this virus, huh? The MC Bomber virus? Yes. It was the work of a genius. It was a work of genius, in a bad sort of way, of course, but still genius. Something like that would probably fetch several million dollars on the black market. Inconceivable. Gumshoe was right for a change. The date, December 3rd, that is marked on this calendar. All the computers were away to start them! That was his deadline for repaying his debts. I guess we won't be needing these horse racing tickets anymore. Throw him back on the floor. Who's the trash can, Nick? Um. Tickets, okay, yeah, move. Thunder, lander, viola, here we come. Oh yeah. <laughs> you said that bandage around your head was from an operation. You also said you suffered a fatal injury to the head, correct? Yes, the operation was very difficult, apparently. Now, by fatal injury, you mean you were hurt very badly somehow, right? Eh, eh. Did the injury in question have something to do with this? Looks at... Repair bill. Well, that's it. I have here a car repair bill. From this, it seems pretty obvious that this car was involved in an accident. Let me see that. This bill is made out to the Cadaverinis. Yes, it is. I don't think I ever introduced myself. Tell me, what do the Cadaverinis have to do with me? Something tells me she's not about to say hi and introduce herself. Alright then. The relationship with the Cadav Cadaverinis is very strong and this is why. Take that. 
I know exactly who you were who you are, Viola Cadaverini. You sustained that injury in a traffic accident, didn't you? Or do we know how old she is now? It happened about four months ago. How old is she? Twenty-five, okay. She's safe. It's still a bit weird considering he is forty-two, but At least she is old enough. <laughs> about four months ago I was driving in one of our family's cars when someone pulled out in front of me it was a motorbike or something like that I don't remember much anyway I swerved to try to avoid it but... I took a blow to the head I had one yeah I can imagine so what happened to the person on the bike? I'm guessing they didn't get away with injuring the Via Viola Cadaverini, right? I don't know what happened to them. They ran away. Or so I heard. Ran away? If they stay, I have... <laughs> hmm, is it possible? Could the person who committed the hidden run have been... <laughs> I didn't need to look at the guy this time. It was this man, wasn't it? He was the cause of your accident. It wasn't Don Tigre. I refuse to believe it. We collided. Motorbike in my car. But Don Tigre isn't injured at all, is he? It was the tiger who caused Viol Viola to crash. I can feel it. Plus one of her locks just broke, so she must suspect it was him too. I'm sorry, Miss Cadaverini. Oh, I'm sorry. That was not- <laughs> I'm sorry, Miss Cadaverini, but I have proof that the tiger was involved in a traffic accident on his bike. On the bike. It's not exactly a motorbike, but Mr. Tigre rides around on a scooter, doesn't he? And you'll notice that the front wheel guard is badly damaged. Miss Cadaverini, you know the truth, don't you? Eh, eh, eh. This repair bill was paid by Furio Tigre. The, the Cadaverines have known for ages who caused the accident, haven't they? It's possible, perhaps. Somewhere inside me, I know that may be true. I knew it. But, on Tigre still saved my life. The operation was very complicated. It was very, very expensive. How much are we talking? Very, very, very expensive. She seems kind of hesitant about giving an actual figure. I should back off. Well, anyway, it was the tiger who paid for it, right? After I recovered, Don Tigre told me. He said he paid for the operation because he cared about me. I believe him. Really? But do you honestly believe that to be true? Do you want to know what I think? I think the reason they paid for the operation wasn't because of you, but someone else. <laughs> Perhaps I shouldn't be saying this, but... Your grandfather, Bruto Cadaverini, controls a lot of dubious cash, right? And you are his beloved pride and joy. Sure, I don't know exactly how much the operation cost, but... If you weren't the granddaughter of Mr. Cadaverini, do you think Mr. Tigre would have paid the money? A million dollars. Four months ago, I was in a traffic accident. That's why I needed the operation. When I woke up, they told me it was nothing serious. Simple procedure. Procedure. Oh, really? Well, I guess if she recovered in four months, it couldn't have been too big. Instead, the operation cost one million dollars. A, a million bucks? My grandfather ordered Don Tigre to pay one million dollars in compensation. Us Scandinavians can't- we, we, we can't relate <laughs> to paying that much for, like, a necessary surgery. For, like, cosmetics? Sure. But, like, for, like, a surgery that you, like, actually need? No. Not at all.
Oh no, I need to get surgery. I'm going dead. Oh no, wait, it's free. Well, it depends, you know. But like, if you have to get a surgery, then yeah, it's covered. Compensation, huh? It's underworld lingo for paying money to settle a score. Basically, pay or get into some serious trouble. But a million bucks? This has to be related to our poisoning case somehow. I wanted to believe him. I wanted to trust what Don Tigre said. He said it had nothing to do with my grandfather being Bruto Cadaverini. I wanted to believe he helped me because he cared about me. That's true. Not about my grandfather. But I knew that wasn't really true. Oh, I'm so sorry. What he did to get the money was... It was evil. He said it was all for me, so I... I helped him. You helped him? In what way? Here, take these. What are these? Medical papers? I'm Bruto Cadaverini's granddaughter. He had to pay compensation. He was made an offer. He simply couldn't refuse. A million dollar bill for cran cranial surgery. Payment was due last year. Wow, I feel so bad for Viola. It's in inexcusable. Huh? There are two things that I consider inexcusable. Poisoning and betrayal. Only a coward would hurt people using either of those of these tactics. Is everything all right, Nick? We should get going. Right after we finish our espresso. Yeah. I won't need to convince Viola of anything else, so I guess I can get rid of this. Yeah, I feel sorry for her too. Bonjour! I have been waiting for you to return. Dr. Armstrong! Oh, good timing. I was hoping to find you here. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Well, he hasn't got anything to say to you, fellas. <laughs> it's Skinny Eve! Who are you calling? No, it's not Zinny. Zinny Oop. <laughs> no, it's Skinny Eve. I don't care. Who are you calling Skinny Eve? Come out from under the table already, Maya. Okay, hand it over. What? You just wanna play games with me? I don't recommend that. The medical papers, now! Uh-oh, I think he wants Viola Cadaverini's papers back. Y you mean this? The million dollar medical papers? Miss Cadaverini trusted you. That's why she said that she helped you. Forget about it. That girl's dumber than an eggplant. You just wanna know what's sad? I'll tell you what's sad. And it ain't only her face. She thinks she's got power because she's Bruto's little girl. Now that's sad. I mean, I'm pretty sure she... She made you change your demeanor completely earlier, but okay. I can't let you have these papers. Tomorrow in court. I'm going to expose what you did to get the one million you used to pay this off. Are you crazy or something? I don't care if you want to give it to me or not. There's two of us here. You got that? Two. Uh, we. We, we. So they fucking on the side, I see. M Mr. Armstrong. Forgive me. Desolé. I cannot argue with him. Ugh. That really hurt. Is that all you've got? I'll be taking those papers now. Armstrong, get that lighter! Wait! Don't take it too hard, Phoenix writes. I was so stupid. I shouldn't have let my guard down. Those medical papers were vital evidence. Hold it, pal! Detective Gumshoe? Detective? You think you're gonna stop me, Copper? Beat it! Whoa! 
Come on, Gumshoe, keep it together. You guys, get out of here. Leave this guy to me. But... Go, pal, and take this. If you get hurt. Who's gonna look after Maggie, huh? All right, thanks, Gumshoe. Wait, Nick, don't leave me behind. I'll get even with that guy tomorrow. In court. Tenderlander is going down. No, <laughs> Gumshoe fighting an evil tiger for, Ma for Maggie. Oh, that's cute. Oh, um, wait, how long is, like, the last... 30 minutes? What do you say? Should I... F should I just finish this case? I mean, I only have, like, two chapters left. I'm pretty sure. And it's... It's the... It's the trials. Let me just double check that I got the right... Yeah. Part one trial and part two trial. Uh... Considering that I have literally a guide, it won't take very long, like a little over an hour, like combined. That is at least my, my estimate. And also I want to go get my last donut. So be right back. Okay, I'm back with my little donut. <laughs> ah. Yes, save please. Good morning, Mr. Wright. Good morning, Maggie. So, what do you think is going to happen today, sir? Yesterday's ses session didn't go so well and ended on a giant mystery. That's true. And we still haven't solved a single part of it yet. Are you okay, Nick? Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, of course. I saw that! A little flash of doubt in your eyes. N no! That wasn't doubt, that was, um, determination. Why don't I believe you? Wait, hold on. He, he really took it? Oh, he gave it back, okay. It's nearly time, Maggie. You better get going to the defendant's seat. You're filled with determination, yes. Roger, don't let me down, Mr. Wright. I'm counting on you. Hey, pal! Hey, Detective Gumshoe. Quit stressing Maggie out. She doesn't need that. How do you know she was stressed? I was watching through the doorway. Oh. You look like you lost a case already. Show a bit of confidence, will you, pal? Here, maybe this will help. Huh? Have you taken up aromatherapy too? Not in a million years, pal. Don't tell me that you don't remember this thing. Hmm. Come to think of it, that doesn't look like one of those aromatherapy bottles. This is a small bottle that turned up in the Très Bien qu kitchen a, a couple days ago. Hmm. Wow, look at all these little bottles! Oh, they're, they're aromatherapy oils. He's got so many, they're overflowing onto the floor. Hey, wait a minute! There's one bottle that's different from all the others. What do you know? It doesn't have a label either. And 
It doesn't smell. Finally got the analysis back from analysis results back from their lab. So, what is it? Is it the poison? I'm afraid not, pal. It's medication. Medication? Yeah, for ears. Topical use only, apparently. For ears? You mean? Yeah, it's the medication Glenn Elg was using for his ruptured eardrum. What was Glenn Elg's ear medicine doing in the kitchen? Oh, this is so good. Hmm. Um, what about the unidentified fingerprints? Anything on that? Someone screwed up, so they only had time to analyze the contents of the bottle. Another hour, and they might have gotten something on the prints, but... Hmm. It's going to weaken its impact as a piece of evidence. Okay, pal. This is it. Make sure your defense is impregnable today. Got it? Today's trial. I'm gonna expose that guy for what he's done. Or my name isn't Phoenix Wright. Skinny. Court is now in session for the trial of Maggie Bird. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Ready and waiting as always, Your Honor. Very good. Then we'll get underway at once. Yesterday, we heard the testimony of Mr. Victor Crudo. He claims to have witnessed the defendant putting a powder into the victim's coffee. However, the witness's testimony was plagued with a number of problems. The mark on the rim of the cup shows that the victim drank from, from it with his right hand. But according to the old man's testimony, he picked it up with his left hand. Thank you, Mr. Godot. Furthermore, according to the witness's account, the victim was listening to the radio with an earpiece in his left ear. Yet the victim's left eardrum was ruptured, which made him effectively deaf in that ear. It's amazing how many contradictions a single case can have, Monik. Huh. Allow me to enlighten you, Your Honor. The world, you see, keeps turning. And we must turn with it. You've lost me already, Mr. Godot. Don't let the mysteries of yesterday mystify you today. Only losers think like that. You've got to change with the times. That's one of my rules. Are you implying that you've resolved these contradictions? You know the answers to this. You know the answers to these riddles? Your guy wasn't just throwing seed in here. He was throwing us off the scent. And today I'll prove it. Very well. Let the first witness take the stand. And you are... Oh, bonjour, everyone. I am Jean Armstrong, the owner and head chef of Le Trépien Restaurant. Enchanté! Uh, all the prosecutors. Their designs are, like, so, like... What's the, what's the word I'm looking for? They're... They're, like, intricate. You know, like the prosecutor, except for for pain, but we don't talk about pain because uh, he's a pain. Uh, not necessarily handsome, but like they're intricate, like they're 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 designs. They're usually just like more to them than just being like a person in a suit, which I can't really say <laughs> pain don't count. <laughs> Which I can't really say the same for, for Phoenix. And like the other um, defense attorneys, they look pretty basic. But like the prosecutors, I guess not so much Godot though, but like most of the prosecutors who have been around for a while, they're like really refined. And like you can like tell by their design that they're important, you know? Like. Considering they also get, like, paid way more than uh, defense attorneys. And it shows in, like, their costumes, you know? Mm. 
just something I thought about like last night and I was like, whoa! <laughs> for some reason, I don't know. Forgive me for asking weakness, but are you a woman? Oh la la, monsieur, as you can see I am la pote and perky gentleman, no? Ah. Eh. Um. On the day of the incident, you were in Trebien's kitchen. I like how they all of them just know how to pronounce très bien. <laughs> no, none of they say, none of them say très, très bien or anything. I, I just can't, I can't do it like that. I, I can't, I can't fucking speak French for shit, but like... Uh, yes. <laughs> Isn't that right? Who is you, monsieur? Everything feels right. Huh. Wow, he's totally unfaced. Doesn't anything imit intimidate this guy? Very well, your testimony, please, witness. Please tell the court what happened the day at the at Très Bien. Oui, volunteer. When it all happened, there was just two customers in my restaurant. I remember I was experimenting with some new art decos that day. Like having a large mirror between the tables, for example. Oui, perhaps that is what the old man was looking at. The cup, the earpiece and the glasses. He would have seen everything in reverse, no? A mirror? Oui, un grand mirror. The, the most enormous mirror. Suddenly, the, mis the mystery disappears. Like I said, the world keeps turning, so roll with it. Hmm, and that would explain the coffee cup and the earpiece conundrum. The mirror would have made everything appear back to front. The heck? It's way too early in the morning for this to be happening to me. Now then, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Fifth, okay. And fifth is... Look up. <laughs> the coffee cup, the airpiece, and the HMD. Let's think back over Mr. Kudo's testimony for a second, shall we? The boy was wearing the airpiece on the same side as as the green lens of his specs. No question, you can lock me up if I'm wrong. It was his left ear without a doubt. So to summarize, we were told both the HMD and the earpiece were on the victim's left side. Now if Mr. Kudo saw all that as a reflection in the mirror, it means both the HMD and the earpiece were actually on the victim's right side. Exactement. You see, monsieur, now that you think about it, it is not so hard, no? Unfortunately, that's where we run into a monumental contradiction with the facts. If Mr. Kudo really did see everything in a mirror, why is it that the HMD is now on the wrong side of his head? Order! Order! Mr. Wright is correct. If the witness genuinely observed the victim re reflected in a the mirror, then we would expect the victim's eyepiece to have been over his right eye. How bitter. Yes, you are bitter. Trite, you should have a taste of this bitterness. It'll calm you down in no time. Are we talking about your coffee? Or something completely different? You don't understand the way the witness thinks. How he thinks? You remember this, I presume. The I broke the vase. Sorry, apology. Let I mean, Mr. Kudo's sworn, sworn testimony? Exactly. The old man has one very grievous habit. Other than throwing seeds, the more of an impression something makes, the more muddled his mind makes it. And what's the most striking thing about Mr. Elg? Clearly, it's the victim's eyepiece. And that's my point. The old man strikes again. Mr. Elg's HMD made a big impression on the old man. I saw the earpiece in those new fangled spectacles he was wearing. Oh yes, they were both on his left ear. Do you hear? His left ear! Ha. Huh. Well trite. Uh. 
coffee was far too black. <laughs> it was star black. Yeah. Man suggested drinking oil, like straight up oil, with like some ashes mixed in there. It's the worst, but best impression of Kudo ever. Wow, I really thought he was old CD for a minute there. Why, wow, I was supposed to act like him? Ah, oh, screw that. Godot, Godot's good. Enough. I must agree that yesterday's witness was irresponsibly rash in much of his testimony. Bad luck, Nick. Looks like the boil of a contradiction you found is just a rash. A mirror can't be beaten by a handful of seeds, nor can it lie. So what exactly was the old man looking at? Fill us in, Miss Armstrong. Go on, tell the court. We're all ears. Oui, I can explain. Please, if you will look at la plans of le restaurant. Alors, is everyone sitting comfortable? Comfortable? <laughs> comfortable? Comfortable? <laughs> His inside cannot be feeling well. Yeah. Is everyone sitting comfortably? God, that was harder. So much harder than I fucking needed to be. La Mira was in the middle of the restaurant, dividing the two walls. There is only one seat from which you can be, have, could have seen an image of the victim. That was the seat at the table next to the victims. That was where the old man was sitting. Oh my god, it's fucking awful to read this. After a terrible incident, incident <laughs> occurred, I moved the mirror so it was not in the way. But naturally, I did not touch anything else. Hmm, I see no problem with the explanation we have just heard, but... Are, are they dumb? I mean, I already know they are, because, like, we know that he had... His spectacles and the earpiece on different sides. But they're like, oh yes, he saw them on the same side. That does add up. Do they know how mirrors work? I don't think anyone knows how mirrors work. <laughs> I see no problems with the explanation. Oh, I just read that. From the table next to the victims, Mr. Kudo could have seen the victim in the mirror. What a knocky little coquette. C -c 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 cat I am confusing all the men like this don't worry about it we can keep up except for the guy breaking out in the cold sweat over there again uh, I hate that guy you said you didn't touch anything else apart from the mirror are you quite sure about that volunteer of course very well Mr. Wright your cross-examination if you please Okay, it was on the third. Zat. The. And then it's a crime photo. <laughs> this is the fucking most boring playthrough of Ace Attorney. Because I literally just follow a guide. Oh my god, whatever. This piece of evidence contradicts with the testimony we have heard, Your Honor. In the crime photo? Yes, this photo clearly shows something that theoretically should not exist. What on earth do you mean by that, Mr. Bright? Should not exist. Huh. Sounds like you're describing yourself, Trite. Now then, if the defense would please clarify its statement. What is the something that should not exist? No shame in looking at a guide. No shame in, like, just staring at the guide. <laughs> pretty obvious that this is what should not be in the picture. The vase? What possible connection does that have with this witness testimony? Your Honor, I am telling you that there should have been no vase on this table. Because it very clearly contradicts with this piece of evidence. Testimony... Where the hell is it? Oh, there it is. There is one thing that was clearly demonstrated by yesterday's testimony. Mr. Kudo broke the vase that was on the table where he was sitting. Okay, fair enough, I guess. And yet, 
As the court can see, there is an unbroken vase on the table next to the victim. Why? Because Mr. Kudo was not, in fact, sitting at the table next to the victim at all. Objection. Don't be an idiot, right? That's impossible. That seat's the only one Kudo could have seen the victim's reflection from. Exactly. There is only one conclusion we can draw from this contradiction. There was no mirror in Très Bien that day. Your testimony, Mr. Armstrong, is an elaborate lie. Mon dieu! Don't try to confuse the court, right? Obviously, the witness cleaned up the vase. While the police were talking, taking their time getting to the, to the crime scene. Objection. Unfortunately, Mr. Godot, that doesn't quite work for me. Mr. Armstrong already testified to the contrary in his own words. I did not touch anything else except the mirror. Well, witness, what do you have to say for yourself? I was right. There was no mirror in the restaurant, th restaurant that day. In light of this revelation, we return back to the original problem. Why did the victim have an earpiece and an ear in which he couldn't hear? Huh. You only get one shot in life. And there's no turning back. If you want to claim that the mirror wasn't there, right? And this problem is all yours. How do you explain what the old man saw? If I can answer this, then I'll be much, much closer to the truth. I can feel it. Are you going to be okay? Can you really solve this contradiction, Nick? There's more than just this one contradiction, Maya. What do you mean? Remember what Maggie told us. There was another man at the victim's table. And there was a sample, div sample CD on the victim's table. It all flies in the face of Mr. Kudo's testimony. And I think I know the reason. Why nothing in this case is adding up. Well, Mr. Wright, let's hear your answer. Yes, Your Honor. The reason behind all the contradictions in Mr. Kudo's tis testimony is simple. The victim was a phony. This case is riddled with contradictions. Yet there is one very simple answer that clears them all up. And what is that? The incident Mr. Kudo witnessed and the incident the victim experienced were two completely different events. What? Yes, the victim that the Mr. Kudo saw wasn't Mr. Glenelg at all. It was an imposter, a phony pretending to be Mr. Elg. Obviously, unlike the victim, there was nothing wrong with the imposter's left eardrum. That's how he ended up wearing his, the earpiece in his left ear by mistake. Order! Order in the court. Settle down or I'll clear the courtroom. Quiet, Gramps. Why don't you clear out of here, huh? What did you say? Trite. Are you saying that what Mr. Kudo saw was a setup? Yes. Someone pretended to be Glen Elg and acted out the whole coffee poisoning. All for the express purpose of creating a witness out of one Mr. Victor Kudo. Get real, Trite. Why would anyone want to do that? Isn't it obvious? The thing Mr. Kudo was most insistent about in this in his testimony was this, the serving girl brought him a javachino, but she put something in it. And that's a serving girl right there in the defendant's chair. I remember her well. It, it, it's so hard to believe, but there was one and only one reason to show Mr. Kudo this fake poisoning: to show Maggie Bird in the act of poisoning the coffee. Are you insinuating that the waitress in the old man's story was a fake as well? It's true that there were no other customers in the restaurant at the, at the time, but... It's also true that the chef was there. He would have noticed what was happening. That, that's right. Well, witness, if your restaurant really was the scene of such theatrics, you would have known about it, correct? Oh la la, this is the most difficult for me. No, it's quite simple. All you have to do is testify. You are under oath, after all. Was there, in fact, a phony at Très Bien that day? The defense demands that Mr. Armstrong tell the whole truth about what happened. 
Based on defense's request for additional testimony, it's accepted. You will accurately explain in detail the events in the restaurant that day. We. Oui. La victim, Monsieur Elg, he came to my restaurant alone. I remember the old man arrived not long after him. There was no other customers. When he got word he won the lottery, Mo <laughs> Monsieur Elg became very excited. It was approximately five minutes later that the poisoning incident occurred. No, there was no time for a pony to do the acting. Just so we're clear, there was no mirror in the restaurant after all. Je vous demande pardon. Forgive me, Your Honor. I lied because I wanted this mess to be cleared up quickly. What you have just done in commit is commit perjury, Mr. Armstrong. I will decide how to punish you later. We. Oui. For now, we will hear your cross-examination. Mr. Wright, if you please. Hmm, you took that perjury charge a bit too well. But I'm guessing he'll be in more serious trouble after this cross-examination. My old man, you mean Victor Kudo, right? We. Oui, it comes often from a special coffee. I drank your coffee once, Mr. Armstrong. It's special. I'll give you that. It's worth a sip just for the experience. Oh, you make me so happy, Monsieur. You are most welcome anytime. I said it was worth one sip, and nothing more. So old Mr. Kudo arrives at the restaurant around the same time as the victim. Maybe I should ask about his arrival in more detail. Out of curiosity, about what time was it when Mr. Kudo arrived? Oh, no. I cannot remember, monsieur. Hmm. I believe we were told by a witness yesterday. The crime was reported at 2.25 by a kind of scary old man, sir. Does that perhaps jog your memory, witness? The incident happened, happened about 20 minutes after he arrived. So the victim must have arrived between 2 p.m. and 2.10 p.m., no? Hmm, just after two, huh? Thank you for your help in jogging my memory, monsieur. You are wonderful. Ha ha ha! I can't just sit here. I can't sit here all the time and do nothing now, can I? Apparently you can. The time of day will be added to the witness's testimony. Oui, monsieur judge. Everything I do, I do it for you. Mer merci bien. That's French, isn't it? <laughs> I'm glad at least one person is in a good mood. He's even humming a song to himself. Uh, it has to be this. Yes! I'm afraid I finally got you, Mr. Armstrong. What? What do you mean? At the time in question, the victim was listening to the radio with his earpiece. The show he was listening to was Millionaire Radio. Each week, they announced the winning numbers of the half-billion-dollar lottery ticket. Oui, that must be the show Mon Monsieur Elg was listening to. I can't see any problem with this testimony, Mr. Wright. I wonder... You say the victim arrived at your restaurant after 2 p.m., correct? Oui, oui, I am sure of it. I remember it perfectly now. I know it was that time, because I had just finished serving the lunch menu. Get to the point, right, if you have one. That show is broadcast live at 1.30pm, and it claims to be the most thrilling 10 minutes of your life. It's on the air at 1.30? Now supposedly the victim made some noise when it was announced that he won. And yet, I don't believe his cry of joy would have occurred after 2 p.m. Because the show had already finished more than 30 minutes earlier by that point in time. No! This victim we've been told about has done nothing but the impossible. 
listening to the radio with a ruptured eardrum. Catching a show that was already over. There is only one conclusion you can draw from these facts. This victim was an imposter acting out the poisoning 30 minutes after the real murder. <laughs> That's some delayed reaction. <laughs> yes, there were two Glenelgs in Trebien that day. The real Glenelg, now dead, having been poisoned by the real killer, and the phony Glenelg acting out the events for Mr. Kudo to witness. It certainly seems that way. I mean, if it wasn't, if that wasn't the case, how could you explain the time discrepancy? Quite a performance trait. You were almost on a roll. But sadly, you lack the rock hard and foundation of rhythm to build your song. What is it? What is this? Music theory 101? Let's recap. According to your imaginative theory, it's now just after 2 p.m. The phony elk is performing a play for the benefit of Mr. Kudo. How do you explain then where the real Glen Elg is? I don't believe I have to spell this out for the court. However, at that time the real Glen Elg was already dead. And that's certainly the obvious conclusion. Thank you, Trite. That's exactly what I was hoping you would say. What? Now, I presume you can prove this theory of yours. Can you explain where the missing corpse went to? The missing corpse? According to the old man's testimony, there was only one other customer there. If that customer was the phony Glen Elg, then where did the killer hide the body of the real victim? Ah! The prosecution has a valid point, Mr. Wright. If your theory is to stand up to examination by the court, you must provide us with proof by answering the prosecution's questions. Proof of question. Where did the killer hide the body? Yes, Your Honor. No conjecture, Trite. Let's hear some facts for once. Show the court a piece of evidence that proves where the body was hidden. Evidence? What's with the intense pressure in here all of a sudden? I thought I had him with that contradiction. But he's turned it all around and backed me into a corner instead. Well, Mr. Wright. The court will now hear the defense's theory and, and evidence. First, where was the body of the real Mr. Elk concealed? We're almost done with this part, by the way. Inside, très bien. It'd be too... Itted? Itted? It would would have? It would have been too dangerous to take the body outside. Obviously. The body must have been hidden somewhere inside Très Bien. Hmm, interesting. But where what could a body have been hidden inside a restaurant? Perhaps you would care to show the court on these plans, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. The exact location where the body was concealed inside the Très Bien is... The body was hidden here! Hmm, I see. A supposition. But the real question is, can you back it up? Where's the evidence that proves the body was hidden in that location? <laughs> Mr. Armstrong, do you recognize this bottle? No, 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 no! I have never seen that ugly bottle before in my life! I only use the very best bottles, monsieur. The highest quality only for me. Where was that bottle found, Mr. Wright? Interestingly enough, Your Honor, it was found in the kitchen of Très Bien. I think I got chocolate on my controller. <laughs> I'd wooded. <laughs> Quoi? But I only ever use these bottles for my arom aromatherapy oils. But this bottle doesn't contain aromatherapy oil, Mr. Armstrong. No, it contains a medication. What kind of medication? I'm sure everyone remembers, don't they? That Mr. Elg visited an otolari... <laughs> otolari... Golagical. What? Otolaryngological clinic. 
and was given medication that day. Can't be serious. The defense had the contents of the bottle analyzed and I have the lab results here. The contents of the bottle match the prescription that was given to Mr. Elk. Glenn Elk's murderer hid the body in the restaurant kitchen. At which time this bottle fell out of the victim's pocket. Mr. Armstrong, when the incident occurred, didn't you say you were in the kitchen? M Mon Dieu! So you know what I'm about to say. It was you who hid the victim's body. You did a fine job pretending to defend my client, Maggie Bird. However, you were setting her up to take the fall behind the poor girl's back. No! Order! Order! This is an extraordinary development. Witness, did you... Did you murder Mr. Glenel? Never! I could not do such an horrible thing. No. Damn. He says no while he drinks. He's like... No, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna fucking joke. Choke on the fucking water. Mr. Godot. The bitterness. Every time I get lied to, I always down a mug of coffee. That's one of my rules. Do you have the slightest idea of how many cups you've had by now? Then I like to do the same to the person who lied to me. I like to take them down with my empty cup. Listen up, check. How about a brand new flavor in your ear? My age-deficient friend. Je vous demande pardon. Please, you must hear me out. It is a trap. Listen to me, por favor. You hablo español, Mr. Armstrong, and por favor is Spanish. I'm only going to ask you once. Did you do it? No, no, no. Absolutely no. I simply... I... Let's hear it. You've got one shot. Right, Gramps? Witness, the court will per permit you the chance to make one final statement. If you lie under oath again, Mr. Godot's coffee mug awaits you. As does my gavel. We. Oui, it is clear. Do they always say in the movies? I've got a bad feeling about this? Very well. Begin your final testimony, Mr. Armstrong. It is true. I hid the body in the kitchen. A man forced me to do it. I had no choice. I had to go along with him because there was a reason why I could not refuse. But it did not kill him. I swear it. I must, you must believe me. You were forced? By who? I... I cannot say, or I will be... erased. Let's try a different question, then. When Mr. Elk died, was he really the only person at his table? There was... There was another man. I knew it. Maggie was telling the truth. You may cross-examine the witness now, Mr. Wright. There's just one more thing I need to do. I gotta break this guy and get him to tell us the name of, it, of the real killer. Uh... Second. Let's end this dance of Ring Around the Rosie, Mr. Armstrong. This is the man that you've been referring to. Huh? Who is that? I feel like I've seen him somewhere before. Uh, I don't know, maybe a month ago in this very courtroom? This man is Furio Tigre. He is the manager of a loan office called Tender Lender. There's no point trying to hide the truth anymore, Mr. Armstrong. I know you couldn't go against Mr. Tigre. At least, not while he had this on you. I mean, where is the... Oh, there it is. A half million dollar loan from a black market loan shark. And you had no way of paying it back, did you? That's why you were forced to do anything, this man told you. Oui, it is as you say. Mr. Armstrong, the tiger, 
He told me he was going to use my restaurant for a business rendezvous. On the day in question, he was meeting the victim to demand that he repay his loan. <laughs> I'm having a stroke reading this. I don't know why it happened like that. I just did what he told me to do. I had no choice. I carried the body and the inconscient Maggie out of the dining area and into the kitchen. After that, I just tried to forget what I had seen. I think we can now safely say that the man who forced your hand was Mr. Furio Tigre. Hmm, I do have one further question for you, Mr. Armstrong. The poison and the lottery ticket that were found in the, in the defendant's apron pocket. Was that your doing as well? No, I knew nothing about that. Making it look like it was Maggie had done it. I was, I was not. It is despicable. Despicable. I know it's despicable, but I don't know how to, to say it in in French. I was about to say Japanese, and then I was about to say Chinese, and I was just, I was just a mess. Mr. Godot, you are summoned this furio Tigre as a witness. I doubt that can be arranged today, so we will adjourn for now. Proceedings will continue tomorrow. Thirty minutes. What? The trial will go on. I'll see to it myself. I need half an hour to get that guy on the stand. Not a minute more. How the... Don't sit back and relax yet, Trite. No one knows if that chef is really tr telling the truth or not. This trial could still go either way. Very well. Your request is granted, Mr. Godot. We will resume once Mr. Tigre is ready to take the stand. Until then, court is adjourned for a 30 minute recess. Yes. Cool. That's it. That's it. And then there's the last part. <laughs> ah, not really much. Not really much to do. We're almost through it. So we're finally going to see the tiger on the stand. We've almost got this case won now, Nick. I wish I could agree. Huh? When I cross-examined Mr. Armstrong just now, he said he was just doing what the tiger told him to do. But Godot picked up on it, remember? He pointed out that without proof, we don't know if what he testified is the truth. You mean, you think Mr. Armstrong was lying? I don't know, but if that's the line the prosecution takes, we could be in trouble. I get the feeling that we don't have the ca case-making evidence we're going to need. Hey, pal. Detective Gumshoe! Why are you so jumpy about it, Detective? Your hair's standing on end! Hey, that's the part calling the kettle black, little Miss Topknot. It's not a top knot. Remind about the hair. Just calm down, all right? I can't stand still when I don't have a job to do. I, I kind of get wound up. Ah! No kidding. You gotta have something you need me to do, pal. Anything. Well, um. Hey, I'm gonna take a jog back down to the precinct. I can get some prints analyzed for you if you've got an hour. An hour? The trial will have reconvened by then. But Nick, we still don't have a really decisive piece of evidence, right? True. Without some kind of trump card to pull out of the bag, we're really stuck. You said you could get the, some fingerprint analysis done in an hour. You bet. In that case, would you mind checking the prints on this for me? Let me just... Uh, small bottle. Okay, I figured it was that. If you're going back to the station anyway, could you find out whose prints are on this? Oh, hey, that's the small bottle I gave back to you this morning, right? Yeah, I think it's time we solve the last mystery of who this, who the prints on it belong to. Sure thing, pal. Actually, that's been gnawing at me too. Okay, I'll get this off to the lab right away. Just make sure you don't lose the case before I get back. Go make some confetti. <laughs> this is pretty much the final showdown, I guess. It's time to separate the phonies from the real guys. Time to take a bite of my... Court 
April, now reconvene. Mr. Godot, did you find this Furio Tigre? I even tamed him for you. It was a three cup job, no problem. Tamed him? This guy's name may be Furio Tigre, but come on. He's pretty lively. <laughs> I think you may just be tired. Be careful, he still bites. Very well. Please show Mr. Tigre to the stand. Um, witness, please state your name and occupation. Don't hide under the table, Maya. Unless there's room for me down there, too. Maya, um, would you mind? What you said to me? Nothing. I didn't say nothing. Honest. You would have guessed that fear would induce a bad Brooklyn accent in the judge. So it... it is... I got business to take care of, you hear me? So who the hell called me into this hole? Was it you, Spikey? Uh, no, of course not. It was the judge. Your honor? Oh dear, I am, um, I seem to have dropped my pen. Where on earth is it? Don't mind me, just carry on with the proceedings as normal. That's it, we're doomed. Maybe you didn't hear me. I said, who the hell was that called me in here? There's no need to shout. We can all hear you. What do you say? There's no point struggling. You're caught in a snare. The relentless snare of the law. And I'm the one that hauled you in. It's too cool. Don't let him get the better of you, Nick. Let's start with the basics. You know about the incident in question, correct? Incident? I don't know nothing about no stinking incident, Mask Boy. You mean you didn't attend the previous trial of Maggie Bird? Maggie who? I got more important things to do than watch courtroom dramas. Of course. Well, perhaps you could give us your testimony then. Please tell us about what you did on, did on the day of the murder. Hmm. Phoenix writes. Is that what you did on the day of the murder? What did you do on the on the day of the murder? Huh. Phoenix Wright. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're the one who got this set up. Got who set this up, didn't you? <laughs> and you would be jealous. You was gonna regret the day you ruffled the tiger's fur. You hear what I'm saying? <laughs> Maybe I should have brought a diaper with me today. Get a grip, Nick. Okay. Says you, Maya. Fucking Maya. I don't know nothing about no murder. That's a double negative. Well, actually, that's a triple negative. So that makes sense. Oh, diaper. I was like, who? what are we talking about? Who? Oh, yeah, that, that makes sense. One, one karma probably has some spare one thing. <laughs> I was tied up with business in December last year. Spent all of my time in my office. I got whales lined up to borrow cash from Tender Lender every single day. I thought that said Tinder for a second. Spare diapers, yeah. You just want to check my alibi? Just ask Violetta. Ah, at last I found my pen. Very well then, Mr. Wright. Your cross-examination. What is it? Please, witness, if you could refrain from shouting out like that. I know the kind of games that guy in blue plays. That lowlife ain't no lawyer. He just punches away at stupid details till he wins. <laughs> lowlife? Me? Listen up, smarty. Every time you ask me something that... Something that doesn't... Doesn't relate to this case. I'm gonna bill you $50,000 and you're gonna borrow the cash from me. Uh... That's one loan contract I refuse to sign. But don't think it ain't gonna hurt when you tangle with the tiger. Huh. I love a good spectator sport. Just a minute. That's really not. This witness is, how can I put it, a hungry tiger roaming the urban jungle. 
Get on his bad side and he'll bite everyone's heads off. Yours too. Very well. I have no choice but to impose a penalty system here. You better be listening. I said I got no business to take care of. I got business to take care of. Big business. If I don't split now, I ain't gonna catch my bus. And the court will impose a penalty for any irrelevant pressing of, of witness testimony. Keep that in mind as you begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. You can do it, Nick! Come out from under there already, would you? Okay, in the second, and press. Are you sure about that? We're talking about one month ago, you know? You see these teeth? That's how sharp my secretary is. Sharp? Is he talking about Viola Cadaverini? She writes everything down. Everything in my scheduler. That's what it is. December, mainly in the office. That's what it says. That's where I was. That seems like a rather uh, sketchy schedule. There he goes again. Mm, what the tiger did all December isn't the issue. What's important is what he was doing on the day of the murder. So now what? Press harder. Mr. Tigre, what do you want? Uh, if you wouldn't mind going into a bit more detail. This is a dead end, right? And you know it. No, it's not. It says here that I have to do it. Remember the rules. Thank you. No, it's essential that we establish the witness's alibi accurately. I agree. The victim was killed on December 3rd. Where were you in the office? Were you in the office that day, too? Maybe you was ain't listening. Of course I was. I never set foot outside. I had meetings all day with a bunch of cats wanting to do business with me. I had never seen that young kid before. I do believe the witness's last statement was important. Um, Mr. Godot, if you could please. Mr. Tigre, the court asked you, asked you to add that last statement to your testimony. Hmm. Don't let an animal beat you. Be a man, your honor, and ask him yourself. The day he was talking about, I was in the office too. I never saw the kid before. And then it's the, uh... This, right? Uh, yeah. Mr. Tigre, you claim you didn't know Mr. Glenn Elg, but it appears that Mr. Elg knew you. What? Mr. Elg left this little note on his calendar. Meet with the tiger. And the date? December 3rd. December 3rd? That's... that's the day of the murder! So, Mr. Tiger. Tigre, I submit that you did indeed know one Mr. Glenn Elk. Because on the very day of the incident, you met with him. Not bad. He was actually not bad. Sorry? I was just messing with you. To see how good you were. Did you hear that, Nick? He said you're not bad. That's one compliment I can do without. Plus, he's lying through his teeth. Um, witness, please remember that you are under oath. Lies will not be tolerated. He's calling me a liar? Is that what you're doing? Uh oh We're gonna skip it. Uh -oh. You're saying that your claim to have never seen that kid before is the truth. You said I'm dead serious. You better believe that's the truth. Ha! Huh. And I'd say that gives me time to enjoy another cup of pure black magic. Well, it's black, all right. That is, while you testify for the court again, Mr. Tigre. Oh, yes. Um, would you mind indulging the court witness? He never actually met the victim? That's gotta be a lie right there. It's time I nailed this guy. I mean, he already said he nailed you, so... <laughs> to enjoy some pure black tar. <laughs> It's too great to be tar, though, isn't it? I ain't no liar. I ain't never met. I never met Glen Elg. There was some lame guy with that name, though. Wanted to borrow cash from me. I set up a meeting with the guy at my office, Tender Lender. I waited around for him, but he ain't ever showed. I ain't never been to that très bien joint you see here. Even he can say it properly. I see. That all seems perfectly logical. You had arranged to meet with a victim, but he didn't show up. 
I've heard it's pretty hard to keep appointments appointments when you're dead. Very well. You may begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Didn't I tell you I got a big deal going down today? I ain't gonna make my bus now. I'm gonna have to take the express train. That bill's going straight to you, Wright. <laughs> I ain't never been to Trebien. Uh, the matches. Mr. Tigre, is there something you'd like to tell the court about these matches? Matches? What are you talking about? We found them in your office at Tender Lender. They're from that restaurant. If you've really never been to Trebien before, what was the book of the restaurant's matches doing on your desk? You've been snooping around at my stuff now, too, Spice Guy? What are you, my ball and chain? Ain't no broad controlling me. Order, order. Well, witness. I think it's time you started telling us the truth, don't you? Sorry, I'm terribly sorry. Forgive me. I ain't no pussycat. I don't go back on what I said. But okay. I was at the joint that day. What? But listen good, alright? I might have been there, but I still never met that kid. Well, well. Looks like an order just came in for another testimony. I'm this close to proving it was him. He did meet Glen Elg that day. And he did put poison in his coffee. He must have. I was supposed to meet with the kid at the restaurant that afternoon. When I opened the door to the joint, I saw one ugly scene. The guy was laid out over the table, stiff as concrete. I figured if the place wasn't hot already, it was gonna be, so I split. I heard the cop sirens on my way out, and I went straight, ba straight back to my office. I see, you didn't actually meet with him in the end, then. Well, Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. Hold it. If I wait around here any longer, I ain't gonna... I ain't even gonna make the normal express. No more stupid questions. Ha. Huh. No problem. Anytime Trite presses you on something irrelevant, I'll see he pays a penalty. M Mr. Godot, that's my job. My job? Your job is to slam that little hammer of yours and call a guilty verdict. So do it. Y yes, sir. Special express ain't cheap, right? So... Just so you know who you sp since you're playing. Oh man, doesn't the rule of law mean anything around here? Okay, it's two, and then floor plans. You're something of a loan collecting pro, aren't you, Mr. Tigray? No one escapes the tiger's clutches. Well, I'm something of a lie-detecting pro. And no one escapes the phoenix's clutches. I think it's time we got something straight. What's this, Trite? A new line of irrelevant questioning. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> These are the floor plans of the crime scene. You see you were standing at the entrance, Mr. Tigre. From there, your field of vision could would have covered an area, something like this. <laughs> Same brain. Indeed, the witness would have had a clear view of the victim's seat. Isn't that what I just said? I saw the black as the back, back of the kid's head. Unfortunately for you, that is not possible. If the court would think back, you'll remember that between each of the tables is a tall partition. Why, that's true. Now look at the plans again. The truth is painfully obvious. From the entrance, the field of vision of any customer walking in ends here. So, from the entrance of Trebien, 
you couldn't have seen the victim's seat. But you did see the victim that day, because you met with him. Objection. Wrong. Have you forgotten the old man's testimony yesterday? The victim was alone at his table. Objection. But the defense just proved that point to be moot. The victim witnessed by Mr. Kudo was not Glenn Elgin, but a fake. What? In order to have Mr. Kudo fal falsely testify, the real killer posed as the victim, he had just killed and acted out a charade. Nah, will do. This trial has gone on long enough without the obvious question being answered. Who exactly was this real killer who impersonated the victim? Personated the victim? You say the killer murdered Glen Elg, and then impersonated his victim in a performance performance for Victor Kudo. In that case, Mr. Wright, reveal the identity of this criminal to the court. Obviously, the killer is for real Tigre. No one else could have done it. What? Well, witness. Now oh, that's cute. You think you can pin this on the tiger? Maybe you just don't understand. The tiger is king of the jungle. So I dares you to say it again. Come on, you got the guts. You can't threaten me, Mr. Tigre. It's the defense. Go ahead and tell the witness, Mr. Wright. <coughs> Mr. Wright! Sounds to me like it must be you, old man. You just got guts, I'll give you that. M Mr. Wright! Do not leave me to handle this alone! Ha! Huh. Perhaps I can end this embarrassment. Mr. Godot! Let's just go back over Mr. Kudo's testimony one more. Once more. The old man didn't just... Didn't see just the victim. Oh no no no. The serving girl brought him a javachino. But she put something in it. There's no question about it. There was conspicuously... She very conspicuously put some white powder in there. Was the victim who saw that the real victim or not? That doesn't matter. The fact remains, he saw the accused put the poison in the, into the coffee. Yes, it was the wait waitress who poisoned... Very impressive, Mr. Godot. Waiting for my absence to launch your attack. Huh. On your pen at last, Trite? It was in my pocket. <clears throat> but anyway, Mr. Kudo witnessed two people that day. He saw the victim, the supposed Mr. Glen Elg, and the waitress from behind. Yes, your point, Mr. Wright. I think the conclusion is obvious. If this Glen Elg was really the killer in disguise, then surely it's possible the waitress was also part of the show. What? You mean the waitress was an imposter as well? The defendant, Miss Third, fell unconscious immediately after the incident. And someone used her fainting to hatch an elaborate plan to pin the murder murder on her. Who on earth was it? Who was this waitress that Mr. Kudo witnessed? Oh, that's all. that's easy. Who is this woman? Her name is Viola Cadaverini. She is an employee of Tender Lender. You's making a big mistake. Do you know who Violetta's grandfather is? You better be going home in an armored truck tonight, if you know what I mean. Stop shaking, Nick. Where was I? Yes, the defendant, Miss Bird, has stated the following. When I took the coffee over to the victim's table, it's true there was another customer in the, yes, in the restaurant. Um, she was sort of creepy. And she had kind of... had a kind of cackling laugh. There are just too many contradictions in this case. The second man at the victim's table who nobody but who nobody but Miss Bird seems to have seen. The earpiece worn by the victim on, in his left ear when that eardrum was ruptured. And the radio showed he was supposedly listening to half an hour after it was over. There's only one logical explanation that clears up all of these contradictions. The whole incident took place twice, once for real and once for show. And Mr. Free or Tigre, the only person who could have committed the crime is you. Witness, 
What have you got to say? That's cute. S sorry. You're all right. I could do with a guy like you around. What do you mean? Okay, I'm in this game. I'm in on this game. I'm gonna have to charter a, a jet to get me to my meeting now, but... I'm gonna give you one more thing to think about before I go. Something to think about? You just got it all wrapped up nice, huh, right? But you just missed out one real important thing. But that can't be. I was in the joint that day. And I met that kid, too. But I couldn't have poisoned him. You see here? What? Do you really expect us to believe you now, Mr. Tigre? Huh. What a troublemaker. A troublemaker? Looks like we're going to need another one for the road. One more steaming cup of hot testimony. Indeed. Witness, you will explain yourself to the court. I will give you one more chance to testify. What happened that day at Trebien between yourself and the victim? Yeah, I loaned out cash, about $100,000. That day, we was, we was due to have a little chat. The kid had hit his payback date, see? So anyway, he tells me he's got no way to pay up. I'm about to flatten the guy when he starts screaming. Yes, I won half a million bucks. He got lucky, you know. Real lucky. If that waitress hadn't done what she'd done, everything would have been over. Now, I see that the principal amount you loaned to Mr. Elg was $50,000. Yeah, well, you just got the vig to take into account. Interest builds up fast, you know. That's faster than fast. $100,000 is twice his principal. And the repayment deadline was December 3rd, the day of the incident in question. Yeah, he was one lucky kid. He got that half a million just in time. So I ain't have no reason to kill the kid. And if I ain't got no motive, you ain't got no case. His motive? Mm, he has to have one. But what is it? Okay, go all the way to the end. La 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 la. Let's press this. <laughs> the waitress? You mean... The girl with the glasses in the defendant's chair. Who else could I mean? If she hadn't gotten in the way, things would have been bada bing bada boom over and done with. Maybe I should push a little on this. Uh, this. What do you mean things would have been over and done with? Are you all there or what? All there or what? I'm talking about the cash. I was there to get my 100,000 bucks back. That's all. I'm a businessman. It was all coming together before that waitress got in the way. Hmm. As far as I can tell from the witness's testimony, other than recouping his loan, Mr. Tigre had no motive for killing the victim. Witness, you will amend your testimony to reflect what you just said. Tiger's motive, huh? It was after the hundred thousand dollars. I didn't. I didn't have no other reason to kill a guy. We didn't have no other reason. So you had a reason. That's a double negative, my dude. Mm. Where the hell is the fucking? There is a CD. I'm dumb. Now it's the virus. So you just intended to get back the one hundred thousand dollars, Mr. Elk. All of you, correct? I loaned the guy the cash. That's my right. Unfortunately for Mr. Elg, I don't believe the $100,000 is what you were really after. Objection. What are you getting at, Trite? What else would a moneylender be after other than money? Oh, the moneylender was after money. The money in a totally different league. The kind of money that a single disc like this would fetch. What is that? A computer virus, Your Honor. It's called... A virus called Minecraft. <laughs> it's Minecraft. <laughs> a computer virus? What does one of those do? A computer virus is a program that wreaks havoc on the insides of the computer. A computer? What does one of those do? I guess the beard isn't the only part of his honor that is from the Stone Age. I'll explain it to you later, Your Honor. Right now, this is the important point. A virus like MC Bomber will be worth several million dollars on the black market. 
several million dollars. Lending money, money with no hope of ever seeing repayment would normally be bad for business. But in this case, the very fact that Glen Elk had no way to repay the money is crucial. What? Glen Elk was a programmer. A highly skilled programmer. That skill was the collateral Mr. Elk put up in order to borrow the money. Objection. You're trying to suggest the witness's motive was to get hold of that program. Exactly. The witness may have poor passion sense, but he is by no means an idiot, trait. A man like him could get his hands on one million dollars without resorting to murder. Of course he could, provided that he had time. But what if he had needed the money right then? When the pressure is on, the luxury of choice tends to disappear. It seems you have a logical conclusion for this theory, Mr. Wright. Would you care to share it with us? Why did Mr. Tigre need money to, to, to the tune of one million dollars? Uh, da, 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 I know is. Oh yeah. In December of last year, you found yourself in need of a huge amount of money. About six months ago, you were involved in a traffic accident, weren't you? An accident involving a car and a scooter in which a young woman was injured. She was taken to the hospital where she underwent surgery. How much it is do you know? These medical papers document the treatment of the young woman in question. According to these, her operation cost one million dollars. And yet, when the payment was due last month, you somehow managed to pay it in full. One million dollars? A preposterous sum. Someone should sue these HMOs. Ha, huh. no, no one would pay a bill like that. If the medical association got wind of it, the hospital would end up as dead as a morgue. But Mr. Tigra had no choice but to pay, because his very life depended on it. Order! 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 You say this, his life depended on it, Mr. Wright. Indeed it did, simply because the injured woman was none other than Viola Cadaverini. Did you say Cadaverini? Bruno Cadaverini, mob boss in charge of all underworld activities in the city, and doting grandfather to his precious Violetta, also known as Viola Cadaverini, or Violetta, I don't know. Your life was in danger unless you paid compensation to the boss, correct? Makes sense. You were desperate to acquire the one million dollars Bruto Cadaverini demanded of you. So desperate, in fact, that you decided to sacrifice Glen Elg's life to pay your debt. One, on the day of the murder, Mr. Tigre's sole intention was to get his hands on the CD. Glen Elg had no way of paying back the one hundred thousand dollars, and Mr. Tigre knew it. But. Then a miracle happened. The kind that Mr. Tigre would prefer to say never happened, but he can't, and neither can I. Lottery win. Exactly. At the 11th hour, Mr. Elg won half a million dollars on the lottery, which left Mr. Tigre with no way of getting his hands on that, the all-important CD. At least, no legitimate way. So he resorted to illegit illegitimate means. It's crazy. He murdered Glenn Elg and then made his next move to frame Maggie Bird for the crime. Mr. Tigre posed as Glenn Elg, while Viola Cadaverini played the role of Miss Bird. And then they reenacted the whole thing in order to establish a witness. The witness being the one we all heard testify yesterday, Mr. Victor Victor Kudo. Like I said, Trite, right, that is crazy. No one could put off a stunt like that. For starters, there's no way the chef would have been kept in the dark about it. But Mr. Armstrong was in on it from the very beginning. Have you forgotten already, Mr. Kudo? Mr. Armstrong owed the witness money too. Half a million dollars, in fact. He had no choice but to go along with Mr. Tigre's plan. Order! Order! Silence, driver! 
Just put on a good show, Spiky. If you just want to stay alive in the, in, in the loan shark business, you gotta be careful. You say and I dressed up like that kid created a witness and framed someone. If I did something crazy like that, I'd leave a trail as bright as my shirt. I ain't dumb enough to do something sloppy like that. I agree. Y you do? Despite your appearance, you are very careful. That's why you took one more precaution. One more trick to make sure Miss Bird had no way out. What? Another one? Miss it right. Interesting. Why don't you fill us all in, Trite? What was this trick you say Mr. Tigger performed to frame the accused? <laughs> what on earth is that? What an insult to think anyone could be fooled by such a childless imitation. Start. <laughs> Sir? I don't... I don't think you are... Very aware. Godot's armband thingies? <laughs> I don't know. It's just like some of those like... More extra looking things that are for the po prosecutors for some reason. I don't know. Consider yourself insulted, your honor. Mr. Tigre, you didn't just pose as the victim on the day in question. A month ago in this very court, you posed as me. What? That's... that's... the truth. But... the witness looks nothing like you, Mr. Wright. Although... now that I think about it, it was you, wasn't it? No doubt it was you standing in here this very court a mere month ago. The Phoenix Wright who put up the most disre disreputable, shabby defense I, ever, I had ever seen. Objection. Can you prove that, Gramps? Prove the attorney who represented the accused here a month ago with this man. Are you prepared to take the stand and testify that it was him? Hey, forget about it, yeah? I wouldn't do something like that. Not me. You you made a mistake, right? It was someone else, huh? Have you no pride, sir? This isn't a matter of pride. In case you didn't know, Trite, here in court, we deal with people's lives. Uh -huh. Mr. Godot is right. Your Honor? Speaking for myself, I am absolutely convinced. The attorney in question was the witness standing before me now. However, I preside over this court as the judge, with the vested power to hand down a verdict. Someone in my position cannot be swayed by a memory without evidence to support it. Oh! If the defense has no further evidence, then the court will now excuse the witness. The circumstances surrounding Mr. Tigre are dubious for sure, but not conclusive. We've come so far. You say it impersonated Glenel. You say he impersonated you. But none of that adds up to a murder charge. You don't have a shred of evidence that the witness poisoned the victim's coffee. Sucks to be you, right? Don't mess with the tiger, or you or you gonna get mauled, you got that? All he managed to do here was chase him around a bit. But I was so close to getting him to admit his own guilt. Huh. Looks like I won't be needing a refill. If I just had one more piece of evidence. One more piece of evidence and maybe I could get Maggie off the hook. And this witness cross-examination is over. We are free to go, Mr. Tigre. I'm gonna take it. Another. You are sure? What? Yeah, boy! Let's fucking go! Detective! Detective Gumshoe! 
Sorry, I took so long, pal. I, I, I staked everything on this. My badge, the works. So here it is. My heart's counting on this too. What is it, detective? Isn't it obvious, pal? It's the final decisive piece of evidence. What? Sorry it took so long, pal, but I finally got the results from the lab. The results? About the prince, pal, from this medicine bottle. Oh, so... Do you know who the prince belonged to now? Do you think I'm some kind of hack detective? Of course I know. So, tell us. They're the tigers, right? I knew it. <laughs> you bet. Ah, arm guarders. Interesting. Clear as crystal, all over the bottle. The Furio Tigre's paw prints are like... That's great! We've got him now, Nick! What's wrong with you? You've hardly said a word since Detective Gumshoe got here. He's laid everything on the dime for us for this, Nick. I know, look, I'm sorry. This is kind of hard to say, but... It really doesn't make any difference whose prints are on that bottle now. Huh? What? Why not? What we need to produce at this stage in the trial... It's irrefutable evidence that the tiger put poison in Glen Elk's, Glen Elk's coffee. He's already admitted that he met the victim. And the fact that his prints are on this bottle, that really doesn't make any difference now. I knew it. Great. No matter how hard I try, I'm never of any use. Hey, don't be so hard on yourself. This was our last chance to help Maggie. And I've been working on some useless piece of evidence the whole time. It's alright. I'm a real loser. It's not breaking news to me, pal. Um... Detective Gumshoe? You make the confetti, you ain't useless! <laughs> exactly. Maggie! You've been working on something for me? Sorry I let you down, Maggie. I know you didn't do it. And I'm a detective. We're supposed to be able to prove stuff like that. I'm really sorry. I'll get you out. I'll get out of your hair now. Detective Gumshoe, wait! He's gone. Is there anything we can do now, Nick? I wish there was. Gumshoe worked so hard to get that evidence. If only there was some way we could I could use it. Yes, Your Honor. And I granted you a recess so you could prepare this decisive evidence you've discovered. Um, yes. Don't keep us all in suspense, Trite. Show us. Naturally. We can assume it's evidence that will actually stand up in court, can't we? Think, Phoenix. Don't let Gumshoe's hard work go to waste. How much more of my time are you gonna waste? I ain't been to no court before. But used lawyers sure know how to blow things out of proportion. No doubt, given the nature of the evidence, it will speak for itself. Nevertheless, you will talk us through it, Mr. Wright. Well, I know I can't prove anything new with this evidence. I'm really backed into a corner here. Maybe if he thinks he's got me beat, he'll let his guard down a bit. Don't keep us waiting any longer, Mr. Wright. Present this final decisive piece of evidence to the court. Okay, cool. This is the defense's final piece of evidence. Isn't that the victim's... Your Honor? Naturally, the court is already aware of the contents of this bottle. However, interesting new information has come to light. We have clearly identified some fingerprints on it. Fingerprints belonging to you, Mr. Tigre. What? But, Mr. Wright, what conclusion are you hoping to draw from this new information? Everyone in here knows what this bottle contains, except for one man. One person in this courtroom should theoretically be in the dark. The prints are on the panty-looking bottle. Is that what you're saying? But what the hell's in it anyways? A phony trial, a phony lawyer, and phony clues. Everything about this case has been phony. Seems like the perfect excuse for some phony evidence. 
Mr. Tigre, this is the decisive piece of evidence that will prove your guilt. Why? Because it contains... Potassium cyanide, but it actually doesn't. This bottle contains potassium cyanide. P potassium cyanide? The poison used to murder Mr. Elgiwar. The victim's killer used this very bottle. And on this bottle, Mr. Tigre, we found your fingerprints. Well, how do you explain that? You'd make a good clown, you know that. What? You ain't never gonna get this to stick. You's just making me laugh now. You think a cheap bluff like that's gonna fool the tiger? A bluff? I can see straight through you, Phoenix, right? That ain't the bottle with the cyanide in it. No, no, this is the bottle we found traces of the poison in. Don't mess with the tiger! Or you're gonna get ripped to shreds. The cyanide bottle was brown and it was made of glass. That cheap piece of trash. Don't look nothing like it. Got him. At last. What? Why is everyone gone quiet? I said that bottle. Is this the bottle you're referring to? Yeah, that's it. That's the bottle the cyanide was in. But you ain't gonna find my prints on that bottle. Let that, that cozy looking suit fool you people. That lawyer's just playing games. Tell him, Mr. Prosecutor. Tell that guy where to go. You still haven't figured it out. You should realize what you just said. What I said? What did I just say? You were summoned to this court for the first time earlier today. If you really had nothing to do with the murder, you shouldn't have known all the little details. For instance, you shouldn't have known what kind of bottle the potassium cyanide was in. Uh, uh. I think you just confessed, yeah. But just now you slipped up in front of every single person in this courtroom. You described the exact bottle used by the killer to hold the poison. You just don't know who you was messing with. I'm the tiger. I control millions of dollars on the black market. You think I'm gonna let some jumped up suit get the better of me? Sure. The last piece of evidence was phony. But that's just what you deserve. The phony trial with the phony lawyer. It was all played out by you, the biggest phony of all. What's going on? Looks like a blackout. Well done, trite. Save my 17th cup of coffee just for you. Savor it. While you watch the police restrain your prey. <laughs> Man, they get angry in this court. Mr. Wright, you caught a tiger by his toe, but if, the, if, but if this one hollers, he won't be let go. Now then, how are things going with Mr. Tigre, Mr. Godot? He's being arrested on suspicion of the murder of Glen Elgiron. Fortunately for us, we managed to rectify a very grave error. Miss Bird was found guilty in the absence of a genuine defense, defense attorney. Yes, she was. And, and in the absence of genuine evidence. But the tiger made one mistake. Indeed. You very nearly got away with everything if it wasn't for that one slip of the tongue. Furio Tigre is a truly frightening criminal. Ha. Huh. A truly frightening one. Is that defense attorney over there? Kido. Well, I am now in a position to deliver my verdict. This court finds the defendant, Maggie Bird. Not guilty. Yay. We did it again. And that is all. This court is adjourned. <clears throat> Yay!
Mr. Wright! I... 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 I'm at a loss for words. Thank you, sir. Congratulations, Maggie. I was so mad when Mr. Wright landed me in all that trouble a month ago. You'll figure out. Huh. But now I feel like I can forgive him. Hey, that wasn't me, Maggie. That was the tiger. Look, Nick! In the doorway! Detective Gumshoe! Oh, guess I'll be heading off then. See you around, pal. Wait! Detective Gumshoe. Uh, oh, yeah. Congratulations, Maggie. Thanks. I, I knew you were innocent all along. Why didn't you say that in your testimony then? Huh? Oh, well, I was. Well, I guess I'll be heading off then. See you around. Wait up, detective. He just ran off. Maggie, why are you being so hard on him? He busted his butt for you. It's thanks to him that we got the med medication bottle. That wasn't even of any use. But... It's only because Mr. Wright used it so cleverly. Detective Gumshoe was just running around in circles. Poor guy. Looks like she still isn't ready to forgive him. Can't you put in a good word for him, Nick? Yeah, Maya's right. I should help Gumshoe out. It's clear he needs it. Uh, Maggie? You know, Detective Gumshoe has been really worried about you through all of this. I wanted to believe that, sir. But on that first day of the trial, he practically gave the judge a free pass to lock me up. He didn't have any choice, Maggie. He's a detective. He has to report the facts. He doubted me. That's why. He thought I might have done it. I gotta prove to her that Gumshoe really cares about her. I know. I'll give her a little present to celebrate her freedom. Where the hell is it? There it is. Here you are. A present to celebrate your freedom. That's... A present from Detective Gumshoe, made with a ton of love. He said you lost weight and he was worried about you. D Detective Gumshoe... I... I actually really like weenies, you know? Did you guys hear that? I'm pretty hungry myself, you know. Yeah, the trial dragged on a bit today, didn't it? Um... Is it okay if I eat this now? Cute. So, how is it, Maggie? It's, it's really good. So the case of Phony versus Genuine comes to an end. The false allegations surrounding Maggie have all been cleared up. And who knows? Maybe a whole new chapter of her life is about to start. never thought about that. <laughs> oh, hell yeah! Look at the boy! Look at the man's... Look at that flashy outfit! Like, my dude! <laughs> it's your handsome boy! The one and only. Ah, oh my god. And it's only like 2.30 almost. <laughs> so. Yeah. I am excited. We're up to like the last two cases now. It's like that one. Uh, turn about beginnings, which is pretty short, so I can I will definitely do that tomorrow and I will start bridge to the turnabout since it's so long and I have to split it up anyways So I might as well just do it like that 
I was like actually about to end it, like end the stream, like right before you came in, because uh, I was like nearing the end of the chapter, and I was like I'm kind of tired. But then you came in, and I'm just like I'm, I'm, way, I'm way, way more awake now, you know. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really glad you came in, and that you were with me until the very end. Despite having to get up early in the morning, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, I also think it's a lot of fun. Oh. <laughs> well then. I am excited for tomorrow, considering that we will get to see baby Edgeworth. Well, not baby, but you know, like, baby. <laughs> baby Edgy. So small. How does this slap so much? I can't. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be insane. Like, the last case is fucking insane. But that means... I will have finished the entire Ace Attorney trilogy by the end of this week. Yeah. It's the one where they're in the, they're in the mountains. Like obviously I couldn't I could have spent like a lot longer uh, on uh, on these games by like splitting it up into like several streams per episode, but like I don't know, I prefer having the continuity there, you know? Because I always forget like what's happening. I, I forget what's happening. Even when just powering through everything. So I like... <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do believe it's easier to follow. But anyways... I hope to see you in tomorrow's stream. And I hope you have a good night's sleep and you have a great day. I'm gonna get something to eat probably and I'm gonna go to bed and uh, yeah start streaming tomorrow around four ish maybe at least I hope so maybe like four five just so that I can get like as far as possible Yes, you too.